Good morning and welcome to the third and final day of competition right here at the 2023 Travers Grand Prix. Coming to you live from Sunset Lakes, the home of Travers Water Ski School, here in Groveland in Central Florida, specifically uh, Lake County. And uh, thanking you once again for joining us. My name is Tony Lightfoot. And here is the schedule of events for the day. Amateur round three, and then we'll go into pro women's final and then pro men's final and then the prize giving uh, later on in the day, which will not only feature the prizes for this uh, this competition, but also the uh, the season ending uh, uh, water ski uh, pro tour uh, uh, awards as well. So uh, that will be something to look out for right at the very end of our coverage uh, today. So uh, the format of the uh, of the of the competition uh, pretty much uh, pretty much set in stone and uh, for the uh, for the most part uh, executed all the way through to the uh, to the final where we will find eight skiers in the women's competition and uh, eight skiers in the men's competition to uh, to round off uh, a great event here at uh, Sunset Lakes. But uh, before all of that, we have our uh, third round of amateurs that will be uh, taken to the water this morning. We have uh, closer. Uh, uh, close to about uh, 80 or so uh, competitors uh, to take to the water in the amateurs. And so it'll be a little bit of a while before we uh, get to, to the pros. So uh, time check uh, around the world. It is uh, about 10 minutes uh, to 8 in the morning. It is uh, 10 minutes uh, to 1 p.m. Uh, currently in London. Uh, 10 minutes uh, to 2 in Rome. 10 minutes to uh, to 4 p.m. in Dubai and all the way in Auckland, New Zealand. It is uh, it is almost uh, midnight. It is almost uh, Monday uh, for you guys over there in New Zealand. But we've got about 10 minutes to go before we go on to uh, amateur round three. So uh, grab your favorite seat, grab your favorite beverage. Make sure you are subscribed to the TWBC YouTube channel. That way you can participate in the live chat and also be informed as the next time we, uh, we get on with another uh, live event. Help us, help, help you, the, uh, the fans of the, uh, the Sport of Tournament Water Skin, work together to move the sport forward by clicking on the subscribe button at the top of the TWBC YouTube channel. And we will get along with our uh, first action on the water in uh, day three of the Travis Grand Prix for 2023, right after this. Gonna be a little something more. I've got a plan in mind, a special thing in store. The light bulb inside my head says, Get out and play. Cause you never feel this way.
My name is Thomas de Gasperi. I'm from Italy. I'm a two-time World Slalom champion. I've been coming here at La Guapa for four years now. The condition of this villa, it's top level. I would say five stars plus. Everybody's very friendly. The hosts are amazing. The staff is always helpful. There's always food on the table. I couldn't ask for anything more. Conditions, clean, and we're only an hour away from Mexico City, so it's it's very close and convenient for to travel. Every time I come here, I feel like I'm, I'm at home. I've been a fan of Marcus Brown since I was like 13 years old. He's, you know, been my, my childhood hero. And so for him to offer something like this, you know, which is, which is, it's great, not just for me, but it's great for water skis to have something like this where people can really get a bespoke water ski experience. It's going to improve their skiing, their, their body, you know, and Jenny's just, she's amazing too. So just to have the access to, to both of those guys, I think it's huge. And it has been massive just to talk things through and to get a new understanding of, of stuff I haven't tried yet.
Hey, morning. You have a good weekend? Yeah, got out on the water a couple times. How about you? Yeah, I got a set in. Uh, just gonna make a quick phone call here. Oh, of course. Can you get that, Will? Yeah, man, I got it. Thanks for calling Wake House. This is Will. Uh, yeah, looks like we've got those in stock. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. then and uh, good morning and welcome back to live and continuing coverage of uh, this event the 2023 Travers Grand Prix uh, uh, supported by Mike and Kerry Morgan along with Michael DeMello and sponsored by Syndicate uh, by HO Skis uh, Ski Dock uh, Masterline Ropes and Handles Eagle uh, Wetsuits and accessories and the Jack Travers uh, Water Ski School right here at Sunset Lakes we've got uh, Got Alex King there uh, taking a good shot of coffee before he uh, takes uh, takes the water and uh, drives our uh, amateur round of uh, slaloming. Got uh, a JT in the boat, uh, making sure everything's in good working order. Our boat judge uh, in the back there, uh, Sancha Altram. And uh, we'll see, uh, we'll bring on our first skier out onto the water very, very soon, but not uh, not until the, uh, the tow boat makes its uh, path up and down to uh, just to uh, uh, roughen up the water a little bit, uh, put a little bit of texture on it, and uh, make sure that uh, the remaining skiers each have equivalent conditions going forward. So, continue to ride along. And uh, for you folks out there, uh, no doubt uh, you'll be watching from, uh, from start to finish. And uh, for you hearty souls out there, no matter where you are, uh, where you happen to be around the world, whether you are in uh, locations uh, such as uh, such as Tokyo, which it, which means that uh, it's a little after uh, 9 p.m. on Sunday there. If you're uh, watching us from Darwin in uh, the Northern Territory. It's, uh, it's half past uh, nine uh, in the evening. Working away to, uh, to other locations around the world, Barcelona. If you're watching us uh, from Spain, it's, uh, it's a little after 2 p.m. there. It's a little after uh, 1 p.m. Uh, in the United Kingdom, as uh, far as I can tell. Yes, indeed. All right, so boat making its way up and down very, very soon. Just to remind you one more time that, uh, that on October the 11th that the uh, 
The Skiers uh, Beach uh, uh, Restaurant and Bar in Leesburg will feature the celebration, celebrating 50 years of business uh, all for, the, uh, for the Jack Travers uh, Water Ski School. Uh, be a part of the celebration there on October the 11th, uh, the Wednesday during World Championship Week. October the 11th, the 50th anniversary of Jack Travers Water Ski School, the uh, celebration there with the party being organized by Kim Laskoff, Brett Furley, and Jim Clooney. All right, then, here we go, folks. Straight in, first skier. 46K, I believe. Chester Boehner, 49K, I beg your pardon. That's uh, 30 miles an hour. Doing good with the opener. A little bit silhouetted there. But uh, for the most part, uh, because of the uh, because of the, of the sky being the way that it is, uh, uh, not really restricting the vision. However, with Chester Boehner, uh, didn't get all the way through uh, the, uh, the opening pass. Says. All right, getting a little bit pitted out there on the uh, on the opening pass. Managed to get round number five, but unfortunately unable to uh, to be around six in time. So it'll be five buoys on that pass for Chester Boehner, who I'm sure has uh, has quite a few fans uh, are cheering him along in uh, New Hampshire and uh, along the the shoreline here as well. So, all right, looks like uh, I think there might actually be a re-ride uh, in the mix here for, uh, for Chester Boehner. We'll, uh, we'll find out in, uh, in just a moment. This is the uh, continuing coverage of the, uh, the 2023 uh, Travis Grand Prix. And uh, thanking you once again for, uh, for continuing to... Uh, to be involved with the coverage here. And it looks like uh, Chester is actually going to get a re-ride because, well, uh, the boat hadn't taken the uh, the simulation pass, which it's, uh, we're normally accustomed uh, to seeing it uh, do. So uh, probably uh, just... So let's let's just consider the uh, that that pass up and pass back the simulation pass and just pretend that uh, Jester Boehner wasn't uh, behind the boat at the time uh, when that happened, which means uh, he's going to get another crack at this one. At 49K, 18.25 meters for the opening pass, it is Chester Boehner. Now, Chester Boehner uh, over the last couple of days, as far as I can tell, has, uh, has skied... Uh, uh, what was it? A zero buoy score at 18.25 meters at 55. And looking at uh, the uh, the other result uh, that he produced, it was a two at uh, 18.25 meters 55. He started at 49K. Here comes Chester Boehner. Good effort there on uh, number one, and hopefully he'll stay up on the course. Doesn't take long for the uh, for the water conditions uh, to uh, to get glass calm here at uh, at Sunset Lakes, and this time, in stark contrast to the opening pass, he is able to run it, and he'll now go to 52. Now. The eastern sunshine is probably going to uh, hinder him a little bit so far as his vision is concerned. But there is a little bit of a uh, high cloud cover as well, so, it, so the glare won't be quite as dramatic. Which is only going to help the skiers uh, going forward. So Chester Boehner about to come back into the course at uh, 52k. 
bringing you this coverage here uh, in a beautiful uh, 1080p. TWBC doing a grand, grand job out there. Rocking it with the opening pass of Chester Boehner at 49K and he'll come back in at 52. We anticipate the pros are starting at approximately 1 p.m. Now 1 p.m. for those of you, those folks out there. I'll try and give you the calculation so far as what those times are in your, in your respective time zone. And uh, Chester Boehner going down rather early there on that uh, on that attempt at 52k. Rolls in with the exit get, uh, entrance gate. And a decent extension round buoy number one, but uh, tried to lean tried to lean up on the line, but unfortunately it was too far forward to really make it effective. So it's going to be a one buoy count at 52k. One buoy at 52 or one buoy at 32 miles an hour, 18.25 meters for Chester Boehner to round off his effort here. Had three rounds of uh, Islam skiing. This is his third and last. So one at 52 is going to be it for him. And it might even end up being half a buoy, uh, judging by uh, where he ended up in, re in respect to the, uh, the center line behind the boat. All right, skier about to take to water next, Eastern Graves. At least that's what I've got on the, on the starting list. 16 meters, 58K for Eastern Graves. And Eastern Graves uh, in the uh, previous rounds has had, uh, has had mixed fortunes, three and a half in the previous round. and uh, three and a half on 13 in uh, the other round. So let's see if he can uh, exceed uh, the, uh, the better score going forwards. Eastern Graves, not too sure where precisely he is from. I don't have the benefit of uh, bio sheets for a lot of these uh, competitors, but what I can tell you is that he got through 58K uh, on that 16 meter run without any problems whatsoever. All right. Hopefully you are good folks out there are grabbing your favorite beverage and are making sure you've got a nice comfy seat uh, uh, going forwards as we work our way down towards the end of this event. Uh, we anticipate uh, the, uh, the pros uh, to hit the water at approximately 1 p.m., starting with the women, uh, which is uh, 6 p.m. if you are in the United Kingdom, 7 p.m. if you are in uh, Central Europe, about 9 p.m. if you are in uh, Dubai or anywhere else in the Gulf, uh, in the, uh, the Arabian Gulf. It would be 3 a.m. on Monday if you are in, uh, in Melbourne. And it'll be breakfast time for those of you in Auckland by the time we uh, get to the point where we can put the pros out there on the water at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time here at uh, Sunset Lakes. And uh, for the moment, Eastern Graves, fine effort there. That was at uh, 58K. I believe that was at 16 meters. I'll get confirmation on that. 14.25 meters. He started out on 16 at 58. I beg your pardon. And so he's run through 14 and is now within uh, two thirds of a pass uh, of uh, of exceeding his uh, best uh, best score so far in his competition, which has been three and a half. Just getting a little bit uh, uh, twisted off uh, number five, but uh, not enough to prevent him from running that pass. Okay, 
Here we go. This is uh, Eastern Graves. 30 metres now. Decent start here. Skiing away from the sun, which uh, should uh, provide him with, uh, with enhanced vision of the buoys. He's round a three and a half and four now. He's round number five, and he's in danger of running this, uh, this, oh, this pass of 30 metres. All right. Gets it to go. First time he's run 30 metres in this, in this competition. It might actually end up being the first time he's ever run 30 metres. So good, good, a solid effort there. Just hung on in there all the way through from start to finish. So amazing stuff out there among the, uh, the early part of the, uh, the competition in the amateurs. We are on skier number two of the day. Just really just let it all uh, go there on the number five and just allow the ski to fully rotate and get round buoy number six. And isn't he delighted? All right. Looking out towards the west end of the lake, we have Eastern Graves. It's going to be 12 meters now. This is a different kettle of fish here. Losing his whip for prior to the gate shot, but he's still there on buoy number one. He's there. He's good for number. He's still there on two. Tries to make a play on three, but way too late to do so. But his best score of the competition is a two buoy count on 12 meters for Eastern Graves. Tremendous performance. Round buoy one, taking a good snap of the line. Round number two, a little flat footed and uh, that didn't allow for the ski to uh, to rotate round uh, when he wanted it to. But there you go, that is two buoys on 12 meters, the final score for Eastern Graves. So he'll be a happy, happy camper uh, going forwards. Eastern Graves, two on 12. All right, next competitor up is gonna be Landon Stisher. Yep. All right, here we go. Landon Stisher. Opening pass, 14.25 meters. 58k. Driving it hard off buoy number four. And we'll have an opportunity to, uh, to attempt 13 meters coming up next. Time right now is quarter past uh, eight in the morning here. Eastern daylight time. And uh, Recep Stisher, as far as I understand, is uh, currently uh, in, uh, at Skyview Lake in North Carolina right now, participating in the, uh, the Pan American uh, Over 35 Championships uh, there. So uh, he's keeping an eye on things. Uh, one of the, uh, the very few occasions where the, the Stishers are uh, competing in separate competitions. Uh, Seth uh, competed in North Carolina and landed right here in uh, Lake County in Central Florida. And uh, each doing uh, very, very well so, so far, as far as I can tell. I uh, managed to, uh, to read uh, the latest post from Seth Stisher and uh, quite proud of what uh, Landon has accomplished so far in this competition. We are on round three. Landon Stisher has uh, scores of uh, five on 30 meters uh, yesterday and three on 12, uh, I believe, the day before. Or it uh, could actually be switched around. I believe it was a, 12, a three on 12 yesterday. But uh, so improving uh, from day to day. Here we go. 
landed Stisha. Round all six buoys, 13 meters. No two ways about that. So now he's going to have a crack on the uh, the 12 meter line. And you good, good folks out there watching this coverage, no matter where you happen to be around the world, it's uh, it's been researched. And uh, the stat that I've got is that uh, among the uh, the audience that watches uh, the uh, the webcast here on TWBC. 70% of the audience is not a current subscriber of the TWBC YouTube channel. So, uh, so take a little bit of time and uh, help uh, a TWBC and yourself uh, grow the sport together by hitting the subscribe button at the top of the page. That way you can be informed as to when the next live event will take place on TWBC and additionally be part of the live chat which is currently taking place right now. Here we go, folks. Landon Stisher, 12 meters, needs the start. Gets in around buoy number one, working that Conley. One side of the course, the next, there's three. That's what he scored uh, previously and uh, tried to make a play on four, but uh, the best that he's got uh, in this competition is a three on 12. Three buoys on 12 for Landon Stisher and uh, looks over to the camera and uh, on the other side of the lake and uh, kind of wonders uh, how he got, uh, got to where he ended up. So three on 12 for Landon Stisher. Just getting a little bit uh, a twisted off buoy number one and it didn't exactly help his balance going forward even though he's a right foot forward skier. And I don't know. I don't know whether he released the handle before number four or whether he had a, uh, enough of a grip to get a portion of that four. We'll get uh, the, uh, the confirmation on that score. It's either going to be three or uh, it is three. It is three from our officials. So uh, that is that there for the third and last round of competition for, uh, for Landon Stisher. Originally out of South Carolina. And not looking, uh, not looking too bad. So, skier about to take to water is going to be Jay Cableson. And whilst you've got a little bit of time, uh, uh, you uh, online audience, so check out the latest styles. Available uh, on the TWBC's uh, online shop. Go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash shop to check out the, uh, the latest uh, TWBC apparel styles. And you can also check out those styles here, uh, courtesy of uh, Splash Threads. Uh, check out uh, the T-shirts, the workout vests, caps, towels, and, uh, and other accessories by checking out the Splash Threads a stand right here on site at Sunset Lakes and additionally on waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash shop. All right, 14.25 meter starts. This is Jake Abelson coming to us out of uh, the granite state of New Hampshire. So coming, so a, a good-looking opening run, and uh, his uh, skis uh, a portion of his season up there in New England, and also uh, in Arizona as well. So a man that has uh, that has travelled uh, quite a bit around the world to to compete. The newly minted Malibu Open men's uh, trick champion, and uh, will be trying to defend his uh, bronze medal in a little under two weeks time at the IWWF World Water Ski Championships right here at Sunset Lakes. And Jake Abelson has also uh, performed well in the Tricks event at a number of uh, other tournaments uh, across the world. 
namely the U17 World Championships, and he was also part of the uh, the picture in the U21 uh, World uh, Championships. Jake Abelson, a bronze medalist in the U in the U17 uh, World Championships in men in boys tricks. So far as his slalom goes, uh, things are starting to look up there for him. And not looking too bad at all. So, uh, so good, good skiing there from, uh, from uh, Jake Abelson. Let's have a look at the uh, some of the scores these uh, produced this season. Halfway through 11 at the, the U.S. Nationals. Halfway through 11 at the Bottas uh, Pro-Am. Halfway through 11 at the, uh, the U21 Worlds. And uh, halfway through 11 at the Masters Qualifying Series. And uh, almost as much at the, uh, the U17 World Championships as well. So uh, seeing a little bit of a pattern here. We'll see if he can uh, break the pattern a little bit. He's gone through 14 and 13. Now 12 uh, comes into play. Here he is. Nicely executed number one. This is 12 meters. Getting broken over into number four. Made a mistake there, but uh, ultimately runs the pass and good resistance behind the boat. And uh, yeah, nice uh, show of the fist there uh, towards uh, the end of that run after that pass. So solid skiing there on 12. And uh, we'll see if, uh, if he can get about halfway down uh, this 11.25-meter uh, pass uh, coming up or maybe even ski better than that. Jake Abelson in this competition at least has scored, uh, I believe, four on 11.25 meters in one of the rounds and, uh, and in the other round, looking, uh, looking for his uh, score there. He got, uh, well, four on 13 meters, uh, didn't exactly start off his effort aus uh, auspiciously, but uh, he has recovered well. So here we go, round three. Coming in. 11.25 meters for Jake Abelson. His best score in this competition is four. See if he can get it, get the job done round buoy number two. And unfortunately, uh, coming, coming up a little bit narrow and uh, not leaving himself too much room to get that ski turn and uh, to go cross course. The patience that served him well for the first few passes uh, didn't materialize here on 11.25 meters. Good stretch on number one in retrospect. And round number two uh, brought the handle down and tried the shoulder slam and uh, just unable to, uh, to get it uh, done there. So, Jake Abelson, one and a half on 11.25 meters. The best score that he's uh, produced in this competition was four. And that ended up being his uh, second best score, having, uh, having scored four on 13 meters in the, uh, the first round. So that's Jake Abelson uh, in the lead uh, for, uh, for round three at least. 14.25 meters for Sergei uh, Danierski. Coming to us originally uh, from Eastern Europe and uh, has found a home here in Horizon West.
And there you go. Good, good skiing there. Pulls out after 14.25 meters. And uh, riding that, uh, that D3 uh, Neo 2. And I'm sure that the you good folks out there that have entries in for the audience prize are, uh, will be waiting patiently. And uh, some of you will uh, be chewing your uh, fingernails uh, to, uh, to see if your entry uh, comes up uh, as being the, uh, the winner of the, uh, the D3 or the Conley Slalom Ski. We'll have, uh, we'll have the winners of, uh, of those uh, after we get done with each uh, pro division. Uh, later on today, which we anticipate starting at uh, at about 1, uh, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. here in the Central Florida, uh, 6 p.m. in uh, in Aberdeen, 7 p.m. in uh, Brussels, 9 p.m. in Doha, and uh, 3 a.m. in uh, in Sydney and uh, 6 a.m. in Auckland. That's what we anticipate uh, those being the times, the start times for the, the pro uh, competition based upon a projected 1 p.m. start time right here in, uh, in Groveland in Central Florida is Sergei Danierski. Looking good and uh, looking, in, uh, looking very strong. And looking coordinated as well with uh, with the uh, with the pink and, uh, and checkered flag uh, accents uh, out there on top of the water. Just trying to get a little bit of speed out there uh, between uh, between the buoys. Just try try, try and stay uh, current with the pass. That was 13 meters. Now getting ready for 12. Of course, during the course of the uh, of the day, we'll uh, we'll crown some champions, uh, not only of this competition but also of the Water Ski Pro Tour, and uh, also uh, present the trophy for the uh, for the brand leader for the brand leaderboard, which is a sponsor by TWBC. based upon points accrued during the course this season by uh, team skiers for uh, each of the major brands. Oh, getting loose there off uh, number four. Can he continue to ski? Not quite, but it is going to be a four buoy count on the 12 meter line. Sergei Danierski, four on 12 meters. Uh, let's see how that stacks up against uh, the other scores. He, uh, he scored one and a half on 12 in, uh, in the previous round. And uh, in the, uh, the first round, he scored a zero at 11.25 meters, missing the gates there on that particular run. But just unable to, uh, to smoothly uh, execute the pass of 12 meters and lucky enough to get round number four. And uh, kind of kicking himself a little bit. But uh, sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles in, uh, in tournament slalom skiing. As we work our way down the list here at the Travers uh, Grand Prix, brought to you by Travers Ski School at Sunset Lakes. The Syndicate brand by HO Sports, along with Masterline Ropes and Accessories, Eagle Wetsuits and Accessories, along with Ski Dock. And uh, we're also grateful for the continuing support of this event by uh, Mike and Kerry Morgan, along with uh, Mike DeMello. All right, skier up next, and the last of our international boys in this competition, it is Connor Pesek.
All right, here we go, folks. This is Connor Pasek. This is a 14.25 meter start at 58K. Oh, horrid start on buoy number one. Now he's got to uh, really knuckle down hard and uh, get this pass to go if he's to achieve any of his ambitions going forward. And there we go. Rough start there on, uh, on the opener, but able to uh, scrape his way through and continue skiing. That is uh, Connor Pesic. Just working those edges, working that ski exquisitely well. Past uh, buoy number two, at least. I didn't have the best of starts from one into two. But able to make the necessary adjustments where needed to run that opener of 14. Now getting ready for 13 meters coming up next. All right, continuing uh, to uh, provide uh, coverage around the world. We are at uh, 25 uh, to, uh, to nine in the morning here in central Florida as Connor Pesic uh, makes his way into the course. Again, things going okay up to a certain point but getting round buoy number three and just uh, barrel barreling in uh, chest first it's going to be two and one half on 13 there for him now i know that connor pesic has uh, done better here in this uh, this competition a matter of fact uh, uh, connor pesic has uh, scored a uh, five and a half on 12 meters in one of the previous rounds that was the uh, the second round, and uh, Connor Pesek also scored uh, three on 12 as well. Okay, and it looks like Connor Pesek is... Uh, has got a, a get out of jail free card here because the boat was reacting uh, abnormally uh, going through uh, through that run. Uh, it uh, ran over a patch of weed and uh, caught in uh, the uh, the water intake of that boat, and uh, that in effect uh, made the boat uh, run abnormally. And uh, with that, uh, we're picking him up. We're taking him uh, to the opposite end, the west end again, uh, to give him a re-ride on that pass. So uh, sometimes uh, being lucky now and again helps. And uh, while he gets ready for his go, uh, we'll uh, step aside and take a quick break. And when we return, Connor Pesic uh, continues on to 13. Back after this. All right, here we go. Connor Pesek coming back in on his uh, return pass. This is 30 meters. Let's see if he can uh, take advantage of this opportunity that's been granted to him on this run, 30 meters. There you go. 
and uh, Connor Pesic not needing a second invitation to uh, to run uh, that pass of 30 meters gets it to go looking the good There we go, 13 meters. Uh, seems to have a, uh, a better grasp of uh, this pass this time around. A little on the back of the ski off number five, but he had enough room to, uh, to get through that one. meters oh handle up high here all round number four can he get close to running this he's round number five. Oh, does he get round number six he used everything to get that ski round we'll have a look and see the officials are going to take a second look but he was uh, certainly on the ragged edge there towards the uh, the end of that run and uh, the uh, try to sell us on six but the judges weren't buying so it's going to be a five buoy count, I believe. We'll double check here. And that's one of his uh, better scores uh, of this competition. I uh, mentioned uh, his uh, scores into 12 meters. Get round buoy number five so late down course. And does he make it outside number six? Oh, he makes contact with it, though, but uh, not... Not enough to actually get round it. And he will uh, ski into the dock and uh, be awarded with uh, five buoys uh, for that effort. So Connor Pesic, what appeared to be a disastrous run there, uh, falling uh, before the halfway point on 30 meters, ends up being one of his better scores uh, by uh, going about two thirds, a little more than two thirds the way down the course on 12 meters. So good skiing there from Connor Pesic as we work away from international boys to international girls. Alexia Abelson will be next. I don't think I was outside of it. I wasn't outside of it. I wasn't that close. I mean, dude, if you got around that, that, yeah, that, 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 K 14.25 meters. Alexia Abelson. Now, Alexia Abelson, I believe her division, which is uh, girls three. The 52K is the maximum speed, to the best of my knowledge. Coming up a little bit narrow on some of these uh, returns, though. Or maybe it's just the angle of the camera, which uh, provides a, a rather deceiving look as, uh, as to the angle and space uh, that, uh, that the skier puts in uh, to, uh, to each turn. 14.25 meters at 52K. So Alexia Abelson, uh, looking at some of the scores that she has uh, produced uh, at least in this in this tournament. 
Alexia scored uh, a three and a half on uh, 12 meters in one of the rounds and uh, backed that up uh, with a score of uh, three on 12. So uh, she's been consistent. I give her that. But uh, if she is to get anywhere close to maybe uh, maybe flirting with the national girls' free slalom record, then she would need to uh, she would need to get through the 12 meter line, the 11.25 meter line, and more than a third the way down, 10.75 meters, to make that happen. Let's see if she's up to it. maximum speed for those uh, for those uh, current records are shared by Brooke and Kristen Baldwin two uh, two years apart and scoring two at 10.75 meters in each occasion matter of fact uh, the uh, the latest tie of the uh, the girls free national slalom record by Kristen Baldwin was actually set here in 2016. But uh, let's have a look at Alexia. She's through 14 and now 13. Keeping everything uh, working across course and uh, staying ahead of the, ahead of the curve as she attacks the uh, the next run which is going to be 12 meters alexia abelson alexia abelson on the water right now 12 meters Oh, getting a good, good hard snap off number two. She's there on number three. Little long into number four. Actually into number six, I beg your pardon. I kind of miscounted that one a bit there, but she's gotten through 12 and now will now have a, a shot at 11.25 meters. If she can get the start on 11.25 meters, then the... Uh, then an attempt at the national record for girls three slalom could well be on here. I don't know how uh, how far it she's gotten down 11.25 meters in the past, but uh, I can tell you so far as this competition is concerned, she got three and a half on 12, so she's superseded that, and also superseded the three on the 12 that she got in the previous round as well. So she's uh, she's on a good streak here. She has exceeded both of those scores with this uh, third round effort. Having started on 14 and uh, come back on the re return pass of 13 and uh, away from the sun on 12, which she has run. This is 11 now. This is gonna be into the sun, which is uh, gonna impede her vision, but let's see how far she can get down this run. Alexia Abelson, 11.25 meters, a little narrow on number one, but she pulls long on number two. She's still there on upright. There she is on number three. Can she make a play on four? Look at this, folks. She's round boy. Oh, and so close. So, so close within uh, four buoys of, uh, of at least tying for the national record in girls three. That is Alexia Abelson with a four and a half buoy count provisionally and a best score of this competition and probably one of the better scores all season long. Alexia Abelson with four and a half on 11.25 meters. was getting unsettled all the way down this pass, but still had enough room to work with to get round five and maybe number six. So good, good skiing there for Alexia, coming to us from, uh, from New Hampshire. And uh, much like uh, Jake Abelson and uh, 
the remainder of that family, which uh, consists of Mariana and uh, Richard Abelson. Uh, they, they travel uh, in between uh, New Hampshire and Arizona uh, consistently for, throughout the course of the season. So well done to them. Alexia Abelson. All right, skier on the water right now on the U-17 World Girls Slalom Championship bronze medalist. This is Cristiana de Osma from Peru. Getting, uh, getting that pass good to go. Let's have a look at uh, some of the scores uh, from the round previous to this. One and a half on 11.25 meters. And uh, also back that up with, uh, I believe, five on 11.25 meters. If I'm looking at this right, it's either half or, uh, or five on 11.25 meters. We'll soon see if she's uh, close or capable of uh, running that, uh, that kind of, uh, of tilt going forward. Christiana de Osma, looking at some of the, uh, her other scores. She uh, participated in the, uh, the Florida Cup where she got uh, uh, two scores of 211.25 meters. Got halfway down that pass with, uh, with three at the Botas Pro-Am and had scores uh, into at least the, uh, the first third of the course at, uh, at the San Giovasio Pro-Am in the uh, the pro uh, junior competition in the, in the girls division, fourteen and thirteen for Christiana de Osma. Looking good, looking strong out there. Don't see too much wrong with that at this time. So looking in good shape. Cristiana de Osma, who won the bronze medal, the U-17 World Championships with four and a half on 12 meters. And are looking good. So Cristiana de Osma, who is... Uh, Working on a consistency and uh, at Okahili Park uh, just a week ago uh, got us uh, far down 11.25 meters as four. But uh, working, uh, work, working really well throughout the course of the season. Let's see what, what our uh, Peruvian athlete can do. Cristiana de Osma. Like what she's doing out there, bringing the handle in nice and low and good aggressive skiing there through, uh, through 14, 13 and now 12 meters. And she's gonna have a crack at 11.25 meters and uh, see if she can uh, round off her effort here with a flurry. So keeping things flowing in the right direction. Christiana de Osma. Mm. 
Here comes Christiana. 11.25 meters, just trying to maintain a width into the gate shot. Round number one gets a good effort there. Round number two, she's waiting on that buoy, pulling long and on the inside of number three, which uh, uh, gives her the result of two at 11.25 meters. The, uh, the sun uh, uh, shining into her face probably didn't help her out so much. But a uh, two buoy count on 11.25 meters. Wouldn't say it's among our best scores of the season, but it's uh, but at least it keeps a uh, a good healthy uh, streak of uh, scores into 11.25 meters uh, going. So a good solid effort there. As we work our way down to our next competitor, it will be Louisa Boehner. All right, so continuing right along, we have Louisa Boehner getting some messages through. A good opportunity uh, for you to uh, subscribe uh, to the TWBC YouTube channel, help uh, TWBC and the sport uh, grow uh, together by hitting the subscribe button at the top of the page to be involved with the live chat. One of our... Uh, one of our regular uh, subscribers, uh, Rufa Briley, uh, mentioned that uh, yesterday's broadcast was uh, viewed uh, close to uh, 10,000 times. However, the broadcast received over a hun only 100 likes, and uh, we would certainly appreciate that as well if you give us a, a thumbs up along the way as well. 49K, 16 meters for Louisa Boehner, coming to us out of... The Granite State of New Hampshire. We have uh, have quite a few skiers uh, from uh, from that New England state uh, on the water, and uh, quite a few from the Boehner family uh, to boot as well. Okay, so that was 60 meters on 46k. 28 miles an hour, I beg your pardon. Just slicing and dicing it out, out there. So now from 46, she goes to 49K. Scores that she has uh, produced. Uh, three at to 60 meters 52, which would be pass number three if she gets to that point. And also previous to that, uh, three buoys at uh, 52k 16 meters so it's it's going to be a case to see if she can improve upon the halfway mark on pass number three that is uh, the essence of what she's trying to achieve here with her uh, performance in round number three let's see if she can get the job done she's certainly uh positioned her passes uh, well and uh, with uh with a possible run at uh, 52k uh, uh, skiing away from the sunlight coming up from the uh, from the eastern horizon there we go and Louisa Boehner uh, through 46 and 49 and she'll never have another attempt at 52k for the third and last round Louisa Boehner All right, as we continue to roll right along, you folks are getting ready to watch uh, the uh, the pro uh, pro section of the uh, the event, which will take place a little bit later on uh, this afternoon. Make sure you have an idea of who you would want to vote for in the uh, the skier of uh, the day uh, vote. You can go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play to participate in the skier of the day. Sponsored by two new healthy snacks. And now coming back at 52 kilometers an hour, 
for her next pass. This is Louisa Boehner. There she goes around buoy number one. Her best that she's able to, uh, to get has been three. She's going to make a play on four, which she does. She might even make a play on the pass, but unfortunately unable to get past four. But it is her best score of the competition. So there we go. That is a four buoy count. That's her best score out of the three rounds. And that concludes the international girls division. Four buoys at 60 meters, 52 kilometers an hour. So great, great skiing there for our international girls, including the efforts from uh, Alexia Abelson and Christiana de Osma. So some good support from our uh, from our skiers uh, out of New England. Louisa Boehner, now we go on to boys four. And uh, if, our, uh, if our running order is the same as it's been for the last couple of days, I would suggest that, uh, that Jack Decker will be our next competitor to take to the water. We'll see what he can do in boys four. For those of you waiting on the pros, uh, there you see it, the graphic at the top of the page. That our pros will start at 1 p.m., which is the equivalent of a 6 p.m. in uh, in Edinburgh, uh, United Kingdom. The same as 7 p.m. over in Barcelona in Spain. The same as uh, 9 p.m. in uh, in Kuwait City, the same as uh, 3 a.m. in Brisbane, Australia, and uh, you hearty souls in Wellington, New Zealand, will be able to watch the pros at uh, 6 a.m. on a Monday morning, if you intend to watch us live. For those of you that are unable, uh, for one reason or another, to watch us live, you'll be able to, uh, to watch uh, recorded coverage of this event and we have a markers on, uh, on the coverage for every single broadcast here on TWBC to quickly allow you to get to the portion of the coverage that you want to see. 60 meters, this is Jack Decker. Jack Decker looking, uh, looking pretty good out there on 60 meters. Boys four has a, uh, has a top speed of 36 miles an hour. And that was on 60 meters. I'm not too sure whether that was 55 or 58, but uh, we'll make that determination in the moment. And he'll be returning at 58 kilometers an hour. Now, so far as the national record is concerned, actually no one has the national record for boys four. It's a newly minted uh, division, uh, relatively speaking, since, uh, since 2020. There is a benchmark score, however, four at 10.75 uh, meters, four at 39 and a half off at 36 miles an hour or 58K. And uh, in order to claim the national record, a skier in boys four has to exceed that 2020 benchmark. All right, so Jack Decker, he's gone through 60 meters at 55. He's going to come back in at 14 point. He's going to come in at 58K, 60 meters. Top speed uh, for, uh, for men's and uh, boys skiing. Jack Decker skiing into the sun which isn't going to help him too much but he's still ahead of the course and uh, coming through the wakes from five into number six uh, just realizing that that sticks buoy is just ahead of him so flips the ski on its inside edge and manages to uh, to run that effort so there we go 
That is Jack Decker. Jack Decker, skied in Boys 4, which is a division uh, for, uh, for those uh, 14 uh, to 15 years of age inclusive. When the, uh, the junior divisions were reconfigured uh, into their current categories as they stand right now, it grew from, uh, from three uh, junior divisions uh, for boys and girls to five, and each of those divisions uh, carries a, uh, a two-year span with the, with the uh, exception of uh, boys one, where, uh, where junior skiers can start as, uh, as young as they, as they want, but uh, uh, once uh, they get uh, to age 10, then they start climbing into the next division. All right, here we go. Jack Decker, this is 14.25 meters. The boat speed is now the only consistent thing going for his skiing right now, going forwards. 14.25 meters, gets the pass to go. Jack Decker, good, good skiing there from him. Uh, hung, hung tough all the way through. Scored three and a half on 14.25 meters in, uh, in the second round. And then the round previous uh, to that, uh, Jack uh, uh, came through uh, in the clutch with another uh, great, uh, great score. I'll try and find that score for you because actually Jack Decker uh, yesterday uh, skied two times, skied in the morning and skied uh, in the afternoon to, uh, to account for the fact that on Friday, uh, none of our uh, our youth division skiers were available to ski because uh, they had to attend this thing called school. So uh, with that in mind, Jack Decker uh, has uh, produced a uh, score right now in excess of the one that he uh, produced earlier. Three and a half on the 14.25 meters. Let's see what he's got. Coming here and now. Jack Decker, ooh, bringing the handle in hard off uh, number two, but that I believe is his best scorer out of, uh, out of those that he's uh, produced so far in this competition. Two on 30 meters, skis into the shore. Solid effort there from him. And uh, should, be encouraging, should be an encouraging sign going forward. Jack Decker. All right, so looking at Jack Decker at the tail end of uh, that run, uh, just uh, just trying to collate uh, a bit of the information that I've uh, previously uh, marked on for, uh, for the earlier competition. Uh, Jack Decker scored one and a half on 13 in one of the previous rounds as well. So uh, he has done a little bit better this time around. So here we go, our next skier uh, to take to the water, 55.18 for uh, Jake Butterfield. 55, 18.25 meters for Jake Butterfield. Here we go, folks. Jake Butterfield, 18.25 meters, 55K. Coming to us from a skiing family out in Texas. And uh, looking pretty, uh, pretty good. Looking in, uh, in good, good shape up to this point.
All right, working away uh, down this uh, down this list. And he'll be coming back at 58k on 18.25 meters. A reminder to you, good folks out there, that uh, the TWBC apparel is available online at uh, waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash shop. But while you're here on site at Sunset Lakes, TWBC apparel is available through uh, through Splash Threads. Get the latest TWBC styles and also, also get your official apparel of the 2023 uh, Travis Grand Prix right here, courtesy of Splash Threads. Check out the latest styles, the latest colors, the latest graphics right here at, on site at Splash Threads. And if you want to check out uh, TWBC's range of apparel, go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash shop. Here we go, Jake Butterfield. Eighteen point two five meters at fifty eight k. Little long pull into number five, which uh, could have uh, compounded a few of his technical problems that he uh, that he had on that pass. But for the most part, he seems to uh, be able to adapt uh, very very quickly to uh, to changing conditions. And uh, we'll see what he's got on sixteen meters coming back with. Uh, the, uh, the maximum speed being achieved at 58K or 36 miles an hour. All right, so Jake Butterfield getting ready for 16 meters at 58K. And I have an important message for those of you on site. So pay attention, please. Important message for those of you on site. The food truck has arrived. So once that is installed, uh, uh, some culinary delights uh, from our uh, good folks uh, from, uh, from the uh, locale. We're we'll serving up. Some goodies there very, very soon. Here we go. Serving up a good looking pass here. Up to a point on 16 meters. It's going to end up being four for him. And, uh, Jake Butterfield looking at some of his uh, other scores. Uh, four on 16 in uh, one of our previous rounds. And uh, looking, uh, looking a little earlier where he was uh, first, off, uh, first off the dock yesterday. He scored... Three and a half on 16. So uh, he's skiing at around about the point where you can call that consistent. But I'm sure he'll uh, he'll want to uh, go back and uh, and try and uh, get a little bit a uh, little bit further down 60 meters at least, and at least have a crack at 14. But uh, for the moment, Jake Butterfield scores four on 16 meters which is tied for his best score this weekend all right so skier up next is going to be Damien Eid Again, and a few messages coming through. I'll address those in a moment. Okay, apparently uh, Damien isn't on site, so we go on to our next competitor, who should be Damien Ede. Uh, oh, Brett Ellis, I beg your pardon. Hmm. Almost got locked into that, uh, into that loop there, but Brett Ellis on the water right now. 55k, 18.25 meters in boys four, which means that he goes up in speed before the line shortens. Brett Ellis.
Nice. I don't see much wrong with that. All right. Looking good. Brett Ellis. Good controlled effort on pass number one. All right, so continuing right along here at the Travis Grand Prix, supported by Mike and Kerry Morgan, along with Michael DeMello, and sponsored by the syndicate brand of HO, along with Ski Dock, and Masterline Ropes and Accessories, Eagle, Wetsuits and Accessories, and the Jack Travers Water Ski School here at Sunset Lakes. Looking good. Rocking it from one side of the course to the next. That is a Brett Ellis. That was a 58K. So that was at 58K, 18.25 meters. Controlling the speed well. And doing pretty nicely on that Conley C1. So, looking good now. Uh, the uh, the entries uh, for the audience prize have long since uh, uh, closed. So, uh, we'll f we're going to find out uh, later on during this competition who uh, who takes the audience prize uh, based upon uh, their ability to accurately predict uh, the podiums in, uh, in women's and uh, men's uh, pro slalom. But uh, the voting uh, is available for the skier of the day. Make sure you go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play to participate in the vote for the skier of the day, uh, sponsored by 2U Healthy Snacks. On oh, Brett Ellis, all getting in uh, to getting into awkward shape there on uh, that run of a 60 meters at 58K. A pass that I believe he's gone into uh, in previous rounds, where he got four on 60 meters in uh, the ra in the uh, his first round effort and got five on 16 in the, uh, the second round. He backs that up with a four here and uh, much like uh, Jake Butterfield uh, needing some uh, some time to uh, to figure out how to get uh, through 60 meters with the boat speed being at max. All right, so last skier to go out in boys four, Noan Burrell. 58K, 16 meters. So provided that he uh, runs the opening pass, he'll take the lead in this division in this round. 
Noan Burrell uh, out of the scores these have produced so far. He's gone uh, one on 12 in one of the rounds. And uh, the other round was also one at 12. So uh, consistent, I give him that. Coming to us out of Switzerland. Skiing tremendously well with a uh, opening pass of 16. We'll see how much further he, uh, he goes. That is a uh, Noan Burrell. And just a reminder to you good folks out there that on October the uh, the 11th, which is the first Wednesday of, uh, of World's Week, remember that uh, this site is hosting the IWWF World Water Ski Championships from, uh, from October the 10th through to October the 15th. And on October the 11th at the... Uh, the Ski Beach uh, a Bar and Grill in Leesburg. There will be a special uh, 50th anniversary celebration, celebrating 50 years of business here at the Jack Travers Water Ski School. The, uh, the party itself will start at 5 p.m. on October the 11th, Wednesday, October the 11th. So make sure that you are a part of that celebration, which is organized by Kim Laskoff, uh, Jim Clooney, and uh, Brett Furley. Three esteemed uh, athletes from Jack Travers uh, Water Ski School. Here we go. Noah Burrell. Pulling in and getting rather narrow into number five. Actually into number three, I beg your pardon. Round number four, five and six. Solid skiing there. So getting through 16 and 14, uh, Noan Burrell. Just trying to uh, keep a, uh, a lock on the, um, on the amount of speed that he generates. Now certainly uh, one or two ways that you can do that. One of them uh, incredibly effective, the other not so much. The not so much is a skiing buoy to buoy and uh, trying uh, not to generate uh, a too much natural speed and keeping a, a cap on that going behind the boat. And the other is to, uh, is to ski with a lot more angle going across the back of the boat to give yourself enough time to get wide and, uh, and be early enough to, uh, to bleed uh, enough the speed off to backside the buoy and uh, to reconnect with the handle uh, in time before the uh, the weight crossing. So here we go. This is Noam Burrell pulling long into number two, uh, continuing to uh, to ski here. Number three and four and five and should make it outside number six. There you go. He'll continue on. He'll continue on to the 12 meter line and his uh, best score, his only score, replicated, replicated twice is one on 12 meters. All right then, Noan Burrell getting through a six on uh, 13 meters. Now coming back on 12 meters. Now he's had a, a score of one and he's done that twice. Let's see if he can get a little bit above that. He is out wide of the tow boat. Now he's got a better swing into buoy number one. He's there on number one. And he's still unable to get outside the second buoy on 12 meters. So one, one, and one on 12 meters. So if you want consistency, he's your guy.
So there we go. That is uh, Noam Burrell. Got a decent swing here into buoy number one. Brought the handle in and uh, tried to get on it, but unfortunately uh, just didn't have the uh, just didn't have the strength for the, uh, the composure to make that happen. So it is one on twelve. Skier about to take to the water is Cameron Waters. So not too sure what she's coming in on, but uh, we'll get that information up on the screen momentarily. Cameron Waters, 55-16. So Cameron Waters, who in the uh, first round of a competition uh, yesterday, didn't ski uh, uh, particularly well. Scored a two and a half on the opening pass, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, recovered very, very well and scored half a buoy on 12 meters on round number two. Let's see if she can end off on a positive note here with the effort in this round. I'm not too sure if the, if the sun uh, is continuing to blind our, uh, our athletes uh, with, uh, with the sun glare from the, from the eastern, uh, eastern end of the course. Time right now is 25 after nine. We are an hour and a half into this event. So, uh, so the sun may not be as much of a factor now as it once was. Cameron Waters in girls four. Let's see if she is up to the task. And getting through with the opening two passes. There you go. 55, 16, and 14. Now getting ready for 13 meters. In screening girls four, which is a, uh, an age category which includes uh, athletes of 14 and 15 years of age uh, inclusively. And as it is a, uh, a newly created division uh, back in uh, 2020, there are no, uh, there are no official uh, national records uh, per se. But there is a 2020 benchmark of a three buoy count at 10.75 uh, meters, 39 and a half off at 34 miles an hour. While that to score uh, might be uh, a little bit out of uh, Cameron's uh, uh, grasp. She's going to give it uh, a shot anyway. Let's see what she's got. 16 and 14 under a belt. This is now 13 meters. Nicely done round buoy number one. 13 meters. Oh, a little late down court. She's going to have to pick up the pace here. There we go, six buoys, running that one a little down course, a little late, but running it to nonetheless. As we look uh, towards the dock and uh, see uh, Jessica Robus getting ready to ski. Cameron Waters uh, taking a, a quicker exit off of buoy number three to keep this pass alive. Not reliant too much of, of, on the turn on her offside. 
but uh, managing to control enough of it on uh, buoy number five and gets round all six buoys. Now, she scored half a buoy on 12 meters in the round previous to this, and we'll, uh, we'll see what she can do uh, on 12 meters this time around. Coming back and uh, skiing into the sun, let's see what she's got. Approach to the course at 55K, 12 meters. Cameron Waters. Entrance, buoy one. And that will end up being a best score of the competition. One buoy on 12, Cameron Waters. One of the resident skiers here at Sunset Lakes. So solid effort there. Didn't start off too well, but she finished strong. And one buoy on 12 meters is the, uh, the score that will, uh, that will uh, carry for her. All right, now we'll go into uh, F class classification for our two women's two athletes. We'll see uh, Julia uh, Spreng uh, ski in a few minutes, but before her, Jessica Robus. So, coming in at 37K, 80.25 meters. I think, actually, she's decided to go in a one pass higher than what she did uh, on the, uh, the previous uh, two occasions. So, 37K, coming in, Jessica Robus. Jessica, who's looking forward to... Uh, to a wedding uh, coming up on uh, December the 9th. Getting married to uh, Cole McCormick. Jessica Robus uh, getting uh, ooh, pitted out there off uh, number four into number five, so she'll end up with four, but her best uh, score was achieved on, uh, on round one. So Jessica Robus. You scored a five buoys at 40K in uh, the first round. And scored a two and a half in the, the second round and somewhere slotted in between, she scored four. All right. Early days for her so far as her slalom uh, comp uh, competitiveness is concerned. Just a little tail heavy into number four and uh, unable to generate much angle uh, afterwards. I think she's probably uh, doing a little bit too much uh, buoy watching and uh, adjusting her technique and her direction in accordance to that rather than, uh, than, than skiing uh, ahead of the course and using that to, uh, to help her complete her runs. But uh, coming back and still competing here. This is a women's two uh, F classification slalom skiing. But she's still out there on the water, mind you. Look at this. Running that, uh, that second pass. I don't know whether she's going in at this point. And it looks like this time around the mulligan is in effect for, uh, for, class, uh, for class F in women's two uh, slaloming. So that was, uh, I believe, 37K. Uh, boat speed was still the same.
So again, a good deal of support uh, uh, moving forward for about uh, 40 kilometers an hour coming back. This should be uh, Jessica Robus. Sure has, uh, has some folks uh, uh, not only here, but across the country uh, seeing what, uh, what she's able to achieve here. Jessica Robus in women's two, skiing under the uh, the F uh, classification. Still there around number four and uh, tried to make a play on five and uh, a scoring stops there with a four buoy count at uh, 40 kilometers an hour. Four buoys at 40K with the mulligan in effect. Four buoys at 40K for, uh, for Jessica Robus. Good aggressive start there off buoy number one. Really worked the angles there. You know, and retained a, a lot of her water speed that kept her upright into buoy number uh, three. But things are starting to get a little bit uh, squirrely there off number three into number four. Uh, hips got separated into that, uh, that fourth ball turn. Then things didn't exactly uh, get much better going into number five. So uh, she gets four buoys at 40K. That is Jessica Robus. So as a Jessica returns to the dock. She continues uh, to, uh, to slalom up to the, uh, the maximum of four passes. But uh, I think her maximum score is going to be four at uh, 40K. But uh, uh, props there to, uh, to Jessica for, uh, for continuing to... Uh, to slice and dice it out there with four at uh, 40K on the, uh, on the pass uh, uh, from the western end. She swims into shore. Good, good skiing there from her. All right, Julia Spring. is our next competitor, our final competitor in women's two. Slides on in into the water. And uh, Julia Spring, about to get married herself. Uh, she will uh, exchange the vows with, uh, with Thibaut Daignan uh, in the early part of uh, next year. We'll see what she can do right here in the meantime. So a message here from Robert Robus, uh, way to go, Jessica. A uh, father uh, sends her uh, lots of love there. 18.25 meters uh, for the uh, the opening pass for Julia uh, Spring. 34, 18.25 meters. Looking very good there on that uh, that radar session. Oh, she knows how to generate angle, but uh, more to the point, she knows how to keep it across course without over-leaning behind the boat. Employing a, a technique that, uh, that a lot of uh, pro-women slam skiers that I've, I've seen uh, uh, 
utilize where it's a case of turn and hold the position rather than trying to uh, to push uh, more leverage behind the boat and uh, and, af and affect one's ability to keep uh, keep the shoulders up and level and uh, stable going into the turn. And it's uh, certainly evidenced here off a of buoy number three for uh, for Julia Spring. She's in uh, fantastic shape here on that radar. And uh, that was a 34K. 34K is, uh, I believe, 20 uh, mile an hour. We now go to 37, which is 22. Forty kilometers an hour. Seems to have a real easy time with the weight crossings here. Oh, look at that. Good backside. It turns there at 40K. Started at 37. That was 40. And... Uh, Good, good skiing there. Good job. Well done there at 40K. As she now moves up to 43, which is 26 miles an hour. So Julia Spring, a former uh, U17 world uh, champion in equestrian sports. So she, uh, she brings to us a good dose of athleticism that she was able to achieve during uh, those days of competition. So coming back at 40 kilometers, 43 kilometers an hour or 26 miles an hour. Julia Spring in the, uh, the rounds uh, previous to this. She scored zero at 46. And I suspect she'll want to uh, ski a little bit better than that here and now. Julia Spring, there we go, round buoy number one and number two. Look at this. Hardly missing a beat out there with these turns. Four, five, and six, and that is at 26 miles an hour. 26 miles an hour, 43K. She'll now go up to 46K or 28 miles an hour. So Julia Spring, who scored, uh, what was it, two at uh, 40 kilometers an hour in round one, zero at uh, 46K in round two. So she's already bet at those two scores. So uh, I'll go so far as to say it's her personal best territory for her right now. So this is her first ever tournament, and it's a three-round slalom. So Julia Sprang, 46 kilometers an hour now. Let's see if she can keep her composure. Approaching the course right now. Let's see what she's got. Be getting married uh, to uh, Thibaut Day on the early part of next season. Entrance, round buoy number one. This is at 28 mile an hour. Keeping the flow going, she's still there. Oh, look at this, a 28. Oh, look at that, at 28 mile an hour, she has absolutely smoked that pass. There you go, in her first ever tournament. Julia Sprang, continuing on to 49K, 30 miles an hour coming up. And that is gonna be a bit of a jolt going forwards, but if she can maintain this kind of technique, and uh, keep it consistent round the turns, then she will be in 
with a fighting chance of running the next pass as well. And I think that it's probably fair to say that in the entirety of this competition so far, Julia Spreng has probably run more buoys than anyone out there performing when you consider the passes that uh, she's taken so far. And I tell you what, fitness and endurance uh, plays a role here as well. Here we go, this is 30 miles an hour or 49K, 18.25 meters. Let's see uh, how far she can get here. 49K, all right, the start is on. Round buoy number one, round number two, she's still there. Round number three, keeping it going, and I think uh, she uh, <laughs> bails out there, but three at 30 miles an hour, three at 49K, her first ever competition, so uh, her highest score in this represents her personal best, Julia Spring, with, uh, with three buoys at 49K, 18.25 meters. Im impressive performance, and I think for her wedding present, she'll want a new slalom ski. Can you make that happen, Tebow? There you go. Good effort. Six buoys, 49K, 18.25 meters. Now let's start working on short line. So there we go, Julia Spring. Watching her once again. Three buoys at 49 and uh, I don't know whether she's pleased or whether she's exhausted. I think a combination of the two uh, appears to be the case there, but uh, yeah. Three buoys at 49, 18.25 meters. I think she needs oxygen. All right then, we're, chitch we're uh, we got a crew change. Uh, that will take us just a moment or two. Stick around. The continuation of the Travis Grand Prix is uh, is imminent with the remainder of our amateur round three before we go into pro women and pro men's final, along with the prize giving for the prizes of this this competition and the Water Ski Pro Tour. We'll be back right after this.
I'm involved with the Flowpoint Method because I think it's a really strong program. We've been working on a couple things and it's just fine tuning and I want to be able to make sure that I can do those movements no matter where I am so I can feel confident skiing at any site. It's just really all encompassing and I think that's really beneficial. It's very helpful to like keep on those keys and have a support team behind you that you can ask questions to and are there for every step of the way. My name is Thomas de Gasperi. I'm from Italy. I'm a two-time World Slalom champion. I've been coming here at La Guapa for four years now. What I really love about this place is that we get a chance to ski in a big natural lake right behind me with a perfect course. Also, we have a chance to go 10 minutes away to a perfect man-made lake where conditions are always perfect. The boat, the drivers are always top level. The weather is always perfect. Right then, so we continue on. Dylan Trask is our next competitor to take to the water. Welcome back to continuing live coverage. This is the third round of amateurs here at the, uh, the Travers Grand Prix for 2023. So glad that you could join us at this early juncture. Dylan Trask, whose uh, best performance up to this point has been one and a half on... Uh, on 60 meters, as far as I recall. Might actually be half on 14, but somewhere in the middle there. We'll see uh, see what he uh, can produce. Here we, here we go. Dylan Trask, who skied twice yesterday. First and second round, respectively. Here comes Dylan Trask. 16 meters, 50, uh, 58K. All right, not looking bad. And they're getting through the opening pass of 16 meters. Looking good. Just looking at this instant replay. Getting a little separated into number three, which would be his offside turn. He's uh, right foot forward. Able to compensate for it with a better than average turn on round buoy number four. Stays uh, upright into a buoy number five and six and gets that pass to go, no worries there. Dylan Trask there, and uh, we've got Garrett Carver uh, re almost ready to go here at uh, Sunset Lakes, the home of uh, Jack Travers Woodski School, one of the sponsors for our event, along with uh, with Syndicate Brand by HO Sport, Masterline Ropes and Accessories, Eagle uh, Wetsuits and Accessories. and uh, Ski Dock as well.
All right, there, continuing, uh, continuing right along. We've got to Dylan Trask with 16 meters at, uh, at 58, 58K, I believe. All right, so continuing on with that run. And uh, here in the announcing uh, booth here, I have the pleasure of uh, welcoming uh, uh, Julia Spring and introducing her to a whole new uh, legion of fans out there. So, uh, so Julia, uh, how, was, how was your session out there? You know, it was, I think it was good. It was my second, yesterday was the first time at 46 kilometers. Um, so wasn't really prepared for that, but today I was able to do three and just really happy to be here. And uh, yeah, it's a great experience. My first tournament, so I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's always it's always good to get a perspective uh, from skiers who uh, who haven't had the opportunity or uh, or the uh, the experience, the time uh, to uh, to compete at uh, uh, competitions at this level, uh, to kind of see uh, kind of see their take uh, of the event. As we see uh, uh, Dylan Trask get uh, get a score of. Uh, of half Ooh. a buoy uh, to 14.25 meters, but uh, in down in the water there with half on 14 now. Now, Julia, uh, how long is it? How long has it been? Uh, you know, since since you've been involved in the sport. I mean, uh, I, I would imagine uh, th this is your first year actually skiing, right? Yes. So I well, I met Tebow about two and a half years ago, and I have to be honest, I didn't know where Claremont was before that. Um, but this is a great community here, and I started on two skis uh, when I met him and then I started slaloming about 14 months ago. Uh, I got my first ski and um, and yeah, it's just been great. I wasn't able to ski too much every month, but then the last month since we decided we're really doing this, it's been, I picked up the sets a little bit more and um, yeah, I have the best coach in the world and I'm just really lucky to be in the situation. All right, and you also bring a, a, a dose of athleticism into this event because you're actually at one time a U17 world champion in, in equestrian sports, right? Yep, two time. Um, and so I was doing that a lot when I was young. I went to college for it, actually. I was in collegiate as well. At the uh, which of college? Georgia. University yeah. of Georgia. Yep. Okay. And so I have a little bit of, you know, understanding of the mindset of what it takes but this sport they make it look so easy but it's really not but I have a lot of respect and um, appreciation for everyone that puts these events on and everyone that skis in it. Excellent stuff so uh, you've gotten into 49k of 30 miles an hour a real uh, breakthrough performance there uh, uh, going forwards. Uh, are you looking forward to a to a change of ski because uh, I think you might have might have out skied uh, that that model here and the B uh, maybe maybe try and short line skiing. Um, yep, you know that was the deal with Tebow last night. We decided that if I did two at 48, then I would get a new ski. So we'll see what he picks out. Um, I'm really excited for next steps. All right, then we uh, we certainly look forward to seeing you ski again. Uh, congratulations uh, to you, uh, uh, Julia Spring. Uh, halfway down 49k of uh, 30 miles an hour, and uh, a great performance in your first ever tournament. Yeah. Uh, congratulations to you. Thank you, Tony, and thank you to TWBC and all the sponsors and the Travers family. Really appreciate all of your time. All right, they echo those sentiments. And uh, we continue on with Garrett Carvala out in the water with a 13 meter opening pass at 58K. In tremendous shape out there. Handle up a little bit high off number three uh, in spite of that. But uh, managing to, uh, to control his, uh, his aggression and uh, stay upright on this pass. It is six buoys on 13 meters opening pass at 58K for Garrett Carver. The first of uh, at actually our, uh, the first of our men's two skiers, uh, one of only two men's two uh, skiers, uh, one of the... The, the only men's two skier, I beg your pardon. Ooh. All right, so uh, skier on the dock is Jarris Steel, the man of steel. Garrett Carver coming in, 12 meters. Second pass. Drives hard off buoy number two. Bringing the handle in a little bit forwards there and uh, trying to make a play on 12 meters and unfortunately doesn't uh, 
doesn't uh, come to fruition this time. He scored five on 12 in one of the, uh, the previous rounds and was a second off the dock yesterday where he scored a two and a half on 12. So somewhere in amongst that, uh, those two performances, you'll find uh, a Garrett Carver's uh, effort here with, uh, well, what is it, three and a half on 12. So three and a half on 12, uh, the final performance in round three for Garrett Carver. So coming in at 55k, 14.25 meters on that Lapointe uh, Raslamski, this is uh, Jarris Steele. 55k, 14.25 meters, men's free uh, skier, which means that 55k is going to be his maximum speed and he will start shortening beyond uh, the six buoy count of pass number one. Here comes Jarris Steele. 14.25. Solid effort on buoy number one. A little narrow on number two. Sometimes if you get a better than average turn, it uh, kind of leads you into a false sense of security and uh, you end up going narrow for uh, for the next turn, which, uh, which happened off number one into number two. But thankfully enough, uh, Jarrah still has enough experience and enough in hand to mitigate uh, any problems he may have experienced around in buoy number two. A left-footed skier, which uh, certainly, uh, certainly makes number one turn a little easier to obtain. Handle up a little high off number two, but he is uh, able to get it back in time, back down in time, I should say. So, uh, tremendous skiing there. And then looking in uh, good, good shape there, uh, essentially on pass number one. Now let's see if he can uh, raise it up a little bit higher. Here we go, folks, coming in. This is Jarris Steele. 30 meters. One, two, three, four, five, and number six for Jarris Steele. Looking smooth on that one, getting progressively smoother with each successive pass. And certainly something that he, uh, that he needs going forwards to, uh, to maintain his balance and equilibrium uh, into each turn, rather than move too much uh, through the turn. Gets the smoothest turn that he can in each instance and then put, applies the, the pressure and uh, the resistance behind the boat uh, to, uh, to stay with the run. So, coming in, this is Jarris Steele. This is 12 meters. Oh, getting a big hit off number three and uh, keeping his uh, composure around the turns. And he's going to have a shot at 11.25 meters. So, Jarris Steele uh, coming through in the clutch. Jarrah Steele, who uh, 
over the, uh, the, the last of two rounds of skiing. Has uh, produced us some magic out there with one and a half on 11.25 meters in one of the previous rounds. And scored halfway down 11.25 meters on the, uh, the immediate uh, previous round of round number two. We're in round number three, the third and last round for our amateur skiers. So uh, continuing to, uh, to rock it out here and uh, opened up uh, my uh, Facebook uh, Messenger. Uh, for those of you out there that, uh, that know me well enough, uh, you can uh, communicate with me that way. And I'll be, uh, be reading out a few of those messages, including this one from Taylor May uh, Wolsey Van Mastijk. And uh, thanking you uh, for, your, for your kind words and... Uh, I hope, uh, hope to see you again uh, sometime uh, within uh, the next season or so. Here we go. This is uh, Jarris Steele, round uh, number three on 11.25 meters. He gets round number four, and this could be one of his better scores of the season. Four buoys on 11.25 meters for Jarris Steele. Good effort there on that, uh, that the point slalom ski. And uh, it's uh, just coincidental that, uh, that as I was uh, mentioning a message from Taylor, Way, Taylor May Wolsey Van Mastijk, who uh, skis on the Lapointe slalom ski herself, that we have a Lapointe uh, slalom skier on the water getting uh, a little bit more than halfway down the course, actually inside number four. So it looks like it is going to be a three buoy count. For Jarris Steele, three buoys there on 11.25 meters. So consistently into 11.25 meters in each of the three rounds. And uh, excellent skiing there for, uh, for Jarris Steele. That's not the end of men's three, though, because we've got uh, two more skiers to come. We've got Travis Torley, who's on the water now. And right after him is going to be Noah Veek. Coming in on the opener, which I believe is going to be 14.25 meters. Yeah, and gets it done. Skiing away from the sun, but I think the sun is uh, high enough up in the sky right now to where it won't provide uh, any, uh, any distraction whatsoever going forwards. At least uh, for those passes uh, coming up from the west end uh, towards, uh, towards the east here at this beautiful site at the Sunset Lakes. The home of Jack Travers' uh, ski school. And this uh, competition, the Travers uh, Grand Prix for 2023. Brought to you by the Travers Ski School at Sunset Lakes. Also, uh, Syndicate brand by HO Sports. Masterline ropes and accessories. Eagle wetsuits and accessories. Along with a ski dock. And... Uh, the additional help and support from Mike and Kerry Morgan along with uh, Michael DeMello. There we see on the dock uh, Noah Veek coming to us originally from uh, the Hoosier State of Indiana. I got that one right. Travis Torley. Little flat-footed into number two, but the ski reacts positively to that on 13 meters. This is men's three slalom in where the max speed is 55K, and he gets the job done with all six buoys. Good, good effort going forwards. 
For you guys and girls out there, we're taking a look at Travis Torley on 30 meters. A reminder once again that on site, courtesy of Splash Threads, uh, uh, we're featuring uh, apparel from TWBC with the logo and all of the uh, the style and the trimmings you have come to expect uh, from uh, from that apparel line. Check out Splash Threads uh, on site. And also for those of you uh, that are online, check out the uh, the full range of apparel, uh, workout uh, vests, uh, t-shirts, caps, towels, the whole bit. Uh, waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash shop. Also at Splash Threads, they have a whole, whole range of apparel uh, styled uh, with the, the logo for the Travis Grand Prix for 2023. So uh, grab those, uh, those so souvenir items while you still can. Travis Torley, this is the 12th meter attempt. Little down course off number two, but uh, as has been shown, uh, if you make a mistake, as long as you've got the hands on your handle, you uh, have a chance of uh, making up for lost time as uh, Travis Torley did right there with that uh, superb effort on uh, pass uh, number three, which is a the 12 meter line, Travis Torley. Travis Torley, who has uh, scored a three on 11.25 meters in one of our uh, previous two rounds. and also scored a two and a half. So he's been consistent around the halfway mark on the next pass, which is 11.25 meters. All right, here we go, folks. Travis Torley, 11.25 meters. His best in this competition is halfway down this run. He gets round number, number one and number two. Lays up on number three. Oh, and goes down around buoy number three. So his uh, scores in this competition have been three, two and a half, and two and one half. And that is the, uh, Final uh, three scores there in this uh, three-round slalom competition in the amateurs for Travis Torley in men's three. All right, so he'll be swimming into the shore and uh, leaving the way open for uh, our last competitor in men's three. All right, skier on the water right now. Coming in on 14.25 meters for his opening pass. It is going to be Noah Veek. Noah Veek, originally out of the Hoosier State of Indiana. He and uh, Vanessa, along with the re remainder of their family, uh, live in West Palm Beach, uh, not too far away from here in South Florida. Not uh, looking too bad on that opener of 14.25 meters. I'm sure uh, Vanessa is along the shore, shore side, uh, trying to encourage him along. 
with his effort out there. Uh, Vanessa herself, for her part, uh, comes to us out of Australia, originally from uh, Perth in uh, WE, where the time over there is a uh, quarter past uh, 10 uh, in the evening. Not too far away from being Monday in that part of the world. Already Monday is, uh, is the city of Auckland in New Zealand, where it is a quarter past 3 a.m. And uh, certainly a thank you, hearty folks out there for watching us at, uh, at a late hour, including those of you uh, watching us from Japan, where it is quarter after 11 at night. For those of you watching us in uh, Mumbai, in India, it is uh, a quarter to eight in the evening there. And right here in the eastern seaboard of the United States, it is a quarter after 10 in the morning here. Noah Veek. Strong effort here, 14 and 30 meters. Gets it to go and uh, Tries to be efficient with the turns and expend as little energy as possible to run that path as he sets up for 12 meters. This is Noah Veek. All right, so. Great uh, competitive effort there from, uh, from Noah Veek. All right, continuing to roll right along through this uh, tournament. Here at uh, Sunset Lakes, the home of Jack Travers Water Ski School. Glad to have the Prince of Company here at the Travers Grand Prix 2023. My name's Tony Lightfoot. Pleasure once again uh, presenting the, the skiing as it uh, takes place on the water. Okay, so we're on 12 meters. And looking strong and uh, looking in fine, fine technique here. Not moving too much uh, in the turn and just really just absolutely putting down, dropping down the hammer behind the boat and offering as, uh, as much resistance as possible to prevent himself going any further down course than he's uh, prepared to uh, to give in order to maintain his uh, posture into the turn and allow the ski to do the same uh, on each side of the course. All right then, so uh, as, I, as I suspected a little bit, he uh, came in on 30 meters. That now is 11.25 meters. He's I was looking at that and uh, thinking, well, it, it made 12 meters look difficult. Well, it wasn't actually 12. It was 11.25 meters. So he's now going to have a crack at 10.75 meters. He is the best score in this, uh, this competition. Has been a score into uh, 10.75, I believe. Four and a half, as a matter of fact. Let's see what he's got. Let's see if he can get into 41 off, 10.25. This is Noah Veek. One last opportunity to do it. Round buoy number one gets the start. Round number two, he's still there at 55K, 10.75 uh, 10 meters. He's round number four. He's still there on five and coming in the, into number six and he'll have a crack at 41 off. Noah Veek at 55K. 10.25 meters coming up next. Superb effort, his best score of the weekend. And he'll go home to uh, West Palm Beach, a happy camper.
but he's still got some work to do. 10.25 meters comes up next. Noah Viku scored a four and a half at uh, 10.75 meters in the, uh, in I believe the, the second round and earlier in the competition, he scored three and a half at 10.75 meters. So moving on up, just like the Jeffersons. Coming in, 41 off, 10.25 meters. A skier out of the huge estate of Indiana, Noah Veek. Not too sure how many looks at 41 off he's gotten. But there you go, there's number one. There's two, drops the handle. Looks like he's gonna get a half for that. So one and a half at 41 off, 10.25 meters. The best uh, amateur round of uh, skiing that we've seen so far in this competition. We're in the third round. So our best amateur score, scratch score is Courtesy of Noah Veek with one and a half at 10 to five. So well done there. All right, that concludes men's three. We're gonna go into men's four. Ryan Decker comes up next and we will uh, introduce him out onto the water right after this. All right, Scott Ellis bringing the boat to uh, dockside. All right, so we've gotten hold of uh, uh, Noah Veek's handle. We're uh, gonna measure that to confirm whether the, the handle um, is in tolerance. So we'll confirm the score. Here we go, folks. Skier on the water now. Brian Decker, our first uh, of uh, four skiers in men's four. 14.25 meter start. So Brian Decker out in the water, haven't seen, just seen Noah Vika ski into 10.25 meters. Will he be encouraged uh, by that score? Or would he be intimidated? We'll soon see within the next uh, few passes as we look at uh, Brian Decker roll that ski into its uh, right edge and uh, just backside in number one and uh, just continuing to, uh, to slice and dice the course as he has done for the, uh, the, the, uh, the previous two rounds, where he has scored a two and a half on 12 meters, and uh, two on 12, so uh, consistency being a, being a hallmark there of his uh, performances. So, Amen. 
All right, so Brian Decker coming back on 13 meters. So Brian Decker getting through 14 and 13 meters at 55K. All right, so a good friend here, Noah Beek, a uh, uh, good, uh, good skier out there on the water and also able to instantly uh, uh, get to grips with the microphone button right here at the announcing point. So, uh, so Noah, Congratulations there, dude. Uh, you got got one and a half at uh, 41 off, 10.25 meters. Uh, you happy with that? Absolutely. Um, been trying to get there all weekend, and we're finally able to put one together at 10.7. And I was trying to get to three at 10.2, but just couldn't put it together at a two ball. Lost the handle. Okay, so that's one of your better scores this season, right? I have run a two, but yeah, one and a half would be up there. Absolutely. Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself. You're kind of like, uh, the, like the, the the silent partner in that in that whole deal with you and uh, Vanessa when she gets to uh, to play out there on the water as the pro skier. You kind of, you know, just be be in the background a little bit and just uh, support her going forwards, right? Absolutely, I love the background. It's it's the, it's a better place to be, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can just imagine you just like being so far in the background, you would disappear and in the hedgerow or some or something like that like try, well we try to it's a little difficult with kids running around um yeah. but that's really what we're trying to do is take the kids away and get them out of vanessa's mind and eyes so that she can get focused but um no it's it's a lot of fun um we've worked hard at it for the last few years and i think we'll continue to do so for the next couple Certainly, as we look at Brian Decker out there, uh, attempt uh, the uh, the 12 meter run and uh, getting about two thirds of the way down the pass, uh, just keeping an eye on what's going on out there on the water. It was a good three ball. Yeah, it was. It was. He uh, kind of got a little pitted into number four, and unfortunately, unable to uh, to get uh, to grips there with uh, three and a half. Yeah, those arms got away from him, and he couldn't get it back. Yeah, indeed. So. Uh, so far, I, 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 I don't know how effectively you can speak for, for Vanessa. You're probably the best person uh, that, that you can tell me about about her in respect to, to skiing in the World Championships and try and uh, peak at the, uh, the, the end towards the season. So I understand that she is skiing in the, in the World Championships. I she believe. is. Yes. She is. So, uh, so how's preparation going along for that? I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's always interesting to ask not only of the skiers' perspective, but also of, uh, of, of the nearest and dearest as so far from a coaching point of view? I would say preparations are going very well. Um, t this weekend didn't necessarily reflect how she's been training, but uh, the, the point of this weekend was to come up here, get a couple rounds at the site that the Worlds are going to be at. Um, whether we made a final or not, that wasn't the end goal. The, the goal was just to feel the waters, be in that tournament environment, because she has missed so many events this year. Um, we wanted to get her out there, uh, feel that tournament environment. Same thing at Mastercraft. It was, it was just get her on the water with the other girls she'll be competing against, and, and let's see where we are. So where would you say percentage-wise she is of her, of her capability right now? Oh, uh, she's, I'd say she's about 85% there. And I, I was actually thinking that, that exact same percentage. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's got more in the tank for sure. We have a couple things that we have to figure out with her ski yet, but we'll get there. Um, you know, it's, it's different. The nerves in tournaments versus the nerves in training are different. And getting her in the environment where you've got the adrenaline you're, and you're pushing on the ski a little bit more, the ski does react a little differently in tournaments. All right, then. So uh, as, we round, as we round off uh, this little chat there, uh, you've gotten... You've got into 41 off finally, finally. This, 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 this weekend. Uh, how, how, how well does that bode for, for your next tournament coming up, whether it be uh, later on this year or, uh, or earlier on next season? Well, every tournament is, is its own thing. They're all unique. You have to get out there every single weekend and, and perform. And, you know, it's, it's nice to get out there and do it. I wish I would have done it in the earlier two rounds as well, but it's just the way that the cookie crumbles. And uh, we'll, we'll move on and make some adjustments in myself for, for preparations for the next event. 
And as Dan Lefebvre gets through the opening pass of 14.25 metres, I congratulate Noah Vick on getting into 41 off. Uh, the best scratch score of the amateurs uh, so far. We're still about halfway down uh, round three, but congratulations uh, to, to you going forwards. And uh, a Hoosier through and through. Absolutely. Thanks, Tony, for everything that you do and everybody with TWBC and here at Jax. Why, thank you very much, and uh, best of luck going forwards. Uh, Noah Vick, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we'll continue on to, with Dan Lefebvre with, uh, with 30 metres uh, with his uh, next run. So, here he comes, uh, Dan Lefebvre, uh, next run there. Here he comes, 13 metres, Dan Lefebvre. We're immense four, which means the max speed is uh, 34 miles an hour, 55k. So good, good skiing there. And uh, getting the job done behind that uh, correct craft and Nautic, the official towboat of the IWWF, the International Water Ski and Wakeboard Federation. 490 uh, horsepower, uh, actually 450 horsepower, uh, providing uh, w enough torque out there for uh, for skiers in all events, tricking, slalom, and uh, jumping. More details on that boat you can find out by going to uh, to Nautique.com. That is Nautique.com. All right, skier out on the water, Dan Lefebvre. We are about halfway down the. Uh, the round three of amateurs. I'd almost uh, venture to say that we're very, very close to uh, to a refueling break, but uh, we'll try and get uh, through a men's four before we uh, we uh, we invoke uh, that uh, that portion of our schedule. Here we go. Skier on the water, Dan Lefebvre. Oh, and uh, Dan Lefebvre just uh, takes a big old dunk there on uh, on that run. Dan Lefebvre, who scored, uh, I believe, four and a half. Dan Lefebvre, who I believe uh, scored uh, into 10.75, but unfortunately uh, not able to do so here and now. Other scores uh, for, uh, for Dan Lefebvre have uh, consisted of a, uh, a two and a half on 11.25 meters. But uh, probably not the best way he wanted to go out. So that was on 12. So on 12 meters, that was uh, two and one half. All right, so working away to our penultimate skier in men's four, the tall, imposing figure of uh, David Skirvin. Yeah, I can talk about you, David. So David Skirvin, who uh, who travels uh, between uh, the uh, the upper left corner of the United States, specifically Oregon, and uh, this uh, this part of the world, the Sunshine State of Florida, pursuing his passion of uh, tournament water skiing, not only uh, with what he does on the water, but also off the water as well. One of our officials here, we thank him very much for his continuing contribution to this sport. Here we go, David Skirvin. Nice, looking, uh, looking strong there. 
And opening pass for David Skirvin. Okay, so we uh, we believe that's 14.25 meters for his opening pass at uh, 55k max speed. So uh, 30 meters is going to be coming back for uh, for David at Skirvin. So continuing right along with uh, David Skirvin, 13 meters. Coming up next, once again, encourage you to stop by the Splash Threads uh, booth uh, to check out their latest styles of apparel. The uh, Travis Grand Prix uh, Branded uh, apparel wear, as, as well as TWBC, are available there, along with some other styles. Check out Splash Threads online and also on Instagram. So here we go. David Skirvin on 13 meters. Taking his time to get a grip of the handle at the tail end of each turn, but... Uh, Thankfully, he's tall enough to mitigate to some of those uh, those errors. And uh, he'll continue skiing onto the 12 meter line. So, here we go. David Skirvin. Getting through uh, the, uh, the pass of uh, 13 meters and getting ready for 12. Just a reminder at the top, uh, uh, provisional start time for the pro women's final is around uh, 1 o'clock p.m., which is approximately 6 p.m. In, uh, in Manchester, England. 7 p.m. in Amsterdam, Netherlands. 9 p.m. In, uh, in Muscat, in Oman. 3 a.m. in Sydney, Australia, and as uh, David Skirvin uh, Stores up a little bit on 12 meters for those of you hearty souls in Auckland and New Zealand. It'll be breakfast time by the time you're able to watch some bro skiing. And it will be uh, around about 6 a.m. on Monday morning. So those are the times that uh, we project that you'll be able to watch our pro, uh, pro finals. And unfortunately there for David Skirvin as, uh, as part of uh, men's four in the amateurs for round three. Unable to get past number two. Tried to make a play on three, but uh, nothing was, uh, was working there at that point. Took a decent hit off buoy number one. A little flat-footed round number two and uh, got an uh, bulked over there. And I think he actually made it round buoy number three, but he couldn't make it outside four, so he stopped skiing at that point. Three buoys on 12 meters for David Skirvin. All right, moving on from David Skirvin, we go on to Steve Voltz. So at 55K, 14.25 meters. Him, 
Okay, so skier about to take to the water in men's four. It is John Murray at 55K, 14.25 meters. Flat-footed off number four and getting uh, later here on 14.25 metres, John Murray, who uh, scored one and a half on 12 metres and two on 12 metres in the previous rounds of skiing. So, Steve, so uh, Jonathan Murray getting through that pass and uh, having a quick look at the folks inside uh, the, uh, the tent. Greetings uh, to all of you there. Time right now is, uh, is 20 to 11 in the morning. So we are about a couple of hours uh, away from, uh, from starting uh, the, uh, the women's uh, pro uh, finals. Just managing to make it round all six buoys on 30 meters. Now he's uh, going to have a uh, pop at the uh, the 12 meter line. We'll see what kind of start he gets uh, on that that particular effort. But not moving around too much in the turn, which is uh, which is always a good thing. You want to try and uh, keep your directional uh, movement uh, behind the boat where you're at your most stable. Good solid effort there. That is John Murray. Through 14, through 13, and now let's see what it's got for 12 meters. Here he is, 12 meters. Good start, but unfortunately a little straight-legged around buoy number two, and that affected the angle he could have generated a cross course from that point and, and uh, managed to get round number three, but nothing beyond that point. So it's going to be two and a half. It's going to be two and one half for his effort there for John Murray on 12 meters. Just looking at this once again from John Murray. Handle up high. And in the drink there, having scored uh, two and a half buoys on the 12 meters. And uh, we're on dockside now, getting ready for our final men's four competitors. It should be Steve Voltz. Though uh, I suspect it's going to be uh, someone else, I believe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, 
Okay. okay, so we go on to men's five. William Trask. William Trask, a 52K, which is, I believe, the, uh, the max speed for men's five. 52K, 16 meters. William Trask uh, at 16 meters, looking to send it. 52K, a little slow there off number three into four, but managing to uh, to weave his way through the course, albeit a little bit late into, uh, into six. But he gets the job done at this early stage of his performance. In round number three, this is William Trask. All right, let's see if we get a, gotten a few uh, messages here on the live chat and also uh, on my Facebook. Oh, it looks like uh, we've uh, gotten a few messages that have just come through. Lindsay Steele was saying, go Jarius, or Jarus, I beg your pardon. Suzanne has uh, plinted in this morning. Eddie Spann uh, congratulating uh, uh, Noah Veek on his performance. And some uh, kind words uh, from, uh, from some of our uh, well wishes uh, of this competition. So, and my good friend Jim Powell has uh, said that 55K, as he rightly says, is uh, the max speed for 55K. And guess what? Skier on the water right now is William Trask, and that is exactly the speed he'll be heading into the course with, with the same line length shortening of 16 meters. I think it's men's uh, six or seven where it, uh, where the line length shortening is, uh, is present at 52K, but no earlier than that. And William Trask at men's five in the water Having, uh, having scored, I believe, three and a half for his effort there. Taking a bit of speed and a little bit of uh, air off uh, number two into number three. A little bit uh, stiff towards the back of the ski. But pulling up on the outside arm and uh, sinking them into the water, having scored three and a half. So William Trask, who earlier on in this competition Competed in the uh, the previous rounds and uh, uh, okay. got into 60 meters or a little bit beyond that. 55, 14.25 meters are coming up for our next uh, competitor. According to my list, it is going to be Scott Greenwood. William Trask, uh, his best score, incidentally uh, three on the 16 meter line, zero on uh, one of the previous rounds as well. So uh, getting in uh, three and a half on 16 meters 55 represents his best score of the weekend. In the meantime, uh, Scott Greenwood is out there who scored a three in uh, one round and I believe uh, backed it up with a score of one and a half on 11.25 meters. So uh, on 14.25 meters, he's a little ways away from getting to that kind of level, but he's uh, getting settled into the course and uh, 
You know, we're going to be seeing quite a bit of him later on as he's the uh, the driver for uh, for one of our pro divisions. So uh, Scott Greenwood doing a fine, fine job out there. Surprising to some. Especially those uh, competitors that only know him as being a, uh, a top-notch driver. All right, then, here we go, folks. This is Scott Greenwood out of Scott in Arkansas. We'll be uh, driving here at the IWWF World Water Ski Championships in a little, little under two weeks' time. He's one of our cadre of drivers in this, uh, this, this tournament. And uh, getting the job done. Look at that. Getting around all six buoys there on 14 and 13 meters. Keeping his chest up, uh, trying to minimize the amount of uh, upper body movement. Brings the uh, the ski underneath the line, and looking good. So uh, Scott Greenwood, a former collegiate water skier, used to ski for the Northeast Louisiana University Indians, uh, which is now known as the University of Louisiana at Monroe Warhawks. We thank uh, though we give a big shout out to those uh, participants. In the, uh, in the Woodgate uh, Warhawk uh, Classic that, uh, that has taken place this weekend on the Bayou Desert in, uh, in Monroe. Big shout out to those folks and uh, especially my good friend uh, uh, Zane Nicholson, uh, the, uh, the team manager there uh, for the Warhawks and indeed to Ryan Gonzalez, the, uh, the team manager for the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette. A former collegiate skier is on the water right now. This is 12 meters. Getting in a little deep off number four and he needed to to stay with the pass and he gets the job done on 12 meters. Good, good skiing there for Scott Greenwood. Scott Greenwood who, uh, who actually met his wife there at uh, Louisiana uh, Monroe. And, uh, and several years later established uh, their uh, their facility over in Scott, Arkansas, along with the uh, the Withrows. It's called Ball Neck Lake and uh, has hosted uh, many a tournament. Good few of folks here from Central Florida, such as uh, such as Taylor Garcia and uh, Jack Critchley, have uh, have traveled uh, to uh, to Ball Neck on a fairly frequent basis during the course of the uh, the season, because it is known as uh, one of the uh, one of the premier sites uh, across the United States. And uh, they've performed wonders there. And uh, a good portion of the reason why is because uh, Scott Greenwood has been at the helm of that towboat for the most part. And uh, having, having exposed himself to that level of skier, it's, uh, it's hardly surprising that, uh, that Scott Greenwood is uh, held as one of the top uh, tournament water ski drivers in the sport. So uh, we we'll look forward to seeing him uh, do that behind with the uh, the Nautic towboat that produces 465 foot pounds of torque. He's going to feel every bit of it as he comes into the course on 11.25 meters. Entrance round buoy number one, a little broken over at the waist. He's round buoy. He tries to make a play on two. But I think uh, fatigue starting to set in, and he gets one uh, one buoy for his effort, one buoy, 
at 11.25 metres, courtesy of Scott Greenwood. And there you go, sinking in. And swimming in right about now, Scott Greenwood from Scott in Arkansas. All right, so looking out to, towards the starting course, uh, towards the, uh, the starting dock, and uh, our next competitor to go, if the list holds true, should be... Uh, should be Greg Chapman. He'll be skiing in men's eight, where I believe the uh, the top speed for that division is 52K. And uh, that being the case, he's gonna come in on 16 meters for his opener. All right, so continuing right along, we got Greg Chapman. There you go, Greg Chapman, 60 meters opening pass. And he gets the job done there with 52K. Now, I mentioned a little bit earlier on that we've got our skier of the day vote, which is uh, uh, taking place right now for, uh, for our pros, which is sponsored by uh, Two You Healthy Snacks. Go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play to obtain more details and to submit your vote for who you would uh, choose as uh, a skier of the day. And you can actually uh, take into consideration uh, performances that were uh, produced uh, uh, yesterday, but, uh, but maybe some of you ought to wait a little bit before casting your vote or at least uh, seeing uh, how things shape up in the women's and men's competition in the, the, uh, the finals. But... Uh, but some of you have actually suggested uh, on the, uh, the live chat that, that maybe there should be a skier a day amongst the amateurs. Well, we don't have an official award for that, but maybe a little bit of a straw poll can, uh, can start uh, gaining some momentum on our live chat. And uh, may I make uh, suggestions as to uh, who uh, would get a skier of the day, or at least a skier of the event among our amateurs. Maybe that one buoy performance on 12 meters from Cameron Waters uh, is open for consideration. Maybe that high level performance at 10.25 uh, meters as we see Greg Chapman uh, take a dive there on 14.25 meters. Or, uh, or maybe, maybe that, uh, that first time a tournament uh, performance from Julia Spring who gets halfway down 49K 30 miles an hour having never skied a tournament uh, before prior to this event. So maybe uh, those uh, performances uh, with those uh, respective athletes uh, could well be open to consideration. I've given you three to, uh, to maybe uh, consider for your straw poll, whether it's Julia Spring or Noah Veek or uh, Cameron Waters, or maybe I'm missing someone out, uh, maybe... Uh, maybe among uh, some of our other competitors. I've at least, at least given you uh, something to think on as we look at uh, Greg Chapman. Greg Chapman on a men's eight, getting in a little bit buffeted there off uh, round number one and number two, looking at the instant replay one more time. And as we uh, see him get a little bit narrow on number four and uh, take the fall here, no, I don't think he's taken a fall there. 
taken a big old hit. And uh, yeah, a little bit down course off number six. So he's going to get uh, five and a half for that. And uh, with that, that concludes uh, men's eighth. We still got about 20 or so skiers to go before we uh, round off uh, the, uh, the amateurs in uh, round three. So stick around. We've got a crew change. We've got a uh, fuel break. And then once we get done with that, we will continue on with the remainder of round three of amateurs. This is the 2023 Travers Grand Prix. And we'll be back right after this. Thanks for calling Wake House. This is Brian. How can I help you? Uh, yeah, Will. Can I let him know who's calling? All right, just a second. Will, I got a fill for you. Perfect. Give me just one second. All right, hit it. Thanks for holding. This is Will. Hey, hey how's it going? Good.
All right, our tow boat is making its way up and down, and uh, we're going to get ready for our next gear to take to water. It should be Vincent Stadelbauer. And uh, while we wait for that uh, boat to return back, uh, let me tell you that uh, Scott Greenwood, uh, fresh, almost fresh uh, out of the, the water and having competed, he is joined by David Skirvin in that Nautic towboat. And when he returns to the dock, we should be ready to bring uh, Vincent Stadelbauer back in. But in the meantime, we'll uh, step one side, uh, just albeit briefly, and then we'll, when we return, we'll have uh, Vincent Stadelbauer in the course on 14.25 meters at 58K. Back after this. <laughs> So, we've got, about to take to the water, uh, Vincent Stadelbau. I believe selecting Alpha 2 on the zero off, and we'll see, uh, see what he does with that at 58K, 14.25 meters. So Vincent Stadelbauer, his best score of this uh, this competition, is two at 10.75 meters. In the round previous to this one, uh, the second round, he scored four on 11.25 meters. And uh, hasn't really practiced too much in the last few weeks. Organization of the webcaster uh, for the uh, for the Mastercraft Pro and uh, Malibu Open have taken their toll on his uh, his ability to uh, to get on out there and practice uh, uh, for uh, for his tournament runs. But uh, not looking too bad on the opener. Uh, good aggressive approach. Good, uh, good start. And actually, uh, seems to have uh, found a a good, good groove, a good rhythm there, especially into his offside turn, which has uh, been a little bit of a bugbear uh, for uh, for Vincent Stadelbauer going forwards. But maybe. This is the good time, a good opportunity for him to turn things around in that respect. His best score, I believe, of this season is around two or three at 10.75 meters. And uh, we'll see, uh, see if he's up to the task of, uh, of skiing at that level again. He's one of our uh, top amateur skiers in this event. Uh, the, uh, the best score that we've seen so far, uh, best scratch score out of our amateurs is a uh, one at 10.25 meters, courtesy of Noah Veek. Oh, look at this. Just carving his way through that run. This is some aggressive skiing here from the Vincent Stadelbauer. He's leaving nothing to chance out there. Getting through 14 and 30 meters and now getting ready to attack 12. And a good portion of the reason why he's able to get through those passes is the enhanced grip of a Pro Gear gloves. You can find out more about those gloves by going to skiprogear.com. Skiprogear.com.
Pro Gear, one of our webcast sponsors here on the TWBC. Glad to have the pleasure of your company, no matter where you happen to be uh, tuning in uh, to us uh, from. Vincent Stadelbauer, originally out of, uh, out of uh, Geneva in Switzerland. And right now in, uh, in Geneva, it's about uh, 10 past five uh, in the afternoon. We are about an hour and three quarters away from starting the, uh, the pro section of the competition with the pro women. Look at him go. He's gone through 14 of 13 and now 12. I'm not even too sure that is 12 because he certainly made that pass a, a little bit difficult and one would suggest that might, might have been 11. But uh, we'll double check on the... So they're calling six on 12, but he uh, certainly made a meal of this pass, I can tell you. And for someone who... Uh, who's experienced enough for 11.25 meters, enough to actually run it on a fairly consistent basis. This is probably not the, uh, the kind of pass uh, he was looking for. However, having said all of that, he gets round number six, gets uh, through the exit gates on, uh, on 12 meters, and now has a shot at 11.25 meters. This is Vincent Stadelbauer. All right, here we are, folks. This now is Vincent Stadelbauer. His best is two at 10.75 meters, but this is the pass prior, 11.25 meters. Let's see what Stardy can make. There's number one, gets it to go. Little flat into number two. He's good to go round number two. He's okay for three. Oh, and just rearing up on the back of the ski and sinking into the water and getting two and a half uh, there on 11.25 meters for his travels. But Vincent Stadelbauer, who works incredibly hard uh, with the webcast uh, for, uh, with TWBC throughout the course of the season. Certainly, uh, we don't uh, begrudge him uh, for his uh, effort out there on the water at uh, 11.25 meters, but just having a hard time uh, reconnecting with the handle and maybe the lack of practice uh, within the last few weeks has finally, uh, uh, finally decided to rear its uh, ugly head, so to speak. But he comes away with this competition with his best score at 7.75 at meters in round number one. So uh, mustn't grumble, I would say. So at 14.25 meters, a 58K, our next competitor is up. This is Matthew Richardson. bit of a uh, slam there on his uh, right side of turns 135 specifically and Matthew Richardson 14.25 meters and uh, nicely makes that opening pass don't forget voting is uh, is open uh, for uh, the uh, Skier of the Day Award, presented by uh, 2U Healthy Snacks. 
Make sure you get your vote in by the time uh, this, uh, this event ends uh, among the, uh, the pro women and pro men's uh, competition. Go vote for skier of the day. And at your discretion, you can take uh, the performances uh, from some of the pros into consideration for your voting. Which, uh, which a few of our uh, skiers have uh, certainly been very deserving of. Some great skiing yesterday. Uh, oh yeah along with the uh, the runoff uh, towards the end of the pro men's uh, competition yesterday between Thomas uh, de Gasperi and uh, Adam Saddlemeyer, with Adam Saddlemeyer prevailing enough to uh, take the eighth and final spot through to the men's slalom final. So, pass number two. In uh, in good shape, Matthew Richardson, 30 meters. Skier on the water, Matthew Richardson. He's run through 14 and 13. Good, good skiing here. However, on 12 meters, he's really having to... Uh, the slam and jam out there as he gets through that pass. Barely though, but the performance was certainly there. He uh, came through in the clutch with the 12 meter line, having started on 14 and returning on 13. And this is a second pass uh, from, the, from the starting direction. Settled in pretty decently. However, he did get a little bit down course off number four, and he really had to work just that little bit extra to get off at five into number six. And taking the snap of the line through the exit gates to, uh, to get through that run. Okay. Looking at our view in the skier's tent. Grabbing uh, all of the available shade there. Some of our uh, skiing athletes and a few of their uh, supporters going forwards will no doubt be watching the coverage on the TV screen that is uh, on the uh, near side end of the tent. As we see Matthew Richardson, 11.25 meters. Oh, big, big old slam on buoy number one and unfortunately round number two trying to do too much there and paying the price. So it's going to be one and one half. One and one half there for Matthew Richardson. One and a half there at 11.25 meters for Matthew Richardson.
All right, so skier about to take to the water. On my list is Ben Turp coming to us out of uh, Gosfield Lake in uh, Essex in England. I'm sure that there are some folks that are uh, skiing there on a, uh, on a Sunday afternoon in the, uh, the late portion of the season. Check it in and uh, seeing what Ben Turp can do right here in the Groveland in Central Florida. So looking in a great shape. No two worries about that, uh, that pass of 14.25 meters. Could have started it on 30 meters. I believe he's capable enough to do it. And it is, actually, as a matter of fact, it is a 30 meters. I beg your pardon. So at about 20 past uh, four on, uh, on, a, on a Sunday afternoon, our, uh, our folks uh, across uh, the United Kingdom uh, uh, looking at uh, Ben Turp go through the opening pass of 13. So here we go, folks. Settling in nicely, getting around all six, 12 meters, and looking very purposeful out there. That is uh, Ben Turp, who's, uh, who's slalomed uh, Pretty decently uh, so far in this uh, this competition. Ben Turp, looking at some of the uh, the results that he has uh, put on there, uh, seeing uh, seeing what numbers he has uh, created uh, for himself during the course of this event. Ben Turp who, as I mentioned, uh, comes to us uh, from Gosford in England, actually scored four at 10.75 uh, meters in one of the previous rounds. Okay, great. Yes, please, gentlemen. So Ben Turp. Scored three in the previous round, and before that, scored four, both on 10.75 meters. Eager to uh, to try and uh, put a score at 41 off or 10.25 meters, but he's got to get through this pass and the next one prior to that. Bit of a slam there on number five, but uh, uh, it's effective. Effective to the point where he's able to uh, to get through that run. So getting some uh, tremendous angle across the course and uh, using some good fluid body movement on each side of the course to, uh, to allow that ski to rotate to the point where he will just, just hold on and, uh, and go along for the ride. As we see uh, another of our international men skiers, uh, the last of our international men, it is Alex King from New Zealand. Here we 
we go. This is Ben Turp at 10.75 meters. Oh, look at this. He's still there on three. He's determined to run this with all of his might. Oh, and he's inside buoy number five. He tried his best, and that equals his best score of the competition. Four at 10.75 meters along with three. He's had a, a consistent competition, but uh, he tried to eye up that run. But he's, uh, he's got score, two scores of four at uh, 10.75 meters. And that was the, uh, the final score in round number three as well for Ben Turp. Put the pressure on after number four and then realized it was all too late there for him. Skied into the dock and that represents the, uh, the extent of his performance. So, coming in at 14.25 meters, it's going to be Alex King. Coming to us out of New Zealand. Only just recently arrived into this country and uh, looking to spend the next, uh, next few weeks uh, preparing for the World Championships. And he's uh, also uh, doesn't do, do too bad as an official, has, uh, has driven uh, much of the amateur uh, competition uh, so far in this event, the Travis Grand Prix for 2023. The Travis Grand Prix for 2023 brought to you by the Travis Ski School uh, here at Sunset Lakes. Syndicate brand from HO Sports. Masterline. Ropes and accessories, Eagle wetsuits and accessories, along with Ski Dock. And uh, we can't do this event without the, uh, the encouragement and assistance of uh, Kerry and Mike Morgan, along with Michael DeMello. All of those individuals should hold their heads up high and uh, be proud of the event that is unfolding right now here at Sunset Lakes. Also, a uh, big shout out has to be uh, given to Splash Threads, who are here uh, with uh, with their apparel, their branded range of uh, of apparel with the uh, with the Travers Grand Prix logo. Uh, check those out. Make sure you grab them while they're uh, while they're still available. Splash Threads, uh, check those out, and they're also responsible for the TWBC apparel line as well. You can check those out at waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash shop or you can purchase them right here on site here at Sunset Lakes. Alex King, 14, 13, done. So, he's gone through 14 and 13. Let's see uh, what he's got with the 12 meter pass coming up next. So far as his uh, best scores of uh, this tournament, uh, they've, uh, they've been, uh, the scores have varied a little bit during the course of the event. Alex King. It's a scored a six on uh, 12 meters in one of the previous rounds. And has already put a, a score 
of uh, four on 12 in the round previous to that. So let's see if he can get through 12 meters this time. And this is the pass of 12 meters. He got through it in the previous round, but unfortunately got his, uh, his gates knocked on 11.25 meters. Or actually, uh, actually, as I recall in the previous round, got round number six and uh, got to the wake, but not through the exit gates on 12, which uh, gave him the score of six on 12 with no continuation. But he's already better than that because he's gotten the continuation after uh, the six buoy count on this run. So now he's in uh, with a little bit of a pitch battle here against... Uh, between himself and his uh, and his girlfriend, Sancha Altram, who is uh, waiting at the dockside, waiting for her turn uh, to take to the water, who has already skied into 11.25 meters in one and at least one of the uh, the previous rounds. Sancha Altram uh, for. Uh, for her effort, got uh, one and a half on 12 meters in round number two. And I uh, believe uh, before that, uh, skied into 11.25 meters. If I can find a score, yes, one at 11.25 meters. So that is the score that's ahead for Alex King. If he can get more than one, that will put her ahead of Sancha. And it, that just about does it with one and two and three. To the wakes, halfway down the run. Alex King, his best score of the competition with three buoys at 11.25 meters. There you go. Now he's thrown the gauntlet down to Sancha. And she'll be taken to the water in about three skiers from now. All right, so we are moving from international men to women's one. Our first skier out in women's one is the U17 World Water Ski Championship Girls Slalom Silver Medalist. A highly accomplished uh, water ski athlete and coming to us out of Church Point in Louisiana, it is Elena Jones. All right, here we go. Lena Jones. Getting through the opening pass. That should be 14.25 uh, meters and shouldn't be any trouble whatsoever there for her at 55K. Just a reminder that we project the uh, the pros uh, to get out onto the water in about an hour and 25 minutes time. At uh, 1 p.m. we are on uh, on skier. Not too sure how many skiers are we down the list, but we are about 14 skiers left. Thank you very much. Skier at the end of the dock getting ready there is uh, Rebecca Ramsey. We'll see what uh, she has uh, by way of a performance in round number three as uh, we have a look at Elena Jones.
Solid skin there from Elena. Getting around all six buoys. On that run of 13 meters. Navigating a way through that run uh, splendidly. All right, so Elena Jones through 13 meters. Here we go. Lena Jones on 12. Again, a little bit uh, pitched out on a couple of those turns, but managing to uh, to get it done on the uh, the 12 meter line. So looking at Elena Jones as uh, she navigates her way through uh, this pass. Elena, as I mentioned, uh, the current U17 girls world championship silver medalist who scored one at 11.25 meters to actually win that bronze medal just marginally behind the two buoy score uh, produced by Daniela Kretschmer at uh, uh, Lago Los Moros, uh, just outside Santiago de Chile, which will also play host to another major event uh, coming up uh, right at the tail end of the season, and that is the Pan American Games. And uh, look forward to seeing a few of our uh, skiing athletes uh, to be, uh, be present there from the Pan American region. Here we go, this is Elena Jones coming in on uh, buoy number one at 11.25 meters. Look at her go around buoy number two. She's still there. She took a big hit. She's round number three. She's still there for four, you know. She's round number four. Does she make it outside five? Does she, oh, does she make an approach for number six? She takes the hit round buoy number five and uh, the four and a half or 11.25 meters, I believe is a, is a probable personal best there for Elena Jones. So well done to her. Four and a half. And 11.25 meters for our Louisiana native, Elena Jones. Again, a good, good hard snap of the line, but uh, just continued to work forward. Even though she made one or two critical errors, she still had enough speed and she was still light enough on that ski to continue moving. Elena Jones uh, showing us some great determined skiing. She got the ski barely outside buoy number five. Oh, a nice dive out the front there. I'll give that nine out of 10 for the dismount. But there you go, that is Elena Jones. Well, well done for her. And uh, maybe if you amateurs out there or those of you uh, interested in the amateur skiing were, were actually doing some kind of straw poll to determine who you're skier of the event was among the amateurs. Maybe this should be considered as well. Elena Jones, it's gonna be four and a half. So there we go. So Elena Jones, four and a half at 11.25 meters, her best score in this competition. So she'll be returning to uh, to Cajun country, a happy camper, no doubt. Rebecca Ramsey.
Becca Ramsey, I believe this is uh, 18.25 meters at 55K. All right, confirming that, 18.25 meters, 55K. And Rebecca Ramsey for her part in this competition. A slalomed her decently, at least in one of the one of the previous rounds anyway. Rebecca Ramsey. Just taking a look at some of the uh, the previous uh, results that I have uh, result that I have uh, in front of me. Rebecca Ramsey scored uh, two on twelve meters in the previous round, and uh, before that. Rebecca Ramsey, just looking at some of the uh, the previous uh, scores uh, from uh, from the rounds, has uh, didn't make it to 12 meters in the round previous to uh, to that. Got three on 13, so we're looking to try and get a little bit deeper in on the uh, the 12 meter run. So there we go. That is a pass of 16 meters at 55K. Controlled skiing, looking good there. That is uh, Canada's Rebecca Ramsey. So looking at this, Rebecca Ramsey through on 16 meters, 14.25 meters coming right up. Look at this. This is 14.25 meters. She's been able to uh, to run this in the previous round and getting around all six buoys and now setting herself up for 13 meters. Rebecca Ramsey. I'm not too sure whether two on 12 meters is her personal best or anywhere close to it, uh, but uh, she's uh, moving towards uh, that spot. We're here at the uh, the Travers Grand Prix, uh, moving forward uh, towards the uh, the women's slalom pro competition, and then into the men's. And uh, during the prize giving, we'll not only uh, provide the award for the amateurs and uh, the pro uh, women and uh, men's competition, but we'll also uh, give out the award for the uh, for the vote for the uh, skier of the day and also the awards for the Water Ski Pro Tour as well. This being the, the final stop of the season on the Water Ski Pro Tour. So, a skier about to take to water is uh, Jenna Morgan. We'll see her... Uh, see what uh, she does in just a few moments. is uh, oh, uh, her attempt at, uh, at 30 meters unfortunately uh, not conjuring up the same kind of magic this time around as she did in the previous so that was uh, 30 meters and that was uh, Rebecca Ramsey just not getting the uh, the type of start needed to uh, to continue on with the run 
A little bit to stood up after buoy number one. And even worse going round number two. Three was just down course and the ski had decided that it didn't want uh, anything more to do with that run. So she skied flat and uh, got, gets three on 13. All right, so her best score was two on 12. That is Rebecca Ramsey. All right, now we are about to go into international women. The first of, uh, of that category is uh, Dockside right now and starting at the 55K, 16 meters, it is Jenna Morgan. So here we go, Jenna Morgan. Fifty five K, sixteen meters, and uh, pretty smooth going there so far. Jenna Morgan, who uh, who works as a uh, a flight attendant, working for uh, for American Airlines, uh, this was based upon the information given to me yesterday by uh, by Jack Travers, the uh, the main uh, uh, patriarch here at this uh, this facility, the Jack Travers uh, Water Ski School at Sunset Lakes, which is celebrating its uh, 50 year anniversary, with a special party lined up on the uh, the 11th of October over at. Uh, the Ski Beach, uh, a bar and grill in Leesburg. The party starts at around uh, 5 p.m. on October the 11th. And uh, the invite goes out to, to anyone who has attended uh, Jack Travers uh, Ski School in the last uh, five decades. Check out that party on October the 11th. It's uh, the Wednesday during the World Water Ski Championships held right here at Sunset Lake. Here we go, this is Jenna Morgan. Back on 14.25 meters, boat speed is still the same, 55K. Looking to go, and uh, skiing there. So Jenna Morgan, good extension, off buoy number one, and looking good uh, for number two on uh, that pass of 14.25 meters. So to keep things a little bit interesting, uh, got a little bit of uh, some trivia for you between uh, Jenna Morgan, Mike Morgan, and uh, Laura Morgan. Which one of those three has actually won a world slalom title? Any guesses? Well, I'll spare you, uh, spare you the need to guess because the, uh, the individual among the Morgan family that actually won a world slalom title was actually Lauren Morgan. She won that title in 2010, the Junior World Girls Slalom title way back in 2010, which was the very first broadcasted event of TWBC. That being in San Gervasio. On the water right now is her younger sister, Jenna Morgan, getting through 13 meters, having run through 16, 14, and now 13, now getting ready for 12. Let's have a look at some of the, uh, the previous uh, round scores that uh, she's been able to, uh, to put up. 
Jenna Morgan with four and a half on 12 in the, in the previous round to this one. And uh, before then, I believe uh, she, uh, she got somewhere around that, that area. Jenna Morgan got four and a half on 12. Two scores of, of that range. So let's see if she can get through 12 meters this time around. So four and a half on 12 in round two, four and a half on 12 in round one. And now 12 meters uh, comes up for round number three. Let's see the kind of start that she is able to obtain. This is going to uh, give us a pretty clear picture of whether she is capable of running it right from this juncture. Here we go. Jenna Morgan, 12 meters, 35 off or 40 feet of line. 40 feet of line to navigate away around a course that's 37 and a half feet wide. Taking a big jolt there. Round number three and uh, unfortunately not the start that she wanted. So uh, she comes through with a score of three on the 12 meters. But, uh, but not a bad a set of uh, three, uh, three uh, uh, slalom scores. Four and a half, four and a half and three. I reckon... Uh, She'll be relatively pleased with that, although uh, getting as close as, uh, as four and a half on 12 meters, close to running that pass, maybe uh, she'll uh, leave this, uh, this facility with a rather wry smile. All right, that's Jenna Morgan with three on 12. Our next competitor to go from Great Britain is gonna be Sancha Altram. Here we go, folks. Coming in. This is Sancha Altram. This is 16 meters. So she's got a long way to go if she's uh, to conjure up a score that will get closer to, uh, to Alex King, who she's battling against right now for bragging rights. 16 meter opening pass and looking good there. Just enough time to tell you about the TWBC YouTube channel and uh, you can help the sport grow with us here at TWBC and uh, so let, it, let us uh, grow the sport together. Subscribe to the TWBC YouTube channel. You'll have access to the live chat and also will be informed as to the next time we go live, which after this competition will be the World Water Ski Championships, which will take place from October the 10th and concluding on October the 15th. TWBC is broadcasting that event. And uh, you'll be informed every single day when the event goes live. So... Skier about to take to the water. A women's a skiing legend herself, uh, Jen Lapointe. We'll see her in a moment, but uh, before her out in the water at this time, Sancha Altram, a member of the British water ski team that will be competing at the World Championships in less than two weeks' time. Slicing and dicing it out there, looking strong. That is Sancha Altram. 16 and 14 under a belt, and now 13 comes up next.
So looking at Sancho Outram, uh, looking uh, very, very smooth and just trying to expend uh, the least amount of energy possible with the opening two passes before she gets into some more, more intense passes with uh, 13 meters coming up next. Some friends have been uh, commenting on the live chat. Thanks a lot uh, for the well wishes, including my good friend uh, uh, Rikos uh, Savapoulos uh, from, uh, from Greece and uh, one of the, uh, the major uh, folks behind the Caiaphas uh, Pro Battle. Certainly a, a brilliant competition there, uh, a privilege to be involved uh, this year and last. We thank him for his uh, well wishes. And uh, yep, can't wait to be in Caiaphas next year as well. Here we go. This is Sancha Outram, 13 meters. There, there you go. Good, good skiing there from her, very stylishly executed and great skiing. So some of the other messages uh, from the likes of uh, Jim Power offering congratulations there to Scott Greenwood on uh, his performance, not only on the water, but uh, behind the wheel. Also got a message here on site uh, from Tony Bondonzi. Who, uh, who mentioned there should be a skier of the day among the amateurs as well. And uh, the skier of the day award, which uh, we have uh, for the pros, uh, brought to you by 2U Healthy Snacks. The vote is uh, still continuing on, on uh, to waterskibroadcasting.com uh, forward slash play. But uh, if you guys on the live chat uh, want, to, want to have a little bit of fun and... Uh, try and determine who the amateur skier of the day should be in a rather uh, informal process there. Why not, uh, why not fill up the live chat with uh, who you believe is the, uh, the best, uh, best amateur, the, who you believe is uh, the best amateur skier of the, the event. And we'll see what uh, names come up. Here we go. This is uh, Sancha Outram. Let's see if she can get through 12 meters. She's gotten one at 11.25 meters in one of the previous rounds. And she's going to have a shot at that again. Look at this. Six on 12 for Sancha Altram. Hanging tough and, uh, you know, a great motivator uh, for, uh, for slalom performance is, is having a little bit of uh, a bragging rights battle with, uh, with your nearest and dearest. And Santa Outram is uh, is really keeping that alive. For his part, uh, Alex King, in that that battle has scored three and eleven point two five meters, and Santa Outram will no doubt uh, be taking aim at that with the next pass coming up of eleven point two five meters. So good, good skiing there from her, and yes, determined skiing. So continuing right along, we got to Sancha Outram. 11.25 meters, round buoy number one, not the best of starts and uh, pulled inside buoy number two. So uh, yeah, Alex King uh, wins bragging rights uh, between, uh, between himself and Sancha Outram. I don't think Sancha Outram is gonna hear the end of that. It's gonna be one and uh, she backs it up with another one buoy scored 11.25 meters, but uh, good skiing uh, between the both of them and will no doubt be, uh, be a favorable contributors to their team totals when the World Championships comes around. Alex King skiing for Team New Zealand and Sancha Outram skiing for Team uh, GB. Good, good skiing there from, uh, from both of them. Well done. So other messages coming through from uh, from Goski. I'm guessing that this is a uh, Gosfield Lake. Uh, just got out the boat and watching uh, 
watching Ben now. I would assume that this is Vince Turr. Thanking, uh, thanking us for the shout out and uh, the whole club is watching the coverage. Thank you very much for doing so. And uh, I'd encourage those club members at uh, Gosfield Lake to, uh, to subscribe to the TWBC YouTube channel so that they can each participate in the live chat as the, uh, as the event unfolds uh, towards its conclusion. And, uh, and yes, uh, Vince Turp uh, giving out a, a big, big uh, shout out to Lalani and Jack and the whole crew here at, uh, here at Jack Travers Wardski School at Sunset Lakes. And, uh, and a nice message there from Vince Turp. Well done to you, sir. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll see each other again uh, pretty, uh, pretty soon. All right. Skier up next, and uh, our only skier in Masters women competition. This is Jennifer LaPointe. I believe she's going to go in on 60 meters at 55K. Jennifer LaPointe, who's not too shy to, uh, to tell me... Uh, how old she is, she's uh, 59 years young. And attempting to re-qualify for Open to Ski, uh, a pro again, pro event, so that she and Ke and uh, Taylor, her, uh, her daughter, can, uh, can ski in, uh, in at least one pro event at the same time uh, before, uh, before things are done there. Looking to try and become the uh, the first uh, first to do that. Mother and uh, and daughter skiing in the same pro event. Uh, maybe looking to do that sometime during the course of uh, the next 12 months. She also has the women's five slalom record with two at 39 at uh, 32 miles an hour, and the women's four national record with four and a half at uh, 34 mile an hour. For, at uh, 38, four and a half at 11.25 meters, 55k. So that is those. That's the tail of the tape so far as Jen Lapointe is concerned, having run the opener. I think that's uh, either 16 or 14.25 meters. Uh, she can actually switch between the, those those passes if she feels the need to. Well, in the previous round, she did start on 16 meters. In the round previous to that, uh, she started on 14. Uh, quick look at some of the uh, the previous scores uh, that uh, that Jen Lapointe was able to uh, to put out. Uh, she scored a uh, one and a half on 12. She's on 14.25 meters at this time. Getting through a 14.25 meters uh, with great effect out there. Jen Lapointe, who also scored uh, two on 12 meters in this competition as well. So she's been, been consistent. So she's been quite effective into at least the first third of the course on 12 meters. And... Uh, that did look rather like 30 meters. As a matter of fact, it was. So she did go in on 14.25 meters this round. She went in on 16 in the previous round. That's where the confusion started. And uh, But I'm prepared to end it right now by saying that that was 14.25 meters or 28 off the standard 75 foot line, which left her with 37 feet of rope to, uh, to get round. 47 feet of rope to get round a course that's 37 and a half feet in width. There you go. I'm sure that Taylor May Walsey Van Mastike is uh, watching the the coverage uh, here, where she is uh, currently resides right now in England, where it's uh, almost uh, the evening. I think it is the evening over there right now. 12.05 at the moment, and that was uh, 12 meters. And uh, getting a little bit more beyond the third of the way down on 12 meters this time. So 
That is her best uh, score of the competition. Would have liked to have uh, gone a little bit further down that, uh, that run. So in Masters Women, uh, Jennifer Lapointe just getting round buoy number f number four, but not early enough to make an impact upon five. So it's going to be a four buoy count. Four buoy count on the 12 meter line, and that's her best score of the competition. So well done to her, Jennifer Lapointe. Skiing into shore. Good skiing there on that uh, new model of uh, LaPointe ski, uh, the LP2. And I noticed that on the tip of the ski, uh, there was um, uh, some painter's tape on there with, uh, with some numbers and maybe some keys uh, for her to follow uh, going forwards. I noticed, uh, noticed that a fair bit with some of our uh, competitors and uh, needing subtle reminders as to what their keys are going forward. And, and uh, sometimes that is necessary. Yep, we're, we're switching, right? yep. is okay? yep. Looks like we're switching drivers and switching officials. And uh, whilst we do that, we're going to step aside. This is the continuing coverage of the 2023 Travis Grand Prix. And we'll be back right after this. All right, returning to live coverage and action here at the uh, the Travis Grand Prix. So we've got uh, support from uh, Mike and Kerry Morgan, along with uh, Michael DeMello, along with uh, Ski Doc, uh, syndicate brand by HO Skis, Masterline, Eagle, and the Jack Travers uh, Water Ski School. We thank all of those entities very much indeed, as well as our uh, our great supporters here. 
right here at Sunset Lakes. Here we go. We've got uh, Skip, Edmund Skip Hormel. Looking good. All right, good to go on the opener. And uh, you see Edmund uh, Skip Hommel on the on the water, having started in on 14.25 meters at 55k. So in decent, decent shape here. And just getting the job done. All right. So uh, Edmund Hommel, we are about 10 or so skiers away from concluding, uh, actually eight skiers away from uh, concluding the, uh, this round of the competition. So, Edmund Hommel, 13 meters. And uh, getting the job done, round, uh, round number four and number five. And uh, looking good for number six. All right then, so. Looking good out there. And uh, as we continue on with his performance, uh, let me uh, let me introduce to you uh, Dorian Llewellyn into the announcer seat. And uh, Dorian, uh, I hate to even ask this question, but how are you doing this morning? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm doing all right. Um, foot's definitely still sore. Um, yeah, I mean that was a weird fall yesterday for sure. I was totally not expecting it, and you know, coming back from this ankle injury, I didn't have full range of motion, which. Could be why I fell in the first place, but definitely overstretched it a little bit yesterday. And a lot of the stuff that hurt when I got out of the water is better. And there's certain things that are still a little, little sore. So might be too early to say 100%, but um, feeling better. Okay, so uh, so what so what things have happened between that uh, that fall uh, that took place yesterday and now so far as. Uh, uh, injury recovery is concerned. I mean, what what, what kind of stuff have you been doing? Uh, yeah, definitely iced it a lot, trying to get that inflammation out. Um, you know, anti-inflammatory, whether that was um, through food or whatever. Um, just trying to keep the swelling out and, you know, assess as we go in the next day or two. But it does feel a lot better than yesterday, so I'd say that's a huge first All sign. All right, and it's a good, a, good, a good performance out there from Edward uh, uh, Edmund uh, Skip Hormel getting through 12 meters and looking looking pretty strong out there. But as we look at the replay on this pass, uh, so I mean I mean we've uh, we've asked you about about the injury and the uh, the re the recovery now now has has uh, as water ski wakeboard Canada uh, contacted you within that within that time span and asked you the blunt question: Are you still fit to ski? Uh, not yet. I'm assuming that that's coming um but yeah it was interesting because you know the pan am games obviously are also after the worlds and i had to prove that i was able to jump uh this weekend not at this tournament but just in general i had to send in some proof that i'm jumping and that it's going well and and so you know obviously we're gonna have to talk about that because the games as well as as well as the world you know it's important for canada as a nation and you know we want to send the best team possible but right now i'm i'm pretty Feeling okay and hoping that it just keeps getting better in the next day or two. Well, certainly wishing you the best of luck and uh, actually just stay just stay around for one more question as we have a look at 11.25 meters for Ed, Ed Hormel. This is his uh, best score of the weekend so far. Look at him go. Oh, look at that round of buoy number three to the wakes. There you go, halfway down that pass. A great, great skiing there from Edmund Hormel as he skis into the shore. Some, uh, 
Fantastic skiing there from him. So, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, and this was actually uh, a mode of discussion between me and Vince last night, that um, that maybe if, if the if the scenario played out to where you couldn't couldn't potentially ski in the World Championships, or you're not well enough to ski in those championships, we were actually surmising what uh, what skiers could potentially take your place. I'm, I would assume that Connie Panette would actually move up into the free event to overall slot, but then who would who could potentially re replace him as part of the six uh, six member uh, of, of Team Canada? Um. It's a good question. Um, you know, obviously, I try to be a score for all three events for the team, but we definitely have a lot of good slalom skiers already. So I'd imagine that you'd probably be looking at trick or or a jump score for sure. Um, so some, so a score from like Evan or a Sean Krause possibly. Yeah, somebody like that for sure. You know, maybe Whitney might have to strap on the trick ski again for a couple of weeks to get another score out there. But well, I understand she's already tricking. Oh right? well, there you go. Then then that would at least help out with that for sure. Um, but you know, Conley does trick as well, and then it it could you know you could even have somebody like Dodo who's jumping really well out here and to replace my jump score and. So there's there's a lot of calculation obviously that goes into it, but uh, we have a lot of good skiers in Canada. So whoever would replace me, which you know, knock on wood, I'm hoping that's not the case. Um, I'm sure that they're going to do a great job. Well, a skier on the water right now on 30 meters is a world experienced athlete at world at championship level. That is a Dr. Mike Morgan, and uh, you know can't help but in be inspired by someone like him uh, going forwards. But uh, I certainly wish you the best of luck there, Dory Llewellyn, and I won't and I won't keep you any longer. I know you've got to put some movement into into that ankle uh, to keep it flexible and keep it going, and uh, the part of your recovery. But best of luck going forwards there, sir. Yeah, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm feeling pretty good today and hopefully just keep getting better. No worries. Take it, put it there, man. Good. Thank you. All right, then. So uh, with, uh, with that, we'll continue right along with uh, Dr. Mike Morgan starting in on 30 meters and uh, getting ready to attack uh, 12. Uh, this is at uh, 55K. All right there, so we have got on the water Dr. Mike Morgan. Looking good, looking strong. Taking a, a good hit there on 12 meters towards the end. Very smooth ski in a uh, style all of his own and uh, great great athleticism there as he is uh, demonstrated over many many seasons especially uh, way back in the in the 80s and uh, and the 90s certainly where he was a uh, skiing in his prime but uh, who's not to say that he can't uh, uh, be uh, rejuvenated and uh, ski at that kind of level at uh, the uh, the advanced uh, age uh, age divisions available for him to ski in in uh, in national championship competition. Great, great skiing there from Dr. Mike Morgan, getting through the opening two passes of 13 and 12 on uh, 55k. Just absolutely strokes that pass. Here we go, Mike Morgan, 11.25 meters. Hasn't gotten through this pass yet this weekend, but I tell you what, he's certainly giving it his best effort here. Halfway down the course, he's round three, looking to go for number four. Just turns that ski and just drives away from the boat. Six buoys at 10.75 meters. There you go, Dr. Mike Morgan.
That was at 11.25 meters there for Dr. Mike Morgan getting ready for 10.75 meters. Solid effort there from him round all six buoys. Looking at some of the previous scores that he's, uh, that he's putting out here so far in this, uh, this competition. Just absolutely uh, rolling back the ages. Scored three and a half at 11.25 meters in one of the, uh, the previous rounds. Let's back that up with, a, with another excellent uh, score uh, himself with four and a half on, uh, on 11.25 meters. And this time around, third, third time of asking, there you go, Dr. Mike Morgan getting ready for 10.75 meters. They're about to take to the water is uh, Michael DeMello. Waiting for his turn patiently. Let's see what Dr. Mike Morgan has at 10.75 meters. Round buoy number one. Look at him go round buoy number two. And uh, releasing the handle prior to number three, but two at 10.75 meters. Let's give it up, please, for Dr. Mike Morgan. Two buoys at 10.75 meters, taking the strain, taking a big hit off buoy number one. Nice flow into number two. Getting in a little bit low. Not even too sure that he, uh, that he, that he uh, didn't make it round a buoy number three, but I would say, uh, at least from that perspective, that he got a piece of it. So I'm revising uh, what I would uh, surmise to be his score from two to two and a half. So his best score of the competition, there it is. Outside of three, but, uh, but apparently uh, the officials believe that he let go of the handle before he got outside the buoy line or at least enough for the ski to make it round the buoy and uh, make a return path towards the wake. As such, it is two. Two buoys at 10.75 meters. That is, uh, that is Mike Morgan, skier on the water at this time, is uh, Michael DeMello. Fifty two K sixteen. So, all the way through that pass, I believe. We're looking at this uh, with the instant replayers. I uh, try and shuffle a few papers around and get ready for the uh, for the pro competition, which will take place at uh, at the time that we believe to be at 1 p.m. or maybe a little bit later than that. But uh, there, Michael DeMello are coming up short of the pass and uh, probably a little bit fatigued there. And my apologies there to him. Just not really hooking up efficiently with the, uh, with the first few buoys. So three buoy count there, total there for Michael DeMello. As we now work our way down uh, towards the, uh, the final uh, five or so competitors, starting off, uh, started off with men's seven there with Michael DeMello, our next competitor up, if this uh, list holds true, should be Terry Early.
And coming in at 52K, 14.25 meters. All right, so coming in, Terry Early. Looking good. His posture is looking pretty good out there. And the skier actually on the water is actually Doug Rooker. That was the opening pass. All right there, so continuing right along. And from what I understand, the uh, the food truck that is uh, present here at this uh, facility will only be here up until one o'clock this afternoon. So if you've got a food order and you want to uh, to make it happen, then I'd suggest you get it done within about the next 30 minutes. As Michael Rooker gets around all six buoys on the opening pass, I believe 14.25 meters, we'll, uh, we'll see him back on the return pass. Doug Rooker is the skier on the water, I beg your pardon. I'll try and get a little bit more refreshed before we go into the uh, the pro skiing. It's uh, been a uh, it's been a long event uh, with the uh, with the amateurs in uh, in round number three. Doug Rooker on the water, 30 meters. Yeah, seems to uh, have a pretty good grasp on that one. 30 meters on pass number two. So uh, Doug Rooker there, mistook him for, uh, for Michael Rooker, who uh, for those of you cinephiles out there, know that Michael Rooker is an actor that uh, that portrayed uh, Cole Trickles and Nemesis uh, in the movie Days of Thunder, as well as also appearing in the Guardians of the Galaxy. At least there is a Michael Rooker out there, but uh, the skier on the water is Doug Rooker. I don't know, they might even be related for all I know. Here we go, here comes Doug Rooker, 12 meters. Started on 14 and returned with 13, this is now 12. Doug Rooker's not doing too badly out there, look, go, look at him go. Getting down course though off number four, but he has enough room to spare to get round five and indeed number six. There you go, 12. Yeah, buddy. Doug Rooker, who's actually uh, best score in this competition is a three and a half on, uh, on 11.25 meters. The other score is one and a half. So he's gone into 11.25 meters now, having successfully sliced and diced his way through 12. Just uh, using, using the boat and using his uh, Using some uh, some good leverage to get from one side of the course in to the other. Skier at the end of the dock is uh, Terry Early. 
And uh, we'll see him perform momentarily. But uh, Doug Rooker, this is 11.25 meters uh, for, uh, for, for, for Doug Rooker. Round one, scored three and a half in one of the previous rounds. Here he comes, round buoy number three. Let's see if he can get to four into the wakes. He's still there, you know, but he gets uh, four and that is his best score of the competition. That is Doug Rooker. That is a four buoy count at 11.25 meters and what a great there, performance there from Doug Rooker. So, so Doug Rooker, that was a score of four buoys at 11.25 meters at 52K or a 38 off at 32 miles an hour, a four buoy count there. Reminder once again that the food truck is... Uh, Food truck time here at Sunset Lakes is fleeting. Make sure you get your order in within the next 30 minutes if you want to, to sample some of the culinary delights that our food truck has to offer. All right, so. at uh, uh, skier on the water. Okay, so on the water right now, Terry Early, 52K, 18.25 meters. Boat will max out at that speed of 32 miles an hour or 52K because we are on men's seven. Doing a fine job out there with that opening pass. We'll have a look at it again via the instant replay. For those of you interested in what the uh, the national record is in men's seven, it uh, currently uh, stands at two at 41 off at, uh, or 10.25 meters at 32 miles an hour. That's Jack Mills, who has held that uh, that record since uh, since 2019. And, uh, Looking in uh, in pretty good shape, I would say, on that run. That is Terry Early. Nice strong boat. You can jump in there pretty easy. Got some ponies under the hood. Yep. I have that red boat that holds all red boats. All right, so at the end of the dock, I see uh, Randy Torley looking magnificent there at the end of the dock. Here we go. Terry Early, 16 meters, or 22 off, the standard 75 foot line. Leaves him with 53 feet of line to get round a slalom course that's 37 and a half feet in width. More than enough line to work with. And he uh, gets the job done splendidly. There we go, it's a six buoy count.
So, good, solid skin there. For Terry Early. We've only got uh, uh, three skiers on this left, uh, on this list left in the amateurs. Time right now is 25 to one. So uh, we would appear to be uh, pretty much bang on schedule for a start time of 1 p.m. for the pro women's. And Terry Early, as, uh, as he typically does, is of immense help. And uh, without sounding too facetious, of course, uh, uh, going down rather early there on, uh, on his attempt on that, that particular run of 14.25 meters. Taking, uh, taking a good Paula there off number one, but just losing his composure and balance and has to make do with, uh, with one and a half at 28 off or 14.25 meters. All right, so we're going to step aside uh, right here. And when we return, we'll be back for, uh, for Randy Torley next. All right, back to continuing coverage of this, the uh, the Travers Grand Prix. Thank you very much indeed for uh, for your support. So, 22 off or 16 meters selected by Randy at the end of that uh, that starting dock. Reading through uh, some of the messages. Got a good message here from uh, from Vince Turp at uh, a Gosfield uh, Ski Club. He said that it's made that he's uh, made it compulsory for everyone there uh, at Gosfield uh, to to be a subscriber of TWBC's YouTube channel. And I know that's quite a large club of uh, skiers. So thanks a lot uh, to you, uh, sir. Got other messages that I'll read out towards the end. Here comes uh, Randy Turley, who unfortunately uh, lost his composure into buoy number one and uh, fell in with, uh, with that lack of balance. So it's going to be half a buoy, unfortunately, there for him. Little bit of a hop, skip, and a jump into buoy number one, and just bringing the handle just a skosh too high and uh, threw his weight on the back, and uh, he was pretty much toast there. So, going some messages. Uh, a good luck uh, to uh, to skip. Uh, which one uh, was it? Uh, the skip that uh, the nickname of Edmund Hormel. Or is it Skip Dunlap, who will be skiing uh, towards the end of this list? I haven't quite seen him yet on the dock, but, uh, but if he uh, does intend to ski, it will be at that point. Skier about to take to the water is uh, Martin Woodbury. Jack Hayes, uh, my good friend uh, from, uh, from the Midwest, who I used to work with. Uh, Saying, uh, Doug the Thug. Skier from the Midwest. And uh, Nuno Nobre, uh, whatever his last name is, uh, offering a little bit of support to Nate Smith as uh, we get ready for the, uh, the pro events, which will uh, take place next after the conclusion 
of the amateur round of slalom. Round number three. We are on to our penultimate skier there. It's going to be Martin Woodbury coming in on 16 meters. Martin Woodbury skiing in men's nine. To the best of my understanding, men's nine, that division uh, competes with a maximum boat speed of 49 kilometers an hour. 16 meters. Here comes Martin Woodbury. Skiing in men's nine, which is the age category division for male competitors aged 75 to 79 uh, inclusive. Just to give you an idea of what we're dealing with age-wise, uh, with our skier out there on the water, that is Martin Woodbury. Not too sure exactly where he comes from. Maybe one or two uh, folks uh, on the live chat will be... Uh, will be inclined us to set me straight in that regard. Wouldn't be the first time. So some superb action in the amateur competitions almost coming up to a climax here. With our penultimate skier on the water, uh, Martin Woodbury. Reminded to you good folks around here, you have about uh, 15 minutes to uh, place your order at the, uh, at the food truck before it departs at 1 p.m. around about the same time that the women's slalom competition is projected to, uh, to take to the water. In the pro section of this event, We've got two finals, each with eight competitors apiece. Martin Woodbury is getting through uh, the opening two runs. He started with 16, he returned with 14. Skiing at the maximum speed for his division, which is at 49k or 30 miles an hour. That is Martin Woodbury. Working away through pass number three. He's gone through 16, 14 now. This is 13 meters. Martin Woodbury. Martin Woodbury skied uh, through uh, three on 13 meters. And we are on 13 meters right now. He's going to slice and dice it across the back of the boat. Can he make it round number six? Yes, he can. It's a six buoy count on 13 meters for Martin Woodbury, our second to last athlete out there on the water. Three on 13 in the, uh, in the previous uh, second round of competition for him. And he scored a zero on 13 meters in round number one. So uh, he's on for his uh, top score out of the three rounds of competition here. Skiing in men's nine. This is Martin Woodbury. So Martin Woodbury extending things out a little bit. Time right now is a quarter to one. 
We are 15 minutes away from starting the pro women's final. Good to, uh, good to have our international audience uh, uh, present here for the, uh, the last pro competition of the season in the Northern Hemisphere. Here we go, this is Martin Woodbury. Round one and number two, stalls up on number two. But ladies and gentlemen, that's its best score of the weekend. One and a half on 12 meters. One and a half at 35 off for Martin Woodbury. All right then, folks. Martin Woodbury, that is a one and one half on the, uh, on the 12 meter line. A little narrow on the gates. A little broken over into buoy number one at 49 kilometers now at the maximum speed for his division. I think he actually got a, uh, he actually got a piece there of, uh, of number two. So it is one and one half. All right, so down to our final competitor in the amateur competition of round three. This is Skip Dunlap. Now, so coming in at 14.25 meters, he is a men's 10 competitor. Men's 10 is the category of skiers for, uh, for skiers aged anywhere between 80 and 84 inclusive. This is men's 10 skiing, our final skier out there. This is Skip Dunlap. 14.25 meter opening pass, 49K. A little on the back of the ski, just skiing to survive here. Oh, and just getting in a little bit deep off number four and uh, unable to, uh, to, uh, to get out of that situation. Just couldn't get off the back of the ski, no matter how hard he tried. But Skip Dunlap. Okay, so uh, looking at a uh, Skip Dunlap as he uh, continues on. And uh, trying his best to get outside buoy number four, which he did, but uh, lost his, uh, his, his balance and momentum going into buoy number five. And that, uh, that uh, caused him to fall before that turn, so it's going to be a four buoy count. Now, latest news here. We have revised the start time for the pro women's competition. We will change that time from, from 1 p.m. and uh, change it to 1.15 p.m. So those of you that are uh, watching us uh, from, uh, from international uh, locations, wherever you happen to be, it's going to be 1.15 p.m. So whether you're watching us uh, from, uh, from uh, Central Florida or a little bit further afield, whether you're watching us in London, it'll be quarter past uh, six in the evening, quarter past seven in the evening if you're watching us in Rome. And if you're watching us in Auckland, New Zealand, it is 6.15 in the evening. Get ready for some pro ski in the open women's. We'll, uh, we'll set off our finals. This is the continuing action of the 2023 Travis Grand Prix coming to you live from Groveland in Central Florida. And we will be coming to you next with some pro skiing right after these.
Thanks for calling Wake House. This is Brian. How can I help you? Uh, yeah, Will. Can I let him know who's calling? All right, just a second. Will, I got a fill for you. Perfect. Give me just one second. All right, hit it. Thanks for holding. This is Will. Hey, hey, how's it going? Good.
For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality.
My name is Thomas de Gasperi. I'm from Italy. I'm a two-time World Salon champion. I've been coming here at La Guapa for four years now. The condition of this villa, it's top level. I would say five stars plus. Everybody is very friendly. The hosts are amazing. The staff is always helpful. There's always food on the table. I couldn't ask for anything more. Conditions, clean, and we're only an hour away from Mexico City. So it's it's very close and convenient for to travel. Every time I come here, I feel like I'm, I'm at home. I've been a fan of Marcus Brown since I was like 13 years old. He's, you know, been my, my childhood hero. And so for him to offer something like this, you know, which is, which is, it's great, not just for me, but it's great for water skis to have something like this where people can really get a bespoke water ski experience. It's gonna improve their skiing, their, their body, you know, and Jenny's just, she's amazing too. So just to have the access to, to both of those guys, I think it's huge. And it has been massive just to talk things through and to get a new understanding of, of stuff I haven't tried yet. All right, then welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2023 Travers Grand Prix. We are about uh, less than five minutes away from starting the pro women's final and a beautiful shot there uh, uh, over the, the facility here at, uh, uh, at Sunset Lakes, the home of uh, Travers uh, Water Ski School. And uh, glad to have the uh, the pleasure of your company going forward. Here is our starting list for the uh, for the eight skier women's final. We've got uh, uh, Alicia Bagnoli uh, take it to water first, followed by Chelsea Mills, uh, Elizabeth Montavon, Ali Nicholson, and then we'll uh, then the bottom half of the order consists of uh, Manon Costar, uh, Jamie Ball, Winnie McClintock, and Regina Jaquis. So that's, uh, that's what we've got ahead of us. We've also got the men's slalom final to take place uh, afterwards as well. So uh, it's going to be uh, jam-packed full of action between now and the end of uh, the, the Travers Grand Prix. Uh, we certainly appreciate your support 
Uh, you've been a great audience uh, during the course of this event and uh, especially through the, the pros and indeed the amateur competition which uh, just concluded uh, a few minutes ago. I'm Tony Lightfoot. He is car lead. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks, Tony. Uh, looking forward to getting this uh, finals underway. We've been here three days, three days of uh, Unreal Slalom action. Uh, we've had something like 45, 50 amateurs joining the 40 or so pros. And it's come down to this, the top eight women and the top eight men. Coming up uh, for your viewing pleasure here just in just a few moments. And uh, among the prizes uh, that our competitors are looking for, uh, this one ranks uh, pretty high. It is the uh, the skier of the day prize uh, provided by Two You Healthy Snacks. To vote for your skier of the day, go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play for more details and to vote for your skier of the day provided to us by Two You Healthy Snacks. And that looks promising. The uh, Nautique towboat going up and down the lake, a little simulation pass. Scott Ellis behind the wheel for the open woman. And I suspect we'll be out with our first skier, Alice Bagnoli, in uh, just a few moments. All right, so there is our Nautique towboat, the uh, black flaked Nautique towboat by Correct Craft. And they're getting ready to ski, and she had to battle hard to get to this stage of the competition, uh, Alice Bagnoli. No, for sure, Tony. We're re recapping a few scores from the uh, preliminary rounds. These girls had two rounds to try and qualify. The top eight go through, went through. It took scores of two twos at 39. That's a high cut for these for these ladies. Alice got getting to two twice. Uh, I know Vanessa Vike was the, was the last one out, and she uh, she was very very close with you know falling around two ball or two, securing two one round one and a half the other, but just missing out. So Alice Bagnoli is first off the dock, two at 39, was her best score. Chelsea Mills had a two and a half, I believe. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Montevan had a three, was her best. Ali Nicholson, four. Manon Castard, five and a quarter at 39. And our top three girls all running 39 over the last couple of days. Yep, some, uh, some great action uh, between our, uh, our ladies uh, in the final. Uh, driving the ladies in the final is going to be Scott Ellis. And uh, we just ran the simulation passes. And now uh, the boat's heading towards the dock. And we'll pick up skier number one. All right. And the minimum start length for this women's final is going to be 13 meters, 32 off. There's our schedule. We've got the pro woman, pro man, and prize giving coming up right after that. But yeah, going out at 13 metres, they had to do that in round two as well. Usually yeah, they it's 14, did, yeah. but they upped it to 13 for round two. All of these girls handled that, not a problem at all. Um, but yeah, again, 13. And the way the wind's going today, a little tailwind off the dock, setting up for a tailwind 38, tailwind 11, and maybe you know a little bit of that headwind 39 for some of these girls that we saw just get close, like Manon and Ellie were really close to running it, might help them out here today. And we might see even more girls through 39 in this final. Right, you are. Here we go. Coming to us from Milano in Italia. This is Alicia Bagnoli, who's, uh, who's had a, a good run of events here uh, in the Water Ski uh, Pro Tour, especially uh, on the European stretch of, uh, of that series. Alicia Bagnoli, we'll try and get you some stats uh, on her as uh, we, uh, we rock our way in uh, to this event. She was fifth at the Malibu Open. Seventh for the Caiaphas uh, Battle Pro Am, seventh at uh, the King of Darkness, and a two ape spots in San Gervasi on Lake 38 Pro Am. And uh, looking strong here on pass number one. And uh, let's check in for the first time with Zach. All right, guys, dockside again here with Elizabeth Montavon. Punched your ticket through into the finals today with a three at 39 yesterday. First competitors off on the water, off the front of the heat here coming with some strong women's coming behind you uh what are we going here in the third final round of the uh 2023 travis pro-am you know it might sound irresponsible but when you're in this position i, I like to ski like nothing matters like it's a perfect day at home and you've got nothing to lose those are always the best sets for me so i'm going to treat it like that i'm going to keep dialing in my in my gates i think that served me better in the second round yesterday um just keep working on my keys that's all any of us can do 
Wonderful. Well, you got the benefit of being able to set the bar high, being off a little bit earlier in the running order. So best of luck to you, Elizabeth, and uh, go get them. Thank Back you. to you guys. All right, then. Thanks a lot there, Zach. And thank you once again, uh, Elizabeth Montavon, uh, for, your, uh, for your input here. And it uh, looks like we've got to Chelsea Mills on the end of the dock getting ready for her turn. But uh, for the immediacy, we have Alicia Bagnoli, who's coming back in on 12 metres. Good looking uh, uh, push in towards number one there, Kyle. Yeah, for sure. Alice, we've said yesterday she's been dialing in her 135. Had a little bit of a, a drop there at number three, but no issues for her. Had that headwind kind of support and keeps her on time, keeps the rope tight. The challenging pass is going to be the next one, the 38 tailwind. She's run it two rounds in a row here. She was uh, very close at the last couple weekends as well. I think she got through it at Malibu Open. Definitely is up in her game over the last few weeks. I think her season's best came actually yesterday with two at 39. She might have just cheesed that somewhere else as well. She is the current Italian, uh, Italian record of three at 39. So hopefully we can see her get down that, that pass just a little bit more here today, put some pressure on some of these top seeds out right after her. And has had a, a good run of form uh, uh, at the tail end of the season. The, uh, she's had uh, two consecutive uh, scores into 39 and a half off, 10.75 metres in rounds one and rounds number two. Uh, uh, pretty much a, a season's best in that regards there for, uh, for Alicia Bagnoli. But uh, now's the Sterner test. It's the, uh, the eight skier final. So uh, she's the first off the dock and uh, she's the one that uh, will, uh, will set the pace going forward. She's gone through the 30 meter and the 12 meter line, now comes up 11.25 meters with a slight tailwind, uh, which uh, could uh, pose one or two uh, challenges, but let's see what she's got. This is Alicia Bagnoli, 11.25 meters, Kyle. Yeah, we're calling it a slight tailwind, but it, yeah, there's not much out there at all, but it did affect her a little bit there at number two. She slipped underneath, got a little slow, and two and a half, unfortunately, uh, Liche, that's uh, she's going to be disappointed for sure that she's run it clean the last two days. Uh, and that happened in the final last weekend too at Malibu Open. She kind of came up short at 38 after she ran it in the early, early rounds. So two and a half, not the score she's going to be uh, wanting there for today, to, to today. But she was through to the final, so congrats to her. And she'll be kind of reviewing this, looking back at, uh, at kind of what happened and hopefully improving on this in the Worlds here in a couple weeks' time. I think that's one of the most painful things to do, get all the way to the final, fight your way through, and then miss a pass that she, know that she, she knows that she can run. Oof. Yeah, taken, uh, almost taken that, the, uh, the complete hit there off her number three, but unfortunately there for Alicia Bagnoli, she uh, has to make do with two and a half uh, for a score at 38 off, 11.25 meters. From Italia, Alicia Bagnoli. You see her sit in the water there. She sort of had a little bit of a confused look on her face. She ran this pass so well in the first two rounds and kind of maybe a little bit dumbfounded as to what happened there at number two. It kind of put her down the lake and in the water at three. So unfortunately, Elice, two and a half at 38. We'll be moving on to our next skier. It's Chelsea Mills. And she picked up a three at 39, I believe, in the first round. All right, so uh, Chelsea Mills uh, are skiing well to, uh, to make it into this section of the competition has missed a few events during the course of uh, the season, especially those uh, within Europe. So uh, scrambling to get some, uh, some decent uh, points uh, on the Water Ski uh, Pro Tour before the season uh, ends, uh, which, is, uh, which is essentially after this, uh, this competition. On the water ski uh, pro tour, we've got uh, Chelsea Mills, who was a uh, who is a former uh, collegiate uh, tennis coach, and uh, and is now a, a sports a psychologist of sorts, and uh, getting ready for pass number one, which is 13 meters. There, Kyle. Yeah, 13 meter start, not a problem here for Chelsea. She does this day in, day out. I'm actually interested to see if uh, anyone she's going to choose to maybe change the start length and go shorter. I know I've seen Regina do it at a couple of weekends. I think she did it one round yes, uh, over the last couple of days. You know, try and take that, uh, maybe the pass in a slightly different direction. But Chelsea going with the standard 32 off and looking very clean, uh, easy six buoys, first pass. So opening pass there for, uh, for Chelsea Mills. And let's send it over to Zach. All right, dark side with Regina Jaquist getting ready to warm up. Uh, we had a 2 at 41 on round 1, a 1 at 41 in round 2, but we also saw Jamie Bull and Whitney McClintock at 1 at 41. So 
Kind of getting sacked up there around that one and two ball. What is our strategy going in here, round number two? Um, no, I mean, I fully expect more than those two to even run 39. Um, so just see what the girls do. I got the top seed, so I'll know um, kind of what to do and um, just take the approaches into that once you see, you know, what the girls are doing on the dock. All right. Well, you do get the uh, lucky spot of being last off the dock and know what the score is to beat. So best of luck to you, Regina, and uh, good luck out there. Thank you. All right. Back over to you guys. All right. So... Yep. It'll be interesting to see, like you say, a lot of people are favoring um, that far end. I think every interview that we've heard, it's, it's definitely been people struggling with the gate at this end, and it can be quite a difference. This end's kind of short, shallow. We often have a tail breeze pushing you down. And this end that um, Chelsea is coming in right now, you have a little bit of a head breeze, a little bit of a longer run in, really lets that boat settle in. And a lot of people are finding this end that a little bit easier. So it'll be interesting to see, like you say, if we kind of get any confident plays and see people going out at 35. But. Of course, it's going to depend on what her competitors in front of her do. Um, you know, if the scores are big at 41, and she, she, I know she'll kind of prefer to, to maybe run the 39 tail when and set herself up coming back. So, interesting yeah. strategies to play out here shortly as Chelsea Mills rounds six boys at 12 metres and drops in the dock end. Really just formalities, really just warm-up passes for these athletes. Not a problem, first two passes. Things start to get a little more intense. The speeds get turned up a little bit. The loads get turned up a little bit as we get short here at 11 and 38 and 39 onwards. All right. So Chelsea Mills, the uh, top five events on the Warski Pro Tour uh, this season. A fourth place at the California Pro-Am. Third at the Calgary Cup. Fifth at the King of Darkness. Fourth at the Lake 38 Pro and seventh at the uh, the Masscraft Pro and looking to try and uh, drop uh, that score out of the reckoning, out of the uh, the calculation there for her. And if she, uh, uh, actually, if she finishes uh, in seventh place at this uh, at this time, then she'll uh, she'll definitely knock the Masscraft uh, Pro uh, Pro points off. And obviously, if she can get a little higher than that, then the closer she'll be to uh, to go in uh, going where she is right now, which is a currently sixth place. And if and if she wants to uh, finish her fifth place, then she needs to essentially win this event. All right, Chelsea coming back 38. She's doing it for good water skis out there. Coming around number two. This is looking oh, well. She's, she's over out of two. I don't see any issues with the way she hooked up. It maybe missed the handle slightly or just kind of a little bit separated, and it's all over. So at least she actually still holds way. the lead. That's crazy. The first two skiers, after completing 38, no problems. Our first two skiers have gone down early in that pass in this final. Yeah, it's crazy to see. I wonder if it's almost like a skier's high. I mean, it was a big cut to make to get it into this final. So um, maybe just underestimating this 38. You see almost the way she drops those hips back in the turn. And it looks like she gets them preset again. But um, obviously, obviously not. And going down early there. A very surprising fall for Chelsea. She is a strong lady and... Uh, can usually handle that that sort of pull no problem but just breaks uh with that as that load comes on out of two all right then with that let's check in with zach Oof. First year off the dock. no it wasn't quite the score we wanted um but not for lack of effort and going out there and uh talk me through the set a little bit and what it means to be able to compete out here prior to going into the world championships here at this location in three weeks you know, it's, I'm already super happy to have made the finals. It was not an easy cut. Um, I managed to change my mindset for the prelims. Not really quite there for the finals. Um, I had a bit of a fast gate at 11, and that kind of got me up at 2. All a bit of slack, tried to pull, but too late. Hey, well, it was, uh, it was great to see you out here. Again, congratulations on that finals. That was not an easy cut to make, and uh, we look forward to seeing you back out here in a few weeks at the World Championships. Good job. Thank you. I'm coming back, Vince. <laughs> All right, back to you guys. Okay, hearing from Aliche there, as she is now still the leader after two skiers, Elizabeth Montevin hopping into the water, again electing the 13 meter, 32 off pass. And interesting so far, isn't it? Two skiers missing the 38 so far. Yeah, one and a half there actually for uh, Chelsea Mills. At 38, she just lost the handle before the wakes. Yeah. I think things are about to get uh, changed up here a little bit. Um, I know Elizabeth, just of late, has been uh, turning in some great performances, uh, especially a couple weekends ago, scoring uh, maybe three it was. She got on the podium, Mastercraft Pro, and hopefully uh, she's uh, going to be our first skier through 38. 
Now, uh, so far as uh, Elizabeth Montavon is concerned, she's currently uh, in, uh, in ninth place on the, the Water Ski Pro Tour, has temporarily, maybe temporarily for her, moved uh, down to 10th place because Alicia Bagnoli's score, if it, uh, if it stays as a seventh place finish, in this current scenario, then she would actually move above Elizabeth Montavon at this time. But the advantage that Elizabeth Montavon has is she is skiing, so she can battle back and try and regain some some lost ground points-wise on a water ski pro tour. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes up. I know there's a lot of tight positions, so let's head to Zach. Let's see who he has, and um, we'll be back. All right, here with uh, one of our pro men finalists, uh, Mr. Will Asher. Uh, we'll get to you a little bit later and what we got coming on the water, but uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, some of these women performances out in the water, all into 39 to make this cut and three skiers into 41? Yeah, it's it's incredible at the minute. The um, the level of, of the girls out there, just, you know, I get to ski with Jamie every day and what she does. I'm, um, it's it's going to be uh, crazy what happens today. Um, I think it's going to be big scores. I think it's, it's going to be a, a treat to watch. I, I agree with you as well, but uh, Will, we'll let you get back to warming up for the Pro Men Finals coming up here, and back over to you guys for the Women Finals. All right, then. Here we go, Elizabeth Montavon. 35 off, 12 meters coming in. Should be fairly routine here. Like I say, she's going to want to make sure she gets ahead of Aliche to keep her spot on that Pro Water Ski Tour and maybe see if she can make up a few places, but smooth-looking 35 here. She's... She's really been looking fantastic these past two rounds, and I think she's kind of really finding a groove ready for Worlds uh, yeah, later you, on in these next I few mean, weeks. I mean, you see it with a lot of these skiers, and we did see it with Alice up until that, that final round, just building on confidence, you know, riding a wave, uh, and D Elizabeth definitely uh, finding some form of late, looking strong, getting herself kind of uh, lined up through every single way crossing, so rock solid, not moving, and not really missing a beat, creating a lot, a lot of good space in the course. So she's going to be shorten up. Uh, the lead right now, two and a half. I think that's about to go down. I'm excited to see what these next three skiers can do, Rob, because we know our, our final three will, they ran 39, mm -hmm. at least one of the rounds, you know, in the, in the first two preliminary rounds. One, one of these next three, though, if they can get a big score down to 41, that's going to start this, oh, uh, gonna, get this event going, isn't it? It's going to get things rocking. And I was actually doing some, doing some research today. Yesterday's round two was the first time, I believe, I'm sure, I'll be misproved in the, uh, disproved in the comments, but from what I can find, um, that round two yesterday was the first time we've had three scores into 41 off in one round uh, this whole season. So obviously it's happened in years before, but this season there's been kind of either Whitney's kind of lost it or Jamie's lost it or Regina's lost it. So um, yeah, interesting stuff to be happening here and hopefully we see that again, maybe even four people, but Elizabeth coming here, 38 off. She's going to need a full three to take the lead, but she's going to want to take the whole thing down. Gerd's the two ball that everyone's been looking for. Smashes the three. She's on time. She's early, needs the four. She gets it. Wow. And she looks yeah. fantastic moving down that course, hey? Oh, nicely done there from Elizabeth Montavon. Again, all the way through uh, that, that pass and uh, 13, 12, 11.25 meters. Now... Let's have a look at this, uh, the potential here on the Water Ski Pro Tour. If she finishes uh, with fifth place points, then she'll move up to 81 points and would actually tie with Pedrini in eighth spot. If she is uh, to finish in, uh, in fourth spot, let me do the quick uh, math here, she would be on 86 points and will only be four points uh, behind Manon Custard in seventh. So uh, she has uh, quite... Uh, Quite a good potential for movement upwards here on the Water Ski Pro Tour points in the last event of the season there. Yeah, it seems like a, maybe a couple of spots on the top of the leaderboard are kind of fixed and can't really yep. change too much. But, you know, amongst the sort of down the ranks a little bit, the third onwards down through sort of eighth, a lot, of, lot rides on this round right here. Yeah, and that's, it's big. It's, it's pretty exciting to be able to say where you place on this Pro Tour, and it's kind of exciting now we're getting these seasons kind of continuing on I know I was looking last night to see where I was going to finish up obviously not quite in my hands today but it's exciting to see where everyone's going to be ending up after this event but let's see Elizabeth Montavon 10.75 39 off let's see how far she can get down gets a very good gate little narrow at one but she gets a good hookup good movements through two she's early on time are we going to see an S turn we do does she hold it weeks there you go round three Whoa. possibly I'm sure they're going to review it yeah I think that's going to be yep. there we go um, it was a decent one. It was down course a little bit and definitely down course round two. She did all she could. 
to take some angle and, and some, some swing out to number three, but I have a feeling she might have snuck inside it. Let's watch yeah, this replay. It was close. Came narrow, up like just you said, narrow, hey, uh, yeah. number one, Rob. Yeah, and this two ball, again, like you say, down course, but the ski snaps around well, gets stuck a bit back and separated with those hips. I think from that angle, it looks like she gets it, but as we've proven this year a few times, the angles can lie to us. You know, you've got to look at every angle, and that's what they're doing in that tower right now. Um, they have every single angle that's disposable to them. I think they even look at the drone, <laughs> the drone shots um, to really make sure that every skier is judged fairly, and I'm excited to see this slow-mo here. Yeah, just well, we, have, we have the same angles, Rob, but yeah. they have the ability to kind of freeze frame yeah. and stop, rewind, and we can kind of see it as the ski goes past the buoy. Oh, it, it doesn't look like good from... Look, looks, looks like, like she misses it, it from both... I don't, know. I don't know. I feel like she missed it from both <laughs> angles, but you can't see a buoy either side, so... I know. I, outside anyway. looks like she gets it. Inside looks like she misses it. But that's down to the judges. That's no. what they're here for. And with so. the TWBC uh, technology that we oh. have, we'll get the right answer. Oh, that's for sure. For there's sure. there's no protest going down anymore. There's, you know, you know, there's no arguments, which is awesome to see. But let's see here, Ali Nicholson. She has been on an absolute ripper this year. I assume heading out there with 32 off 13 meters. That is a two score confirmed for Elizabeth Montemont. That's gonna. That's going to be probably big in, in the way these this kind of top five placements shape up. So, Well, she can do no worth, worse than six. So yeah. that's a good score for her. But I know that extra piece of three would have been very handy right now. Oh, yes. All right, then. Let's check in with Zach. Hi, right, Elizabeth. Uh, fresh off the water here. I know they went to review. We were between kind of a three and a two there at 39. I believe I did hear him say two over the radio. Uh, regardless, you're the first female in the final to kind of get through that 38. It kind of got some of the girls choked up at the beginning there. I know you wanted more, but two is still a respectable score here in the finals. So we'll have to see what shakes out. Uh, walk me through that decision between two and three and where you thought you were. Yeah, you know, uh, I think the gate and one were decent. I, I dumped pretty hard to the inside right into two, kind of guaranteed myself a loose line. And then as that's my offside, it was really hard to make an efficient move out of two. Um, but I saw three, it was in my line of sight, so I went for it. Um, I thought I got outside it, but it's hard when the line's this short, you know? Your boot, your boot can knock it the wrong way, and you think you got it, and from another camera angle, it's very obvious you didn't, so that's what our great judges are for. Hey, well, uh, regardless, it was great to see you here in the finals. Congratulations, it was still a good performance, and uh, Elizabeth, we look forward to seeing you on the Pro Tour for many more years. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. All right, back over to you guys. All right, there we see on the dock uh, Manon Kostar and on the water at this time we have got uh, uh, Ali Nicholson. Yeah, this should be a fairly, hopefully, routine pass for Ali. This is, I believe she can probably say this has been a home site as of the last few years. She's been travel nursing around this area and skiing here with kind of the HO crew and the amazing people that we have out here skiing at this, at this facility. And yeah, she looks comfortable. She looks like it's a home right now. Yeah, running an A2 on that zero off setting and doing it for Team Syndicate. She's a member of that constructors team yeah, that's, uh, leading that's winning team it right, right now. now yeah. yeah, pretty much done it. Yeah. All right oh, then. So exciting. and uh, we've got uh, a news it. here that uh, that the the Syndicate uh, team cannot be caught for the brand leaderboard uh, championship uh, sponsored by TWBC. So, uh, so with uh, with Ali Nicholson on the water and uh, no a member of that syndicate team, uh, team syndicate, uh, your your champions for this year. Yeah, that's exciting to be obviously not a part of the three skiers. They 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 took this one and, and really ran with it. You know, I mean, the team's been so incredibly consistent this year and showing up day after day. And um, yeah, it, it's pretty it's pretty cool to be able to say that the ski that I ride is, um, well, I guess the best ski on tour well, obviously Jamie's, Jamie's been on top for a long oh, time yeah. Will's been on top for a long time but the girl that's on the water right now really stepped things up this year to help yeah. your team out and get get on top so congrats to Ellie and she's our next competitor coming back in at 38 what I'm excited for Rob you talked about three girls through uh oh, through 39 for the it. first time this season Right now in this final, there's go. five girls capable of it, and the conditions are perfect, sitting yeah. up for it. Let's see it. Little tail breeze, a little fast on this gate there on the 38. Hooks up out of the one. That'll be forgotten straight away. Gets a beautiful hook up out of two. She's on time and early through this pass. Fantastic moves at four there. 
big five, but incredibly smooth 39. I'm, I'm going to say it, Ali Nicholson is looking absolutely on fire. This is, I believe, as good as we've seen a ski all season and just looking great as she manages that pass. Again, the wind isn't crazy, but it's definitely a factor. On this gate, it's a little bit of a short run, and you see her kind of letting those hands out, forcing that turn early. She knew she was a little late, but manages it perfectly as she comes into that one ball, and look at that, just textbook. Yes, indeed. And Ali Nicholson, who this season won at San Gervasio, got a second place finish at Kayathas and uh, third place finishes at the Malibu Open, the Monaco Slalom Cup and in uh, California. She is uh, currently fourth place uh, in the uh, on the leaderboard placement in the women's slalom on 218 points. So what are the permutations? Uh, how it, can she improve and uh, get above uh, one or two skiers? The answer is yes, provided she wins, uh, she would move above uh, Whitney McClintock Greeny on 228 versus 220 points. So uh, there's that potential for movement between herself and uh, Whitney McClintock Greeny. So it's going to be essentially a head to head between those two competitors going forward. There could be one or two other skiers that may have issue with that, of course, but uh, we'll there see she what she comes in with. All she right. needs a piece of three to take the lead so far. Come on, Ali. Like, I want to see her we down it. All want to see her through this pass. She got a four a and a half. She got a four. Gate. Good. The preliminary movement rounds. Beautiful two. Come on, Ali. Stay calm as she moves through this three. She gets a big three. She's in this pass. Come on. Big four. Here is she going to keep it through five? She There's, does. She's got oh, it. She is through. through. 39. Oh, uh -huh. there we the, go. Maybe third, fourth time this season I and in the right times at the right place. In this final at the 2023 Grand Prix, Ellie Nicholson, 6 at 39, and her shot at 41. I think that's the third time ever for Ali Nicholson, home side professional tournament. And just fantastic. No, we're not trying to do it with, um, you were right the first time. California, no, Canada. Canada. So, Canada. so, so Ali Nicholson, who can't finish any worse than, uh, what is it, a six... Uh, fifth place right now and uh, she won't get uh, much in the way of points uh, if she finishes in fifth place uh, so uh, so her uh, her placement on the water ski pro tour a women's leaderboard would uh, would stay exactly where it is right now but if her score her pending score at 10.25 meters were to prevail then uh, she could move and leapfrog above some significant names going forward. Ali's this season's best here, Tony. Two at 41. Can she get another two? That would be a huge score and put some serious pressure on the four girls remaining. It's a bit of a late gate shot. She took a little bit of a slack and she's in the water round number one. Still a huge score, but the door's wide open for these next four skiers. Fantastic skiing there from Ali Nicholson at the tail end of the season. She'll have one more event, the World Championships, in about a week or in about two weeks' time. But I tell you what, half a buoy at 41 off at 10.25 metres. I'd be happy with that, wouldn't you? Oh, definitely. That's a, that's a great score. You know, the fist went up as she exited the, the 39. Let's watch this gate. Looks like she ran on a little bit. A few skiers saying it's a little bit shallower. It was a little fast going in through the gates. And then from there, she was just kind of panicking. Um... Dumps it in, but hey, huge, huge score, and she is going to be super pumped to run 39 for, I believe that's the fourth time this season. All right, then, let's go to Zach. All right, guys, uh, here with Whitney. Uh, we just saw a huge score go down, Allie Nicholson running that 39. We were just talking, I think that's her uh, third or fourth time that she's done that in her career. Um, so a huge accomplishment for her, but... Wow, does that really put the pressure on you guys? You got through 39 yesterday. Regina and Jamie did as well. So this is stacking up to be one of the <laughs> biggest finals we've seen in pro women's uh, pro women's event. So talk us through what's going in now. It's no holds bar. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. I mean, there's been uh, four of us at one point who ran 39 in the finals at um, – one of the tournaments a couple years ago. So this could possibly be five. I mean, five of us who have run 39 are sitting here on the dock waiting to, or four more of us are waiting to ski. So uh, that's amazing skiing by Ali and Manon skied amazing yesterday too. So hopefully we just keep it rolling and keep some 39s going down to make this tournament really legendary. No, you guys have been super impressive and uh, I'm looking forward and gonna be watching uh, really closely for you guys. But Whitney, best of luck here in the finals and uh, go get them. Thank you. All right, back over to you guys. Wow, to think there could be five girls through 39, that's incredible. Welcome, Alex. 
Yeah, afternoon, guys. Um, that's amazing for this final, huh? Ali going out. She's fifth to last still, uh, fifth to last, and she's already gone through 39. So that's um, that's put the pressure on these top four who are, who are all more than capable of running it. So um, in terms of this final, it's really shaping up to be exciting. I all was right. really impressed with Manon skiing yesterday. You know, we haven't seen her as much. Uh, I know she's been training back home in, in, in France, but sort of came out, looked strong in the first round, and then oh so close to running 39 with a five and a quarter in round number two. Hopefully she can get the job done as well. This is her first pass. This is 13, 32 off. Here she comes, 32 off on the opener. 13 metres, 47 feet of line to get round the course. It's 37 and a half feet in width. Nine feet to play with and uh, uses all of it to, uh, to get through that run. Doing it out there for Team Connolly. All right then, with that, let's uh, check in with Zach. All right, guys, I'm here. Uh, we'll make this one quick one for you, Jamie. Off up, next off the dock, um, and Ellen's on the water right now. We already saw your teammate, Allie Nicholson, throw down a huge score for half at 41. Uh, you got through, for, uh, through the 39 yesterday, so I know it's attack. Give it your all. Is that the game plan going into finals here? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's awesome to see Allie throw down a big score. I'm sure Manon's going to do the same. So, I mean, we're going to have to keep it rolling and hopefully get through 39 and then get a good start at 41. All right, well, we look forward to it. Go ahead and get ready. Good luck out there. Back over to you guys. All right there, so Manon Kostar, who's, uh, who's, ha who's seen limited action on the, uh, the Water Ski Pro Tour this season, but uh, in the times that she had skied, she had uh, two third-place finishes, one in Kayafas, one at San Gervasio, and a fourth place in the Malibu Open in Lacanel. So, uh, so she hasn't uh, filled... Uh, her, uh, her allotment of uh, five uh, tournament scores, which means she actually has the most room to, uh, to improve beyond where she is right now. She's currently in seventh spot and she could move up uh, significantly depending upon how high she finishes here in this competition, the 2023 Travis Grand Prix. And another formality, this is 12 meters. We talked about her skiing yesterday. Fabulous sort of lower body movement through the wakes, really works to ski from side to side and a strong, intense competitor too. Yeah, I mean, she's looking pretty strong here. I, um, her 39, I know she was, um, uh, she looked really good through the start of it yesterday and just looked a little gun shy towards the end, but uh, she looked solid today and um, obviously been through a lot of 39s in the past, um, jumped away from the sport for a little bit, but she's looking, looking like she's uh, dialed back in here. So Manon Kastar uh, getting ready for, uh, for the next run. She's through 13 and 12 now. Uh, if she can come through with a win in this uh, particular event, it will put her into the top five in the, the women's uh, uh, pro tour standings. Anything less, and she'll be on the outside looking in, res in respect to the top five. Tony, you got a lot of math going over there. I want to have a little look over your shoulder. You got a little spreadsheet going on? or what, how, do you do, how do you work all this out? Waterskiprotour.com. Go to stats.waterskiprotour.com. Yeah, and, open uh, to everyone to take a look. Absolutely. Uh, uh, work with us here. <laughs> here we go. Scott Ellis at the helm of that, uh, that tow boat. Uh, and uh, bring it in, Nautique. Well, this is a must-run pass for Manon. We've seen two competitors through it and one competitor through 39 so far. Very smooth, number one. Took it a little bit easy there, actually, and uh, kind of smoothed things out a little bit. She's kind of finding her form as we go through these rounds. Slipped under the handle, underneath and number four. And oh no, she's gone down round five. And that is all she wrote from Manon. Alex, what did you see? Oh man, she just kind of looked a little unsettled from the start there. She's got, um, she uses her knees really well here to kind of let, get that ski going out. But it just looks like she was coming up kind of short all the way through that pass and was just in a little bit of a fight. And saying that, she hooked up out of one really well. Um, came across here into two and then just started to run into a little bit of trouble. Uh, through in three and four, but uh, I know she's going to be super disappointed with that. Yeah, that was crazy. I actually, I mean, I liked the way she started. You know, she was sort of, looked like she'd calmed down a little bit, had a bit of confidence. One, two, even three was not bad, but maybe even just a little bit too uh, cautious at number four. Uh, maybe come off, a, come up a little early, as you said, and then uh, lost the rope, put herself down course. We had to rely on a big number five. We've seen a lot of competitors kind of pull that off, especially on their onside, but not so much for men on today. Yeah, that was a, that was a weird looking fall there at five ball, huh? She looks like she was going for the uh, kind of drop dropping the hammer, and it just never really happened. 
Yeah, no so. problems there, one and two. Yeah, just there, right, wasn't it? She got kind of pulled to the inside. She lost the handle, and it made her now at three. Didn't phase her at three, but four, definitely. Let's right. head down to Zach and see who he's got with us. Let's check in with Zach. All right, guys, I am here with your current leader in the pro women's finals. Absolutely stroking that 39 off pass coming in the dock, a half at 41. Uh, I know that's your uh, third or fourth time to run it this season. Absolutely on fire and a huge score dropping in front of these other competitors off the dock. Talk me through of, uh, how do you think it's going to hold up and, uh, and just talk me through the excitement of getting through that 39 one more time again this season. Yeah, I mean, I felt like the first two rounds were feeling pretty good, so I was hoping we were going to put one down today. Um, I got to go out before the top four, and I was hoping to put on some pressure. I was hoping to put a little bit more pressure on at 41. I just, I was flying on the gate and just kind of turned and got around one, but at half. So um, we'll see how long it holds, and uh, hopefully it's enough pressure. Go, they got to go run 39 at least now. Hey, regardless, you could hold your head high. That was one heck of a performance, and we're proud of you. And uh, look forward to seeing you back on these waters here in a few weeks at the World Championships. Go get some rest, and we'll see how this holds up for you. Back to you guys. All right, here is Jamie Ball on her opening pass of 30 uh, meters, uh, doing some calculations here with the Water Ski Pro Tour. And uh, the name that comes up is Elizabeth Montavon because uh, by, uh, by my calculations with three competitors left to go and uh, Elizabeth Montavon in second uh, the uh, the very worst that she can do is a fifth place finish and that would give her 81 points and tie for eighth spot on the uh, the season ending list with Paige Rini. Yeah so she's got a lot to gain here from this final uh, we still have three competitors remaining she's sitting in the second spot a few surprises there from our first couple of competitors going down early at 38 and definitely a big surprise from Manon Castard uh, but I know she'll be uh, back in, the, in a few weeks' time and kind of wanting to redeem herself. Skied so well in rounds one and two, but leaving it a little short there in round number three in the final. All of course, right. all these competitors, the, the scores from the first two rounds don't count for anything. It's all off the stick here in the final round. There's a Whitney mcclintock Rini uh, getting ready for uh, for her turn out on the water, and uh, a lot of a uh, lot of permutations uh, continued on. Especially where it uh, where it is uh, regards uh, uh, Ali Nicholson uh, vis a vis uh, uh, Whitney McClintock Rini in regards uh, to the uh, the first uh, the third place uh, placement on the Waterski Pro Tour Women's Slalom Standings. More details on that in a moment. In the meantime, Jamie Ball, the current World Women's Slalom Champion, the current leader on the uh, the Waterski Pro Tour Women's Slalom leaderboard, and uh, slicing and dicing it on the course. She gets through 13 and now 12. 12. Meters. That was 12 meters, 35 off. Alex, you were out on the water earlier today in the amateur round and uh, behind the wheel of that Nautique. The conditions today pretty pretty much the same as the last, as yesterday. A little slight hit, tailwind off the dock, uh, but nothing to, to worry any of these skiers. Yeah, I mean, it might be even a little bit straighter today, so even a little bit better in terms of wind. Um, it's undotted, and Jamie knows this place like the back of her hand, right? She's skied here since she was probably 10, 11 years old, so she's well and truly calls this place home. Uh, and, I mean, conditions are just awesome. You've got Scott Ellis on behind the wheel, so these guys can't ask for anything more. Well, here's my question for you, Alex. Would you uh, prefer to be behind the wheel in this event or sitting up here with us watching it? Uh, yeah, no, I'd probably be prefer to be behind the wheel. Uh, you know, I, lo I love my driving and really passionate about it, but, uh, you know, I'm having fun with you guys up here. All right, uh, Jamie Ball, currently on a 248 uh, pro points right now. Uh, actually, actually a little bit higher than that, I believe, on the 267. We'll get confirmation of that in just a moment or so. In the meantime, coming in on uh, this pass of 11.25 meters, this is Jamie Ball. Jamie Ball on 268, as a matter of fact. We've had five skiers so far. Three have missed this pass. Two successfully got six buoys. This is going to be our third skier through the pass without a problem. Yeah, that was Silky Smith. I mean, this, this 11 should be a banker for Jamie, but you never know, you know, right? We saw those skiers go down, and it's one of those line lanes that if you just kind of relax a little bit, you can catch yourself out pretty quick. But, um, I mean, she absolutely smoked that. Yeah, I know she had a few tournaments earlier on in the season where she had made a few little mistakes. There was one uh, just a couple of weekends ago. She did fall early at this pass. I know she was kind of dealing with some ski issues. I, I heard her, her 
ski got broken at from some of the airlines coming back from Europe, but she's definitely figured it out and posting through 39 at uh, the last couple of events pretty consistently. All right, in good, good shape there on 11.25 metres, and that would um, essentially mean that, uh, that Jamie Ball, with the two skiers remaining, I believe uh, she, uh, she would, would finish uh, no... Uh, no uh, Worse than about four four fifth right now. Currently in the lead is Ali Nicholson on half at ten point two five meters. So uh, I've got uh, Kyle Lead, and I've got Alex King. The invasion of the Kiwis, as always, Tony. But the back to the water. This is the pass. We've seen Ali get through it. We've seen Jamie do it in the prelims. Can she do it again here in the finals? Has it's to a run. Must run pass. Yes, indeed, if she wants to win this event, here she comes, Jamie Ball, round the first, round the second, good to go round number three, holding everything in off number four, good to go round five, and our second person in this final to run, 10.75. That was easy, guys, that was, that nice, was an huh? easy 39. I actually saw a few of those girls run some pretty easy 39s in the second round, but... Maybe not as easy as that. That was some smooth skiing and strong. Man, I, I almost thought she was a little slow here out of one, and I was like, uh oh, we're in a little bit of trouble. But man, she just came through two super clean, and then from there, it just looked absolutely awesome. Um, here at one, I just thought maybe she got a little slow, got a little stu um, uh, trapped up there with her high side. But man, from here on, it was just easy as you like. Three skiers got through this pass in round number two. We heard Whitney say a few years ago, I think four skiers got through a 39 in a final summer along the lines, and we have the potential for that happening again right here as two have got through it, and probably the most consistent skiers through 39 have yet to leave the dock. All right then, so uh, Jamie Ball, the current World Women's Slalom champion, Actually, uh, actually made a play on the two ball uh, to get that world championship uh, title uh, two seasons ago. And uh, if she can get the ski outside buoy number three, then we're looking at the potential of a new Canadian national women's slalom record. But let's see. Yeah, she... ABC's first. Here we go. There's one. She gets the one and to the wakes and takes the lead in this uh, in this final. She wanted two there, huh? She was... <laughs> She'll be a little disappointed, I think, but that's still massive score in terms of Ali with the half, she takes the lead. Yeah, definitely just slotted herself ahead of Ali Nicholson with a full one buoy at 41. She's guaranteed on the podium. Um, I thought she had a great gait. She had got her ski around, had some ton of angle, setting herself up, but then kind of popped off the handle pretty fast into number one, overreached maybe, and got sort of dragged into the buoy. And at that point, I think, she, I think she was thinking, okay, just survive this. Don't fall. Get the, the full one and see how that pans out with the next two skiers remaining. That's it with 41, right? Like, it's so short. She almost looked like she kind of got to her high point a little bit too early and then was just stuck without being able to move, so she just came up a bit short. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's hell of a scheme from Jamie. It puts the pressure on the next two skiers. All right, and uh, great, great skiing there from uh, Jamie Ball. I'm sure that she has uh, one eye over towards uh, defending her uh, World Women's Slalom title, but for the time being, at least, she has the lead with two skiers remaining. It is Jamie Ball with one buoy at 10.25 metres, and the current leader on the women's uh, pro tour standings has uh, set the bar pretty high for our remaining two competitors to take to the water, guys. All right, Jamie had a four and a half at 39 the first round, a one at 41 the second round, and another one here in the final. She set herself on the top spot so far, two skiers remaining. She'll amass some good points from this event, but she doesn't really need them. She's already won the uh, Water Ski Pro Tour from our calculations. So feeling pretty good about her season so far and how she's shaping up for the World Champs. All right, waiting for our next gear to take to the water. Multiple time world slalom champion, multiple time masters champion and Pan American, uh, Pan American champion. And has also uh, medaled in the Pan American games as well. Let's have a look and see our next competitor. This is Whitney McClintock Reaney. Thirty-two off, and Whitney McClintock Reaney coming in, doing it for Team Radar. And the first one-handed gate we've seen out of these girls. 
I believe. Yeah, I was about to say one of those skiers still sticking with the one-handed gait, which was, you know, it was popular, I don't know, well, 10, 15 years ago, I guess, and people are kind of going back to that two-handed gait, the, the conventional style, but, I mean, her gait's as good as anybody's. Let's hear from Zach. All righty, guys, here with Jamie Bull, your new current leader in the Pro Women's Finals. Uh, Stu's tough competitors out there right after you both ran 39 yesterday we saw Allie throw down 39 earlier in the rounds it was one of the prettiest 39s I think I've seen you run that was a really nice pass uh, talk me through that and, and what you feel that one think it's going to hold up or what do you think yeah I don't think the one will hold up but 39 felt great so definitely a positive takeaway from the weekend um, so yeah just going to try and keep feeling that at 39 and then we have a couple weeks before Worlds to get 41 sorted out that was going to be my next question is uh, this does serve as a nice stepping stool going into the world championships here at the site in a competition level. So being able to get through 39, two out of three rounds, uh, that must speak volumes to be able to go into the worlds with that kind of confidence. Yeah, definitely. Like I'm super happy to do that, especially after Ali put up a big score. So um, that feels good. And then, yeah, we'll just go back to the drawing board and worlds is in two weeks. All righty. Well, good skidding, Jamie. And uh, back over to you guys, Whitney McClintock on the water. All right, then, uh, we're still working out the permutation so far as the women's uh, Pro Tour standings is concerned. And uh, because uh, Ali Nicholson uh, cannot uh, uh, increase her points uh, uh, whole right now from where she is at 218 points uh, based upon the top five score scores that she's top five placements that she's already had this season, she cannot catch uh, Whitney uh, McClintock Reaney uh, going forwards. Yeah, so Whitney sort of uh, cemented her, her place on the podium in third spot, but I believe Tony that she's gonna can't can't catch Regina either in second Neither. spot. Is that right? Can't can't catch Regina. Can't catch Jamie. No. So our one, two, three on the Water Ski Pro Tour is uh, is a lock. Set, is locked in, but these girls will not hold back because they also want the uh, 2023 Grand Prix title under their belt. Absolutely, and uh, so uh, we've seen Whitney McClintock Greeny just absolutely taking this pass down. 13 and 12, previous winners of this event, didn't hold this event in 2021 uh, due to uh, the conflict with the World Championships, but uh, we've, uh, we've had some great winners uh, over the years. As we look at the leaderboard right now, uh, Jamie Ball with one at 10.25 in the lead, ahead of the half a buoy at 10.25 meter score by uh, Ali Nicholson, Montavon, Costa, Bagnoli, and uh, Mills rounding off the, uh, the leaderboard as it stands at the moment with two skiers remaining. And this is Whitney at 11.25, 38 off. And usually we say this is a formality for these girls, but it, uh, three of our competitors so far in this final have come up short. Uh, but Whitney is riding her radar through this very, very clean. She's picked up some consistency CC with her uh, 135 and very very strong on 24 easy six buoys and her shot at 39 coming up in just a few moments rocking and rolling there we see Regina Jaquis at the end of that dock and uh, just looking at uh, some of the uh, the potential placements going forward we are agreed that the top three positions on the water ski pro tour end of season women standings are pretty much a, a lock uh, so far as the results of this competition are concerned, uh, Jamie Ball is first and can finish no worse than third. Uh, Ali Nicholson is currently in second and can finish no worse than fourth. And I believe uh, Elizabeth Montavon is currently in third at the moment and can finish no worse than fifth. Just looking at this. Instant replay on 11.25 meters. Uh, just absolutely just stomps on it. Mm -hmm. And now getting ready for 10.75 meters. Now, there is an additional element to all of this, of course. I mean, uh, as, as we mentioned, the Water Ski Pro Tour rankings are a done deal. Uh, she's looking to win. She's still uh, 
looking for a shot to get as high as the podium as possible to take the win in this competition. But there's also that Canadian national slalom record to consider as well. Yeah, it's hers. It's two and a quarter on the next pass. She's got to get through 39 first. She's dumped in at number one ball. We saw shades of that in the first two rounds, but she's such a strong competitor that, that doesn't phase her. The head flies back at number three. Still on track though, a big number four. Around five, we'll see it again, but just no oh, mistakes at, at the that. end of the pass, Alex. That was some strong, uh, confident, just grit your teeth and get it done. I mean, I think that just shows how physically strong Whitney is, right? Like that one ball was not what she was looking for there to get through 39, and she just decided, you know what, I'm going to grip it and rip it all the way through this pass. And I mean, it doesn't matter how she did it, six is six, and she's going to be looking at two ball here at 41. And the door is wide open with Ellie with a half and Jamie with a one. Of course, Whitney being a left foot forward skier, it's her onside. She has a pretty good chance of turning this. And if she can uh, get pick up that boat and get some swing across to number two, she will definitely take the lead in this event. And who knows, that Canadian record, it's been a little while since she saw that piece of three. We'd love to see it go down today. Some great skiing there, some very determined skiing as a matter of fact, you know, I mean, she got in really, really deep there on buoy number four, even earlier in this pass, and she just hung on for dear life and just never say die, huh? The three was the one that, uh, that got me, her head sort of got whipped back, I actually saw that, a little bit of that uh, yesterday too, so she might need a few adjustments from the chiropractor after this. Um, but here's her shot, this is 41 off as the boat comes back around the turn island, the lead is one. She has got to two numerous times and got a piece of three once. Hopefully she can do it here for you guys today. Let's, let's go, 41 off. All right, here she comes, 41 off. Round number one takes the snap and it's a tie. It's a tie for the lead with none other than Jamie Ball. Well, I actually really thought she was going to hook up out of that one ball, the way she was, has been skiing. I know it's been aggressive. I know she's been dumping a little bit on 135. But, the, you know, how, how strong she is, how much experience she has, I thought she was going to hook up and get to two then. Yeah, I'm with you, Kyle. Was, you know, she's left foot forward. She's got that big onside turn. And I was, I was thinking that she was going to get everything out of it and get across the two ball there. But, um, man, this is setting up to be a crazy, crazy final here. We've got Regina left on the dock and two people already tied on one at 41. And then Allie with the half. So Whitney right now has kind of seated herself slightly ahead of Jamie because of the, the backup scores. Obviously, they won't be used if this is a tie for first. The girls will be going back out again. We've got one competitor left. Two girls sitting tied at one at 41. I saw Jamie down there. She hasn't taken her gear off. She knows there's a, there's a possibility and a pretty strong possibility that uh, she might be going back out. And we would love to see that. A runoff between the top three girls would be fantastic. Oh, yes. We're down to our final competitor. But uh, could it be our final action in the women's competition? We have yet to determine that. And uh, the skier about to take to the water. I mean, what is there to be said about this skier that hasn't already been said before? Multiple time world slalom champion and record holder. Multiple time Pan American champion. Pan American games champion. She just seems to keep doing it, doesn't she? Just getting, getting older, but getting better. And uh, nothing better than last weekend with a... A five at 41, a new pending world record. She seems to have found just that little bit more confidence on her gates and uh, picking up out a one that's getting enabling her to turn two. She got a three in one of the rounds and then a five. She didn't end up winning that event. Jamie Bull got ahead of her in the final, but I think she's about to redeem herself here. Hopefully uh, getting past that leading score of a one with the two girls tied up. Ali Nichols, uh, sorry, uh, Jamie Bull and Whitney McClintock tied up at one at 41. Ali's still holding onto that third spot and with a half. All right, working our way through uh, towards the end, our uh, final competitor in regulation right now and uh, getting ready for pass number one, 30 meters. This is Regina Jaquis. Now, points potential for Regina Jaquis. She's currently on 248 points. If she comes away here with the win, she would increase her point haul to 265 points. If she comes away with the win and the best score, it'll be 267 points, which will put her one point short of Jamie Ball. And with that in mind, let's check in with Whitney. All right, guys, here with Whitney. This is shaping up to be one heck of a final. Uh, you're the third women through, uh, through 39 off. 
Uh, got a little log jam going with Jamie Bull and yourself at one at 41. Uh, Regina's on the water now, so we'll have to kind of wait and see for any runoff purposes. But uh, but walk me through that 39. Big aggressive start. You powered through it. I know you said you had a great gate there at 41. Just it's a lot of skiing. Yeah, it is a lot of skiing, and I mean, I just made, tried to make sure I was really strong at my 39. Made sure that I was like aggressive out to the balls um, so that I could get good turns. I don't know that it was really good, but I was just like, I was actually singing a song to God the whole time. <laughs> Every time I came into one three five, I'm like, "You are good," and then I turned, and it was like the coolest thing. It's never happened to me before, but it was pretty cool. <laughs> um, and then my gate at 41 was actually really good, but I was like a little worn out by the time I got outside one. Um, and I had to take one. So we'll see what Regina does and see if we have to ski again. Hopefully not. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, Whitney, we'll let you get rest up, get in the shade. Uh, amazing performance, and this is going to shape up to be one heck of a finals. Back to you guys over there. All right, then. We've got uh, Regina Jaquis out on the water looking to try and get uh, the, the, the uh, maximum uh, point hold she could possibly uh, get. She... Uh, she can do that with a win and a win with the uh, with the best uh, score in this competition. Two additional points up for grabs for doing that and that will bring her up to 267 points if she can manage uh, both feet. Well she did it in the first round didn't she? She, she got the, the best score of the tournament so far, 2 at 41. She got a 1 at 41 in round number 2 and she's needing a little bit of that form from round 1 to take this, this win here today. So, basi so basically, in essence, uh, Regina Jaquist already has points on the board, and uh, that would improve a point hole uh, for the time being, at least, at, uh, from 248 to 250. Because uh, she has the best point score in this competition. Yeah, I'm interested to see, you know, like, I'm interested that she chose to go out at 13 this time. She, she chose 12 yesterday. Maybe she just wants that, uh, that guarantee that 39 from that... Um, supposedly better in with a slightly headwind um, and knowing she only has to get a piece of two to take the win. She didn't have to, doesn't have to go that deep at 41. All right, here we go, folks. Coming in. This is Regina Jaquis. This is 11.25 meters. Nice pull out. Always seems to have that, uh, that knack of uh, whenever she pulls out for the entrance, uh, the gate shot, she never loses width as she gets ready to, to swing from the left to the right. And uh, part of the hallmark of being a champion that she is, is being able to do the, the simple things right and the great thing and the, uh, and the greater things even better. Dropping down the end as Whitney sits on the dock and waits. Same with Jamie Bull. They know there's a potential for a runoff here, obviously We've got to see Regina through 39 first. We'll watch her replay here and uh, make a few comments about just how perfectly she lines up at the end of the turn with the handle and just never really moves. It just keeps her speed out of both sides and just keeps her so far up ahead of the, ahead of the game here. So early at number three. Sort of room for mistakes, but she doesn't make any. I mean, yeah, it's inter you're watching this in slow mo, so there's plenty of plenty of room to nitpick, and there's nothing to nothing to uh, take away from Regina. There was absolutely perfect pass, uh, always tight line, plenty of time, super early. Uh, that I mean, that's as easy as a 38 will ever get. All right, three girls have been through 39. This is Regina's turn here in just a few moments. This could be history in the making with four girls through 39 in a final at the 2023 Grand Prix at Travers Ski School. Here we go, folks. This is Regina Jaquis. Needs to, uh, to get this pass under a belt to put her in the position where she can strike for the lead and the win in the Travers. Oh, oh look at that slippage four. there on four. Round five, and she is still in with a chance to win this competition on the strength of a six buoy count on 10.75 meters. And the compound pharmacist who comes to us from Santa Rosa Beach in the northern part of Florida is still on the water, and her name is Regina Jaquis. It's getting extremely tight here. This was a nice pass, but she had a few big turns in there to kind of see her through it, especially that four ball, Alex. That was a huge kind of hit. We saw uh, Whitney take a few big turns on her onside as well as she went through the pass. I did say maybe Jamie's is the, the, the cleanest one so far. 
but it doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you get through the six buoys and what she can, what can she get here at 41? Yeah, coming across to this four ball, she didn't really need this big turn. She was on time, but she just kind of fell out the back a little bit there, and you can see her head snap back, but uh, super strong, back together at five, and, I mean, oodles of time over to six, so um, really nice pass there from Regina. So Regina Jaquist, a fresh off her world record setting performance, pending world record setting performance uh, last weekend in Tuscaloosa, Alabama as part of the Malibu Open. And now let's have a look and see how she uh, performs right here and now. She it's needs, uh, what is it, a piece of two. Piece of two. It's not a huge score, but it's extremely difficult at the short 41 off. Can she get it done? Can she time her gates completely right here, which she has done. She's out at number one. It's a little bit of a stop-start, but she'll pull all the way to two. There it is, your winner. There it the is. The goes up. It's two buoys at 41 off. And again, Regina Jaquis on the top of the podium. And she wins and gets 267 points by having the, uh, the top score in this competition as well. She ends off the, uh, the Water Ski Pro Tour uh, season in the women's slalom with 267 points. But your winner of the Water Ski Women's uh, Pro Tour with 268 point points is uh, Jamie Paul. But your winner right here at the Travers Grand Prix, Regina Jaquers. Fantastic skiing. Yeah, that was really classy. She just looked like she kind of controlled her gate speed a little bit more there than the other girls and was able to get that uh, that tighter line through one. Uh, and, I mean, that's uh, that's just really pure class there from Regina. you got to feel a little sorry for Ali. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, outside look, in there looking the at the podium there with Regina, then Whitney, um, and, then ja and then Jamie. And a name that's missing is Ali, who also got a huge score of half at 41, but not quite making the podium today. Imagine that, half of 41 off 10.25 metres and not even making it onto the top three. It's nuts. Crazy. We've got a happy Regina Jaquis coming back to the dock. I'm sure we'll get Zach with her in just a few moments. And uh, we'll just be back here with the open men's here very, very shortly after that. Uh, sensational skiing from the ladies. Can't wait to see the men's. Wow, fantastic skiing, and uh, certainly thank you, Kyle, and uh, you, Alex, uh, for uh, for helping out with the analysis here. And uh, stepping up onto the dock, and with uh, Zach Warden, this is Regina Jaquis. All right, guys, I'm here with your 2023 Travers Pro-Am Women's Solemn Champion. First and foremost, what a final by the women's. Four different women, all in the 41 off. That was absolutely incredible. They did not make it easy on you. Stroked that 39 coming back. Did what you had to do at 41. Uh, it talked me through just being on the dock and seeing those three women ahead of you put down that 39. Um, as we talked before I went out the pre-interview, I said, I know the girls, are. there's going to be a lot of us running it. They all look good. We've all been pushing each other. It's awesome. When you have a nice sight, perfect little head tail, you know it's going to go down. So I was already prepared, but it's funny because you sit down and in the finals and you got to go 39, you're like, if I don't even run this, I'm not on the podium. <laughs> you know, I mean, so that's amazing skiing, um, you know, and makes makes the win so awesome when, you know, it's like, okay, got to get two at 41, here we go, let's, let's make it happen. But thanks to everybody that put it on, thanks for everybody watching at home, and uh, it feels great. Well, Regina, congratulations. You guys don't go anywhere. I mean, if this is setting up to be an amazing men's slalom finals, if the girls are already throwing down a bunch of 39s, uh, we're in tune for a... Uh, some scores for the guys to go beat, right? <laughs> Absolutely. The pressure's on the guys now. Well, Regina, congratulations. Uh, go get dried off, and we'll Thanks, see you on the podium in a little bit. Bye-bye. Back to you guys. All right, then. So let's have a quick look at that leaderboard, shall we? That, uh, that beautiful uh, leaderboard are coming up and uh, displaying the, uh, the, final, uh, final, uh, uh, the final standings for the women's uh, 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 championship here at the, uh, the 2023 Travers Grand Prix. I'm joined here by, uh, by Doreen Llewellyn. And, uh, and I mean, just, just take a look at that. I mean, Regina with the, with the win at two at 10.25 meters. Uh, Whitney McClintock Reaney in second uh, by superior backup ahead of Jamie Ball, also with one. Ali Nicholson half on 10.25 meters. Lisbeth Montavon in the top five there with a fifth place finish with two at 10.75 meters. And then we have Count, uh, we have Costa, Bagnoli, and Mills in that order. All right then, final Pro Tour standings uh, brought to you by Clipsed uh, Stereo and uh, Jamie Ball wins by two points, by two points.
Uh, Jamie Ball takes the victory on the, the Pro Tour standings for women's slalom. Regina Jake was in second. Winnie McClintock Reaney with, uh, with third. And Ali Nicholson fourth. And Ali Garcia in fifth. So let's, uh, let's check in with the season's long champion on the water ski Pro Tour in women's slalom, Jamie Ball. All right, Jamie. I know it didn't quite come away with the gold here at Travers Pro-Am, but it was enough to seal your fate as the uh, Pro Tour winner in the Women's Slalom uh, here in 2023, just by a margin of two points. So uh, talk us through how you felt throughout the season and all these points tournaments and, uh, and what it means to come away on top like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm super excited to come away on top. Um, definitely had a great early summer I'd say like Europe was went really well for me so was able to stack some points there and then uh, last weekend a few other events so yeah it's been a great season now we got worlds it's not part of the pro tour but just everything building up into that well it, it must feel good to kind of seal that victory as the pro tour winner here at your home site um, and then build momentum going into that world. The women's finals was absolutely amazing, and uh, I'm really looking forward to watching the world championships because that's going to speak to the level of competition. And, uh, Jamie, what a great season. Congratulations, and uh, look forward to seeing you in a few weeks. Thanks so much. All right, back over to you guys. All right, then, and uh, Jamie Ball, the big old winner there on the, the season-long prize for the women's slalom of the Waterski Pro Tour, provided to us by Clips Stereo, and uh, the prize for the audience, uh, the, uh, the audience uh, women's uh, prize winner is Steve O'Shea. Steve O'Shea, you have won yourself a Conley Slansky. Now, Kyle, I know you're pretty uh, pretty close to the Conley brand. What could he choose from? I think he's got a choice from the uh, the, the DV8 or the new C1. Uh, but either either choice is a great one. What about Carbon V? Carbon V as well, probably. But you know, depending on his level, I think uh, going for those that DV8 or the C1 would be my choice. Indeed, indeed. And uh, the vote is voting is still continuing on for the skier of the day. You hold that up there, uh, Dorian. And uh, this uh, this aw this award provided to us courtesy of uh, so well. of two you a healthy snack. Yeah, you should be Vanna White, shouldn't you? There you go. So uh, make yes, sure yeah. you uh, you get you uh, vote for uh, for that uh, your skier of the day. Could it be Regina? Could it be Jamie? Could it be Whitney? Or could it be someone else? Maybe even Ali for uh, for running uh, ten point seven five meters right there. Go vote. Waterskibroadcaster.com forward slash play. And uh, let's uh, let's check in check in with Dockside. All right, guys, uh, down here with Adam Settlemeyer. Uh, here in the finals, first off the dock, but uh, talk us through the process to get here. You had back-to-back -back rounds at 341. You got yourself into a runoff with T-Gas to make it in. Uh, not only did you guys tie again and have to go to sudden death, uh, consistently getting a three ball every time at 41, uh, four rounds in a row. Talk me through, can we make this finals happen, get past three a little bit? Yeah, you know, for me, it's really just the process of elimination. So first, I do, I do what not to do, and then today I really focus to not to do what I'm not supposed to do, you know what I'm saying? So uh, hopefully things will go a little bit better today. Just kind of uh, figure out my little keys there to get a better start at 41 and just take it deeper. I mean, no sense of holding back, right? I don't have a backup score. Uh, I know it's going to take way past three ball to be anywhere in the realm of uh, standing on the podium. So uh, you just got to put it all on the line and go for it. Yeah, well, Adam, best of luck to you. I'll let you get those, get those boots on, man. Go get them, big dog. Right, let's get it, Back to you guys. All right, good stuff. And the boat's going to do a simulation pass down the lake. And we'll return to pick up Adam. There's our startless Adam Sedema kicking it off. Three at 41. Corey Vaughan, that three, that big three and a quarter, uh, will be out next. Dane Meckler, John Travers, uh, and Brandon Caruso all getting to four at 41. Will Asher at five. Nate Smith running that pass. But Freddie Winter, the top scorer of the prelims, one at 43. And Dorian, you've been sitting here with us for a little bit. I'm just going to check if your mic works. Are you, are you here? Yep. Oh, good stuff. Dorian, how are you feeling today? We, we witnessed a pretty uh, hard fall from you in the Slalom event yesterday. We're a little bit worried about the ankle. Touch and go right now. How is it? Yeah, a little touch and go. Um, obviously, if you're coming back from ankle injury, maybe, you know, the tournament right before the Worlds, don't 
do something like a front flip in slalom. But uh, it's feeling all right. It's kind of getting better. Even Tony asked me earlier how I was feeling, and even since then it feels a little better. And So i got a good team around me, and I'm sure we'll figure it out. Actually had comments uh, from uh, from some good folks out there after that interview, and uh, even, even some people saying that I was a little bit harsh on you there. I mean, do you do you agree with that? Uh, I mean, you know, they're they're tough questions, but I'm sure that you know, like you said, the, some of the guys in the Canadian team are thinking about these things, and you know, I'm I'm definitely working to try to prevent that, but it's still fair. All right, then let's uh, check in with uh, Zach again. All right. All right. The Lone Wolf, first, first off the dock in round number two. We didn't have a score for round one. Round two, first gear off the dock, laid it all on the line at four ball, and it paid off. You survived. You made it into the finals with three and a quarter at 41 yesterday. Um, I know you were pumped. It wasn't the way you planned on doing it, but here you are. You're in the finals, man. Talk me through it. Yeah, I mean, any which way you can do it. These days, just to get into the finals, it feels like a win, pretty much. Uh, we're standing right here by the handle checker. Uh, I've checked my handle. We should be in good shape this round. But I'll tell you what, everybody, uh, buckle up at home. This is going to be a battle. You saw what everyone did yesterday, so we kind of know the level. So from early in the heat here, I think the name of the game is try to go run 41. Uh, I think you're exactly right, and if the women's scores are any testament to what these guys are getting ready to do, uh, you know it's going to have to be deep in that 41. Corey, go get them. Best of luck to you, brother. Thanks, bud. All right, back over to you guys. Well, we certainly wish uh, Corey the best of luck here, but uh, having some problems in recent times with that handle, huh? Well, as I said yesterday, I think all these uh, competitors like to push the limits. You know, they want their handle as long as possible with intolerance, but they want to get every single little inch, centimeter, millimeter out of that uh, out of that rope. And, and even when you see some of the photos of these guys as they round the buoys, their handle is in their fingertips, right, Dorian? Like it's it's stretching the limits. Yeah, no, I, I kind of feel like I should be doing that because obviously I'm not as tall as some of these guys, but, you know, my, my hands aren't as big as theirs either. So, you know, <laughs> it's all around. I've just got these small disadvantages. But, yeah, everybody's definitely always pushing the limits and every little piece that you can get to get wider at the buoy is really important. Yes, indeed. And, uh, yeah, your hands may not be as big, but the, your fingertips are calloused, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm using every part of my hand, that's for sure. They were talking about all the, uh, the the great scores in the women's event, obviously setting records with four girls through 39 in that final, um, and some sort of record yesterday having to get two threes, a pair of threes in rounds one and two to get through to the final, and then going to a, you know, going to a runoff. Um, incredible skiing, a couple skiers through 41, and we are about to kick this off in style. 12 meters, Adam Settlemeyer. Coming in at Adam Saddlemeyer. Now for Adam Saddlemeyer to finish in the top 12 on the Water Ski Pro Tour standings, he would effectively need to uh, finish off at least in sixth place in this, uh, in this competition. So he needs to, uh, to place two uh, places higher than where he is right now. Let's uh, check in with Zach, shall we? Okay, here with John Travers. Um, a great performance. Uh, you weren't in after round number one, round number two. Uh, you were a little earlier off, didn't know what quite it was going to take. You put out a big score at 441. And to be honest, it looked like the kind of start at 41 that could send you a little deeper. Uh, talk me through it. I know after seeing the women ski today that in talking with Corey and talking with Adam, it's got to be a deep score at 41. Uh, are we going to check up at four ball again or are we going for it? You know, just to get there and get that started again would be amazing. And then knowing that, I probably need to run the pass with Freddie, Will, and Nate, you know. So if I can just get that start and just keep attacking like I was yesterday in the four, hey, it'll be a fun day, and it'll be, I'll be stoked. So. Hey, hey, man, we're looking forward to it. And, and also, big props to you for helping to organize this tournament. And uh, it, it's fitting that it's the season cap for the Pro Tour. And glad that we get to finish here, here at your home site. And uh, what an amazing event, man. We'll let you get some rest and go get out there and attack it on the water. Thanks, Zach. All right. Back over to you guys. All right, here we go, and we've got to Corey Vaughan on the end of that dock, and uh, we look forward to seeing uh, Jonathan Travers uh, take to the water uh, in all uh, in all good time. As we look, at Adam Saddlemeyer looking in good shape there, running with Alpha Two, a uh, pretty common setting among our uh, skiers there, uh, using uh, using zero off their drawing. Yeah, it's definitely been a trend that everybody's starting to use A Two. Obviously, you know everybody has their own personal preference and guys come out with different numbers but 
uh, yeah, I've even gotten on that train now recently. <laughs> Everybody convinced me of that, and yeah, you can see there that the numbers clearly favor A2. It seems like on the Nautique, that's kind of the, the common choice, right? Some of the other boats, they sort of vary a little bit, but you're using A2 right now? Yeah, the Nautique has a, a really consistent pull into the buoy, so a lot of times guys use A2 because it lets them feel a little bit freer at the buoy, that they can move and kind of, you know, make adjustments while they're at the buoy instead of getting pulled into the buoy all the time. Do you think that changes uh, whenever you change props, you know, from three to four on uh, from from some other other boat brands? Oh, uh, possibly. Um, I know we run three blade props, and uh, skiers still uh, pick the same setting, typically. But uh, it's personal preference. So, you know, a lot of these skiers will go out too, and uh, after that feeling a little bit off on the first couple of passes, depending on the setup of the boat, they might might change it. They have that option to do so. All right, and that option has been in uh, been in place for about the last two to three seasons now, and that has really uh, opened uh, opened things up so far as uh, slalom skiers at this level, or indeed any level, uh, uh, being able to create the bespoke uh, uh, slalom pull that is possible. Here we go, coming in. This is Adam Saddlemeyer, pass number three 10.75 meters it's past number three but it's right into 39 and a half off and that is extremely short he's big lunge at number three and unfortunately he's blown the tail it's incredible though because this guy got through 39 off once twice three times in the runoff and to three at 41 three times in a row over the last couple of days unfortunately the pressure was on him here he wanted to go out and put a you know big score up right off the bat uh unfortunately going a little too hard at number three two and a half it's not going to be the score he's looking for today So looking at this once again, Adam Saddlemeyer, who's uh, had a quite a, a prolific uh, presence on the slalom course in, uh, in recent seasons, even going uh, back as far as 2011, where he won his uh, first European men's slalom title in the cold, frigid waters of Skarnes in Norway. And uh, just looking at this instant replay, got a good start, got into a good rhythm but unfortunately wasn't able to take advantage of uh, number three. And with that, let's check in with Zach. All right, um, getting a chance to take a little load off here with your top seed, Mr. Freddie Winter, getting through that 41 yesterday. A valiant effort for two ball at 43 there. That was something really impressive. Uh, I know the guys are going to be putting the pressure on. Everyone I've talked to so far is saying it's going to take something deep at 41 or running that 41 to put some pressure on you guys. Uh, do you think that's the case today? Almost undoubtedly. We've got good conditions. Um, I'm feeling a little bit awkward with my hand on your shoulder. I'm going to take it off. <laughs> it was a funny joke for a second. Um, yeah, we've got a little headwind at 41, assuming everyone makes it there. So, yeah, I think we're looking good for some big scores today. I mean, it's it's Travers. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a good driver, good boat and everything. So, yeah, we're... Uh, I'm going to have to go do some cool stuff to, to take the win today. Last off a dock, I think. No, I, I think it's going to shape up to be nice. Uh, the conditions, it's a pretty consistent five, six mile an hour headwind. It's a tailwind 39, uh, but it's that nice headwind, nice consistent coming up the lake uh, for that 41. So I think we're going to see some big scores, man. Looking forward to it. Me too. Once I get over some nerves, I'll be good, I think. All right, well, I'll let you keep relaxing, man. Back over to you guys. Tony, he said he was going to do some cool stuff out there. Do you think he's going to turn the nuts out of some buoys? Uh, I think so. Uh, hashtag turn the nuts. Turn the nuts. All right. Let's go with our next. That's going to be a t-shirt. You, you know it, don't you? For sure. Our next competitor. This is Corey Vaughan starting at 12 meters as well. And while he's just going through some formalities, Dorian, um, talk, watching Adam out there, uh, he's one of your fellow overall competitors. I know you're chasing down some overall tournaments here. And he's, is he going to be competing in a few weeks' time at the overall, the overall at the Worlds? I'm actually not sure, but, you know, Adam's always been really consistent in slalom. That, that was kind of a weird fall for him to go down that early, like you were saying. You know, when you come into overall with that kind of consistency in slalom, it, it puts such a, a big leg up right away. And, you know, Joel's been in really fine form in slalom as well. So those two guys and, you know, Rob's not jumping this year, but there's a lot of guys recent years that are, are really getting good in slalom. So... It's, it's changed the overall game, that's for sure, but um, I think we'd have to ask Adam what his plans well, are. Well, I'm, I'm hoping he is. He is, and I know, like, some of the older guys, say, like, Martin Coleman, not that he's that old, but he's been around a little while. He's one. I'm hoping those guys have a big event, too, coming up in a few weeks. Put some pressure on some of you younger fellas. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, you know, like, like we were just talking about earlier, I'm, right now I'm just hoping that, you know, I can get, get my stuff together in the next two weeks and put on a good showing myself, but... 
yeah, I mean, skiing against Adam, skiing against Martin, it's always really cool. Like, you know, former world champions. And Martin had a really good tournament at your place a couple of weeks ago. He and did, yeah. So, you know, he's finding form, especially when he starts jumping well. That's when you know it's game on with him. Sure, for sure. Oh, well, Doreen, right. I happen to know you're, you're a PT, and I think she's going to whip you back into shape. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> she'll, uh, she'll be on me right away and probably be a little annoyed that I did what I did. But, you know, it happens. All right, then. Here comes Corey Vaughan, uh, in currently in 10th on, uh, on the leaderboard for the men's slalom of the Water Ski Pro Tour. Uh, placement, 6th at the Mastercraft Pro, 7th at Kayafas, 7th at Malibu Open, 8th in the California Pro-Am, and will be looking to, uh, to try and displace that 10th place score at the Monaco Slalom Cup with his uh, performance right here. Uh, can actually move up significantly on the water, ski, water ski Pro Tour standards. I'll give you more details uh, in a moment. But uh, Corey Vaughan you know, has uh, certainly begun to find some late season form with the World Championships just around the corner, guys. Well, I don't know about late season form. I think he's had uh, all season form, to be honest. I think he's been looking really clean and uh, got on some new, a new ski and has had a, has a great season all through it. Um, obviously, he hadn't awkward way of getting here to the final he scored a, a huge three at 41 in the first round that didn't count his handle was long he had to come out in the second round and just go throw down as the first competitor leaving the dock he did he got a piece of four he got a three and a quarter he had to sit here and sweat it out a little bit as the other skiers came oh so close to ousting him but he earned his spot he's going out second off the dock in this men's final but he's already run two passes and this is the big one coming up this is 39. Okay, and by the sheer fact that he's actually in the final means that uh, that he can that he does actually uh, get uh, the superior point value. If he was just to uh, to finish in eighth, he'll be on 63 points, and he would move above a Stephen Nevue uh, one one place higher from tenth to ninth. Uh, but uh, there is uh, quite a lot of movement available for uh, for uh, Corey Vaughan on the Water Ski Pro Tour uh, a men's slalom standings for, uh, sponsored by Cliff Stereo. Dorian, that was a tough number two, but he's still on time here, coming round number four. What do you think? Yeah, he's good on one, three, five, so I'm thinking he's going to save it here. But, man, that was a slow on two, not the best four that he wanted either. I was actually going to say, you know, obviously we, we count 12 meters in some of these earlier passes, just warm-up passes, but right away when we had that the in-water camera, you know, his two ball looked a little off. So maybe he's back and forth trying to figure out what, what's going on with his two ball right now. But... You know, 135 is definitely on, so he definitely saved himself with that there. Right, you are. And uh, uh, Corey Vaughan out of Bumpus in Virginia. Beautiful number one there as he, as he came. That's his offside. We're probably not going to be able to see with, from that angle, even though that's a cool, uh, cool view as Corey rounds number two. I think he had to wait on the rope quite a lot. Put him down course here at number three. Was it here somewhere too? Uh, was trying to make up for it on his on side, but uh, still running way down course here at number five and with a offside turn to try and skittle him across to number six. Was pretty lucky that he had enough swing, but he got the job done and another skier through 39 and having a shot here at 41. A little bit of a stat here, guys. This site is from Return to Baseline, if you know about that uh, Instagram page or uh, sort of Facebook page. This site is, I think, one of the the few spots, I think he's got, they've had 17 uh, 41 offs run at the site, not including yesterday. So they're up to 19. I think ranks around the, maybe the third site in the world of, of seeing 41 offs. Can we see another one? Here we go. Let's have a look and see from Corey Vaughn. He's round number one and number two. On number three, S turns, gets to the wake, scores three. Three at 41. But uh, the, the judges are going to take a closer look at number three to determine whether he made it round it enough to score. And if indeed he does, uh, well, he's already in the lead on the sheer fact that he's run 10.75 meters. Uh, let's not uh, overlook that. But uh, certainly the higher that he can push so far as scoring is concerned, Dorian, uh, the, uh, the, the greater likelihood he's going to stay there. Yeah, pretty solid number one there. And, you know, we said earlier, too, he's a bit a little slow in the 39, and there just gets stuck a little bit. But oh, I'm well gonna, clear. Yeah, I'm going to give him that three for sure. And full three, I mean, you know, everybody's talking about running 41, but, you know, a full three is, is always you got to get a good start. And as soon as these guys make one mistake, you know, it's hard to get around those buoys at this line length. And three is definitely definitely not something to forget about, but... You know, some of these other guys are, are going to be pushing hard, so we'll see. 
All right, looking at the live chat and uh, just as expected, so much love and support uh, for uh, for Corey Vaughan from uh, from up and down the the east coast of the United States and uh, and into Canada. I, I I don't know what we can really attribute to that, but I mean he's such a uh, an affable uh, character, uh, Corey Vaughan, and uh, what's uh, what's not to like? No, for sure. The fact that he gets up here on the mic with us too and shares kind of has some of his opinions and and his takes on the on the skiing out here for you guys. Definitely uh, helps him out there. The next skier leaving the dock right now. This is Dane Meckler. Again, 12 meters. That's the minimum start length. Again, not too many will kind of change that tactic, I think. We've seen it in the past, though, where they kind of either opt up or choose a 38 off pass. I don't know if it's going to be here, done here today. All right, here we go, folks. There's your leaderboard. Three from uh, Corey Vaughan. Two and a half at 10.7 for, uh, for Saddlemeyer. Here we go, Dane Meckler. Now, he is someone who is in really, really uh, big search for the, uh, the pass at uh, 10.25 meters. And looking at him go, and as he rounds buoy number six and goes through the exit gates, let's check in with, uh, with Zach and Sledge. All right, guys, here with uh, Suttlemeyer. I know it wasn't the score he wanted, blowing that fin out at three ball there at 39. Uh, but putting this pass behind us, we had some really good sets coming into this in the prelims and the runoff, and we're at the side of the World Championships here in three weeks. And I think, uh, I think you're going to speak to that a little bit more than what our result was here today. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited how this weekend went. Obviously, we you know, wanted to do a little better today, but uh, overall, like, pretty consistent. So again, we just got to kind of go back, work on the little things here and there and uh, come back stronger for Waltz. Nah, it's a good game plan, man. It was, uh, it was a pleasure to witness the runoff yesterday. Uh, that was really something else. And uh, so congratulations on that and making the finals, but more importantly, some really great skiing and look forward to seeing you here at the World Championships in a few weeks. All right, man. Appreciate it. All right. Back over to you guys. All right. Good. Good to hear from both of them, uh, from Zach and Sledge. That sounds like a cop show, doesn't it? <laughs> We definitely, uh, Sledge had to do some work yesterday. He was in that exciting runoff for us at the end of the day. Uh, so he's skied, uh, he's been on the water a ton, um, pretty feeling it now for sure as he's completed his turn in this final. But yeah, he had to go back out and uh, managed to get ahead of Thomas DeGasprey. On the water right now, Dane Meckler, he's a member of Team Good, along with DeGasprey and Jaquis. All right. This is 38 off Dorian. Yeah, Dane's been looking really solid. You know, he's not the biggest guy, but his style is so good. I mean, the way he swings through the wake and he just generates that outward momentum going into the buoy. He just keeps the line tight so well. I mean, you know, I just said a lot of good things and all those things kind of generate into having good scores. So Dane's got a lot of the boxes ticked. Right you are, and uh, Dane Meckler is settling in down at the east end of, uh, of the lake and getting ready for the next pass, which is going to be 10.75 meters from a 12-meter uh, start. And uh, for those of you that are on the fence about uh, joining our subscriber base here on the TWBC YouTube channel, yeah, get, uh, get cracking and uh, hit the, uh, the subscribe button at the top of the, uh, the YouTube channel to subscribe to the TWBC YouTube channel. And it would certainly help us. It would help the sport. It would help everyone involved in, uh, in this event and uh, those to come. Also, continue voting. Waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play for more details. And to cast your vote for the skier of the day sponsored by To You Healthy Snacks. Who would you vote for, Dorian? Ooh, there's been a lot of really good scores. I mean, you know, Ali running 39 was a big score. That definitely put everybody on high alert. Um, I mean, John, you know, John does a lot out here with the tournament setup, and he also ran 441. So I feel like that should get him a lot of votes as well. But, you know, here comes Dane at 39. You wow, a little guy. bit of a – back to the water there quickly. That was a bit of an awkward gate for Dane. He kind of outran it a little bit, had a little bit of slack line. This is 39, and he sort of got a little bit behind, but – had to play catch up. He's done it well. Six six more buoys. But yeah, very, very tough start there, Dorian. Yeah, Dane's usually one of those guys that, you know, everybody watches his gait because he just does something so different. He's so tall, so light, and it almost looks like he's not doing anything, and that definitely was not his normal gait. You know, that that end is a bit shorter and the boat sometimes is is going a little faster than you would would on a, a longer setup gait. And you definitely uh Definitely saw that, you know, he ran, he had a lot of speed there and had to kill off some of that speed. So 
definitely a harder gait than he'd usually want. And, you know, he saw, saw he was kind of out of rhythm a little bit in this pass, but man, he's such a good skier that he's able to generate that rhythm back the longer he gets into this pass. And, you know, maybe letting the buoys go by a little bit more, letting himself get down course, not panicking, and still runs it. All right. So uh, Dane Meckler getting the, uh, the pass is situated there. There's our start list after Dane Meckler, Travers, Caruso, Asher, Smith, and Winter. Five skiers remaining to round out this fabulous event for 2023. Uh, we'll signify the, the close of the Open Men's Slalom Final. And the, the skier on the water, Dane Meckler, he's coming back. This is 41. He's chasing the lead currently held by Corey Vaughan of three. He's been scoring fours all year round, all year long, sorry. Can he get another one? Can he get a piece of five? Here he comes. It's got a good number one. There's the important offside two. He's folded a little oh, bit. He can't hold on. And he folded over one on buoy number half. two. And it's going to be one and one half buoys. And, uh, you know, Corey Vaughan, he's hanging tough on three right now. Disappointment on the face of Dane Meckler as he sinks in the water. Let's watch the replay. Dorian, what do you see here? Uh, he had a pretty good gate at number one. Oh, yeah. His one, one's really good. And like you said, you know, that two ball for him. You know, I lost the line a little bit. Maybe that contributed to him coming a little bit narrow into two, but yeah, just falling over, you know, dropping his chest, and maybe it was a bit narrow. And yeah, you, you make those little mistakes here at 41, and they cost you big time. Yeah, that's a, definitely a frustrated look as he as he sits in the water because he's he's put himself in the finals. He's put himself there and thereabouts to take a shot at podiums or win events, and hasn't been able to execute in the finals. And another opportunity lost for Dane Meckler. All right, and with that, let's send it over to Zach. All right, guys, down here, Corey, another three at 41, man. <laughs> I know you and I were just catching up here, and, you know, we look back maybe 10 years ago, and three at 41 was, it was damn near a guaranteed podium. We're getting you really wide up there, and then, you know, it barely scraped people into the finals here at this event. So uh, you made it to the finals, another good consistent score of three at 41. Uh, we saw Dane go down a little bit earlier. We moved up another spot in that finals. But uh, what are we looking like here for the rest of these guys on the dock? Yeah, I mean, we've got the best that I've ever done it coming up on the dock. So that's uh, so what I was saying to you. I remember when 3 at 41 used to be really cool. Now it kind of feels like, well, eh, you know, step aside. We might see a lot more. But, um, you look, I'm happy about the weekend. It was a big fight just to get here. Um, it's great training for the Worlds coming up. Thanks for the Travers for putting this on. I'm going to train here this week, which I'm stoked about. And um, let's see what these guys do. I, I've done what I can. Hey, man. Well, great effort out there. Best of luck to you. And we'll, we'll be tuning back in in a few weeks to see you at the Worlds. Good job. Back to you guys. John, John Travis hits the water right now, 35 off. This guy has already had a huge weekend uh, helping organize this event and getting the job done yesterday. He had, he had pressure on him. He only got a 2 at 41 in the first round. Came out in the second round. Posted a huge four at 41 really nailed two balls I was speaking to him earlier today and as he watched back on some of the footage he thought he could run it so hopefully he can kind of shift gears for, for the final uh, he knew he only needed four to, to make it through this time he's going to go for it and I tell you what uh, the impact of a Corey Vaughan's performance he's currently in the lead right now and as it stands right now can finish no worse than six now if he was to finish six he would be on 71 points and with that he would actually move two spots higher than where he is right now. We would move above Stephen Nevue and Brando Caruso. And if he was to finish as high as, uh, as six, just looking here at uh, the Water Ski Pro Tour stats as, uh, as I uh, calculate those. If he was to move as high as fifth, he would be on 77. And uh, if he was to get over 85 points, he would overtake Cole McCormick. But uh, a lot of uh, moving parts are continuing on there, Kyle. Yeah, definitely. Uh, unfortunately for Cole, he is not able to do anything about that because he, he just missed out on the final yesterday. He's been posting some big scores too. Um, it, was, it was a shame to see him kind of come up short because he was uh, been really consistently getting to the fours. But on the water right now, your tournament director, I guess you'd call him, John Travers. Here he is. Take it away there, Dorian. Yeah, you know, John's been skiing really well out here, and obviously this is his home site, and like you said, Kyle, it's a site where a lot of people have run 41, and John's definitely capable of it, and he's looking pretty good out there at uh, 38 off at 11 meters. And, you know, he called me yesterday. He was checking in on my foot, and he did mention that 
you know, obviously the score of four was important for him, and he needed to get that to get in the finals. But he said he wanted to crack at it, that if it had been a record tournament, he definitely would have tried to keep going. So could be could be a big score today if he gets another start like that. Got to be confidence building too for him. Um, I know he's sort of been skiing well all year, but sort of struggling to convert, you know, that two ball and get across to three and make his way into some of the finals. He's missed a few times. He had a lot of pressure on him yesterday, and he did it. He did his job. Today, he's in the finals. He can just go for it. He can relax a little bit and uh, hopefully post a huge score for us. There we go. Uh, Jonathan Travers, who's, uh, who's won the uh, the Masters men's uh, uh, slalom title at Callaway Gardens uh, quite a few seasons ago now. He's uh, been among the top competitors on the Water Ski Pro Tour. Uh, uh, Jonathan Travers. Hasn't traveled as extensively as some of his uh, competition, and we'll see uh, see where he could actually end up on the leaderboard, uh, 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 given if uh, if certain results uh, uh, go their way. I'll make that calculation right now. But uh, Jonathan Travers, let's have a look and see what he's got. The leaderboard on your screen right now, three at 41 from Corey Vaughan. Five skiers remaining, though. And this is the must run pass. This is 39. Not much of a warm-up when you start at 12 metres or 35, just 35, 38. Two passes to get the, the blood flowing, the adrenaline going, but he is doing it well. He's on time at number four, and I like the way John Travers is skiing right now. Yeah, that was a really good pass. You know, start maybe a little bit slow, just kind of getting into a rhythm of it, but, you know, I'd say manage that pass super well. Just every turn wasn't more than he needed, wasn't less than he needed, just really, really good and consistent and, I think, yeah, probably probably throw the hammer down a little bit more here at 41 off the bat, and yeah, he gets another start like he did yesterday, and even a start like this, you know, it's it's going to be fireworks here. Well, he's got a little bit of a headwind as he comes back at 41. I thought that was a pretty nice one ball, and as, as he went out the gates, I sort of saw him throw, throw the fist a little bit. Obviously, six of 39 is not the big score he's looking for just yet, but I think he's happy with the way he's he's performing. Yeah, and like I said, you know, this this is his home site. It's an amazing site to begin with, and. He's probably probably one of the guys that's going to feel the most confident out here right now because he knows every single piece of this lake. And, yeah, the scores that he's able to do here each day in, day out, he knows that he's going to be able to put it on the water right now. A lot of discussion about the ends, you know, which end's the easiest to get the gate, to get the start for the pass. What you, what's your thoughts? He's coming back from supposedly slightly deeper ends, supposedly slightly easier. Yeah, that end, definitely the boat gets up to speed and it's a little bit more consistent, you know, especially with a wind like today. There's not a lot, but... From this, the end that we're sitting on, you get more speed into that gate. And you saw Dane, you know, Dane looked uncomfortable on that, that one gate at 39. And this side definitely is going to allow him to get a really consistent gate. So let's see how he gets through one here. All right, everyone, get on your feet. Get behind JT, Jonathan Travers. He's got a great number one as he approaches two. He hooks up at two. It's hard, but he's still holding on. He's around number three. Can he hold on to it and squeak oh. around? No, just inside four. He gives a big scream, but he's taken the lead. Well, equal lead with Corey Vaughan, but his backup score will ensure he's above him. But he knows the potential there, Dorian. I thought he was going to be able to hold on to that. Yeah, I just saw him come into the, er, into the dock here, and he said it was this close, and he knows he knows it was there. But, you know, whether, whether or not that score holds up today, you know, we still need to see that. But uh, either way, I think he's taking a lot of confidence out of this, this weekend for sure. All right, and with uh, that uh, that score, uh, putting him into the lead with uh, with about the half of the field uh, remaining uh, to to ski, that puts him uh, in a position where he can't finish anything worse than fifth. And uh, by that token, he'll have at least fifty seven points uh, to contribute to the uh, to the water ski uh, pro tour men's slam standings, uh, uh, sponsored by Clips, and that would actually uh, leapfrog him over Sasha Deska and Joel Poland. All right, so let's watch another replay. That was a brilliant start, uh, brilliant start there for uh, John Travers, and he committed fully here at two. The ski sort of bit a little bit, but he was right there behind it and held on, so that was a, a pretty handy approach to number three, maybe a touch narrow, and he can usually hold on to those big onside turns, but he got a little bit too far back, out of position to take the pull and get to number four, so unfortunately, he's a little shy of probably what he wanted, but still a great score nonetheless, and he's our leader going into, uh, there's uh, four skiers remaining. All right, uh, skier on the water, currently in eighth spot on the Water Ski uh, Pro Tour men's slalom standings, uh, uh, sponsored by Clips Marine. 
This is Brando Caruso from Italy. Opening pass, 12 meters, smooth as you like. And now let's uh, check in with Zach. All right, I'm here with John Travers. You stepped yourself into the lead there, uh, a three at 41. Uh, just before we got live on air, I heard you talking about uh, the consistency. We ran a two, a four, and then a three at 41. Um, I know you wanted some more to really put the pressure on these guys coming off the dock, but let's speak to the consistency and really building up to uh, the World Championships coming up here in a few weeks. Yeah, totally, Zach. I can't be happier with that. I've been struggling this year a little bit. Um, and then just the last week of just trying to get ready for this kills you. And I think I'm just better when I'm tired, I think. <laughs> I have no time to think about my skiing, but I'm super stoked. Thank you to all the officials, my parents, my brother, my wife, Greeny, Ellis. Thank you, guys. It's been so, a great week. Well, John, big thank you to you for being the, uh, the brainchild behind putting this thing on. And I know the skiers, and I could speak on behalf of them, they're thankful to have this tournament and finish up the Pro Tour here right at uh, – Right at your home site in the JT and at the Travers Grand Prix, man. So congratulations. We'll see what shakes out with that three at 41. But uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. See you guys next year here. The Grand Prix, the six ones, we'll be back. Awesome, All right. Awesome. Back to you guys. Great to hear there from the man himself, John Travers. And a little emotion coming out in his voice there. I heard it. Dorian, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, you, you know, also last week, he's obviously putting a ton of man hours in and you know, it, that also comes with, you know, certain things that are going to hurt on your body as well. And he threw his back out just, you know, doing all the manual labor out here. I mean, it's crazy to think that he's doing that and then going out and running four at 41, yeah. three at 41. It just may be a little bit of relief as he's finished his turn. Whoa. He's got, whoa, he's got this three at 41. He's taken the lead and uh, the event for him is now over. He can sit back and wait and see what these next four competitors do. Brando Caruso going through 38, 11, 2, 5, making a little bit of a Weird exit through the gates there. Let's watch the replay, see what happened. But uh, in the end, all six for Brando. All right, continuing to ski. Brando Caruso, who's, uh, who's a top of five events that he's contributing to his uh, eighth place position on the water ski a pro tour standings for men's slalom. Third at the uh, Malibu Open in Lacanau. Fourth at San Gervasio. Eighth at Monaco uh, Slalom and ninth at Caiaphas. Those are four scores. He can add a fifth score with his with his uh, positioning here at uh, the the Travis Grand Prix, and a whole bunch of permutations exist because of that. Uh, if he was to win, for example, he would be on 127 points, and that would vault him from where he is in eighth spot all the way up to six. Yes, yeah, so obviously Brando not hitting some of our earlier events here in the States and missing a couple of the last couple weekends. But he's here for the Grand Prix and he's here for the Worlds. And when he competes, he's one of those really consistent players that seems to be able to find his way to threes and fours at 41 uh, more often than not. This is 39. He's got to get through this one first. He looked a little wobbly towards the end of that pass, maybe relaxed a little bit too much. But uh, he's never one to go get too worked up uh, and stays calm through the tail end of 39. Just looking him go, uh, Dorian, and uh, you know, just just seemingly one of those underrated slalom skiers that uh, always pops up uh, every so often, you know, and waves his hand and says, "Don't forget me, I'm here." And uh, and nine times out of ten, he normally comes through in the clutch. Yeah, for sure, and you know that it might look that way to a lot of people watching because they don't see him as as at as many tournaments, but. I can tell you that around here during this whole tournament, the entire men's field has been talking about Brando and how, how well he's been skiing as of late. And, you know, it, there hasn't been that many tournaments that he's skied in, but everybody knows that just the form that he's in, he's definitely dangerous out here. And, yeah, he's having a little bit of a hitch on 2-4 on today on his, his offside. So, you know, this, this start at 41 is going to be really important. Like with a lot of these other guys, you know, he probably – have a good chance to get a really good one, but yep. it's going to all come down to the way he turns two for sure. Well, he, he commanded a lot of uh, respect at the European Championships, um, especially uh, from fellow competitors like Thomas DeGasperi. I think he sort of tied him for the lead. They had to go into a runoff. He ended up in the silver position. DeGasperi got him. Uh, unfortunately for DeGasperi, he didn't quite make the final. He missed it uh, in that runoff we saw yesterday with Adam Sedemeyer. But through was Brando Caruso, and here's his time to shine. It is 41 off. He's chasing a lead tied right now, Corey Vaughan and John Travers. It's three at 41. He picked up a four in the round two. Let's see what he's got. Here he comes, Brando Caruso, coming to us out of Rome in Italy. 
Dropping in with uh, this pass at uh, 10.25 metres, more than three is necessary for the lead. Taking a big, big uh, hit there on number two and indeed number three. And whoa, and a three buoy count there as well. Uh, another, multiple skiers. Another tie, guys. Another three at 41. There's three of them. It's John Travers, it's Brando Crusoe, and it is Corey Vaughan. So far, we're going to go back to backup scores. Uh, both JT and Brando scored 4 at 41 in the second round. In the first round, I think they both scored two. So I think it's a perfect tie for those two it skiers is. right now. Nothing separates them. Yeah, and he did get that good one there. You know, a little bit of line drop uh, out of one ball. But, yeah, there you just see he just totally stands up at two. And he's coming in pretty late into three, and he, he almost saved it there. But, yeah, just like with John, you know, John was a lot earlier but couldn't hang on to that, that big hit at three ball. And Brando definitely had some, some you know, room that he needed to make up. And that was, uh, that was you know, a, a good effort. But at the end of the day, you make a mistake like that at 41, and you're done. Yeah, the one ball wasn't too bad, but the two ball let him down a little bit. Kind of pat, uh, he sort of chatted a little bit, maybe jumped on the inside a little bit too hard, put him down course, put all the way to number three, tried for the big one, couldn't hold on to it in, inside at number four. The good news, he's not, he's not happy, but the good news for him, he is in the lead. He can do no worse than fourth. Uh, the skiers remaining, Will Asher, Nate Smith, and Freddie Winter, three of the best that's ever been. And the guy on the dock, or the guy leaving the dock right now, Will Asher, won the uh, World uh, Water Ski Pro Tour last year and this very event. Okay, and news here on Brando Caruso with his uh, at least fourth place as, uh, positioning right now. He improves his point hold to 97 pro points on the Water Ski Pro Tour, and thus he leaps frogs over Cole McCormick from eighth to seventh. Just look at this, and... Uh, a slalom technique that has redefined the sport. Uh, that is Will Asher, and uh, let's check in with Zach. All right, guys, down here with Dane Meckler. I know the one and a half of 41 there in the finals <laughs> wasn't what you wanted. I know we had some really good consistent skiing, big scores in the first two rounds. Um, it wasn't quite there for you today. Uh, we're going to be back here again in three weeks. Um, big performances from both the women and the men's throughout the entire weekend. Uh, what does you think this speaks to coming up into the Worlds and what we can expect to see there? Yeah, I mean, it feels great out there. No excuses. Certainly bummed to go down around two ball there. But, you know, it's been a good season. I think it was on four podiums, a couple seconds. You know, it was a bummer to end it like that. I was feeling really good out there. So, uh, yeah, kind of focus shifts to Worlds. and heading them tomorrow, regroup, and we'll be back. So, looking forward to it. All right, man, it has been a really great season from you. Like you said, uh, quite a few podiums, seen your name on the top of the list quite a few times. Uh, no stranger to it now, just a matter of taking down that first one. Unfortunately, not this weekend, but we got one more tournament left coming up. Thanks, Zach. Looking forward to it. All right, buddy. Good skiing. We'll talk to you. Back to you guys. All right. So moving forward, we are uh, on our third skier from last. Uh, Will Asher on the water right now and joined by Kyle Ede and uh, Dorian Llewellyn. And uh, getting ready for, uh, for Will Asher to come back into the course, 11.25 meters. Now, uh, the way he bleeds off uh, the speed prior to his turn is uh, something to behold, especially on his uh, gate shot. And uh, just allowing that ski to do exactly what, it, what he's designed it to do, come round with the lightest of, uh, of touch, and then goes cross course. Will Asher absolutely slicing and dicing through a 38 off. Kind of hearing reports for him to stay in the third spot. He has got to get at least a third here at this, this tournament. That's uh, right. On the Water Ski Pro Tour, is from what I believe. Uh, but the way he's run through this 38 off, Dorian, he is uh, right on the money. He ran this pass. We well, ran 41 off here last year to win the event. Do you see it happening again in 2023? Yeah, I mean, the way that he's skiing and the fact that he knows that Freddie and, and Nate are definitely capable of running it since they did it yesterday. Uh, he'll definitely be pushing to run this. And, you know, a lot of times I think it's really well documented how good Will's 2-4 is. I mean, it's one of, if not the best in the game. Um, but on the same time, you know, sometimes he does have that hitch on 1-3-5. And so far, these, these early passes, it's looked really good. And I think that's going to separate him from what we've been seeing from a lot of these other skiers. And that we said, you know, a lot of these guys are going to get a really good one at 41. And then two is their big buoy where they need to get that good start. And for Will, if he gets a good one, it's definitely going to be game on. 
Yeah, he, right. he looked uh, bang on on his, on his uh, offside the last couple of days. Yesterday he scored a 5 at 41, but yeah, looked dialed. And yeah, that can be his kind of area of, of weakness. But th there was no weakness in it uh, the last couple of days. Um, and 5 at 41 is his best score of the weekend so far. This is 39. Here he comes. 39 and a half off 10.75 meters. Can't afford to put two foot of a, too much of a foot wrong here in order to run this pass. Still requires maximum concentration, maximum focus. And that's exactly what Will has. Six buoys on 10.75 meters or 39 and a half off and uh, looking strong out there. Definitely. Uh, we've talked about some easy 39s. That was another one. Maybe five ball. He kind of uh, did a little bit of a safety check. Uh, but he's down the end sitting there. They're going to shorten at one and a half feet off the rope. Uh, half a meter. And he'll be coming back at 10 to 5. 41 off here in just a second. Can he be our first gear through that pass here today? We've got three threes all tied up in the lead right now between Corey Vaughan, John Travers, and Brando Caruso. But if Will Asher uh, gets a three in ties, the previous uh, skiers, uh, if, his, uh, if his tie is uh, the equivalent of finishing at least third spot, then that would be enough to see Will Asher climb above Thomas de Gatsby uh, with the points in the men's slalom uh, standings uh, uh, sponsored by Clips uh, Marine. He would be on 193 points at least, but could have the potential of winning it depending upon uh, what other uh, competitors uh, produce. Right now, Will Asher is not thinking three at 41. He's not thinking four at 41 or five. He's thinking about run it, running at Dorian. The boat's turning around. Let's call it through this one. Yeah, like we said, Will's going to need a good one here, and he's gotten it so far on every pass. And, you know, if he gets a good one, his two is going to be pretty solid. So let's see. Here he is, Will Asher. Rolling in entrance gates around buoy number one. Broken over at the waist into number uh, one, but uh, looking good for number two. Oh, and round number three. He's good for four. He's taken the lead. He's still there, you know. He's five and to the wakes, and he has taken the lead, and he finishes at least third spot on the Water Ski Pro Tour men's slalom standings. Yeah, he's taken the lead here in this event. Five at 41. And he's uh, cemented his spot third on the Water Ski Pro Tour. But what a sensational performance from uh, Will Asher. Folded at number one a little bit, but it did, he didn't really lose any time. He hooked up pretty well out of that turn. It was two that maybe wasn't as strong as he usually is. Um, and after that three, I'm, I'm amazed that he got it to number five. Yeah, like you're saying, you know, he, he fell over a little bit at one. But in terms of, you know, the mistake, he corrected it right away, waited on the line. And, yeah, this is where, yeah, he just... He just came out slow and then almost recovered here. I mean, that's that's that will 2-4 that we were talking about. And, you know, he gets five, and it's both going to make things simple on Nate and Freddie and also really challenging. Dare I say, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> like, like I was saying, you know. Yeah, All right. Uh, so here he is. This is that two ball. It was – Big, but not quite big enough. So he was down course going into number three and all sorts of late going into number four. Went for it. Wow, the power to hold on to that amount of rope and still get across to number five. Awesome skiing. Will Asher in number one spot. Let's hear from Zach. All right, real quick, guys. Here with Brando. Some really consistent skiing. Uh, went out there. Uh, three at 41 here in the finals. I know that yell was, uh, you were frustrated. I know you thought maybe getting a little further down, get that piece of four. Um, unfortunately, we did just see Will Asher go out there and get a piece of five ball at, uh, at 41. But uh, regardless, you're going to finish at least at, uh, at worst fourth place here at Drivers Grand Prix to finish off the season. Uh, and then we'll see you back here in a few weeks for the, uh, for the World Championships. No, for sure, man. Like, I was really upset because, you know, it's a great place to ski. It's a great driver. But uh, I don't know why I was tired. And every pass, you know, 39 was getting lean locked, every boy. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy with the score because I had a really bad start at uh, 41. I had no connection out of one. So, that was a miracle. I got to three and happy with the score, for sure. Hey man, well that uh, that speaks to it. You know, being aggressive through that 39, through that 41, um, you know, because it's going to take everything you got coming at the World Championship. So great skiing, man. Uh, uh, good performances all weekend. So we'll see you back here in a few weeks. All right, for sure. See you there. All right, back over to Nate Smith on the water. Here you guys go. 
All right, then. Thanks a lot. And uh, Nate Smith is on top of the water. He comes to us from McCordsville in Indiana, but uh, now lives and works in Central Florida. He uh, works over at, uh, at, at, uh, at an FBO, uh, uh, the uh, field-based operations uh, facility uh, at uh, Orlando Executive Airport, where he is a, uh, a flight instructor. Yeah, and I was wondering, you know, John had a really good start to 41, and then we saw John yell, and we, you knew that that was a, I had that yell. And then for Brando, it's not that I thought he had a bad start, but, you know, the yell was a little bit less warranted because he didn't have the best set and he didn't have the best start. But, you know, like he just said there, he knows that this is one of the best sites in the world, and, you know, countless 41s have been run here. And so I guess it was more of a frustration that he didn't maximize that set. Yeah, well, the good news though for Brando is it doesn't matter how he got there. He, he tied it up with John Travis. He tied it in the first round. He tied it in the second, and he's tied it in the third. So it's kind of a perfect tie. And right now they're sitting in second behind Will Asher. They're not sure if they're going to make the podium yet. We've got two skiers remaining. This is Nate Smith just absolutely killing. 38 off. And let's hear from Zach. Let's uh, check in with him. All right, guys, between passes real quick, I got Will Asher, our new leader, uh, five at 41 here in the final round. You're guaranteed a podium, but, Will, I know you're, <laughs> you're tired of those. You want the wins. Um, talk me through it. Where do you think that five's going to land you uh, coming here with these last two skiers on the dock? I think that'll land me solidly in third. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm happy. I really wanted to run it. I mean, I, you know, um, just, you know, it would have been history. I have a good feeling the guys after me are probably going to run it. So, if, you know, we set up the opportunity, maybe three of us do it, and then maybe we all get one and we have three of it. You know, you can dream, dream up a scenario which didn't happen, but, you know, I put my heart in the line and I, I went for it. I tried, I tried as hard as I can. So uh, I'm that, Sorry, I'm going to enjoy the last couple of guys. And, go ahead. No, absolutely, man. And uh, it sounds like things are starting to, uh, starting to click at the right time for you. Uh, we're building up to the Worlds coming up here in a few weeks, and uh, definitely two back-to-back -back rounds of five at 41. I mean, that's, that's speaking to your skiing. So we look forward to see what it holds for the next couple of weeks here. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, trying to build. All right, there we go. All right, Nate Smith, 39 off. Here we go. 39 and a half off, and uh, Nate Smith approaching the course. So far as the Water Ski Pro Tour is concerned, it is a done deal so far as he's concerned. But... The distinction that he wants to achieve here is to have all five of his contributing scores uh, in for the points to all be wins. Uh, he's had four first place finishes on the, uh, the Water Ski Pro Tour and the one outlier was the second place finish over at the Monaco Slalom Cup. He wants to drop that out of the, uh, the reckoning and uh, get maximum points. Well, what a season that would, uh, would be if Nate could achieve that. He's a couple passes away from achieving it. Only one skier on the dock after him. That's going to be the Freddie Winter, who was our top seed with one at 43 yesterday. This man on the water right now, though, he did run 41. He chose not to have a shot at that 43, which was interesting. I think he was feeling a little bit, uh, he, still a little bit under the weather. He had a big, big fall at the Mastercraft Pro a couple weekends ago, attacking 43, trying to get to that elusive two ball at 43. But he chose yesterday, just go in after six at 41, take the, the second top seed and uh, let the chips fall where they may here in the final. And he just has a real ease about his slalom style there, doesn't he, Dorian? Yeah, he's definitely, you know, he's, he's the guy that everybody watches and try to analyze and figure out why, you know, it just looks so smooth when he's out there. And that 39 was definitely one of the best that we've seen all weekend. And, you know, he has this ability, like Dane. I think Dane and Nate obviously grew up together. They ski together a lot, and they have a lot of similarities in their style. They're, they're really tall, really centered over their ski through the wakes, and it allows them to swing out to the buoy. And Nate's just so good at when he does that swing that he's able to slow himself down so every buoy just looks so effortless all right here we go this is a uh, nate smith approaching the course here on 10.25 meters gets the start a little more back on the ski but he's still there on number two takes a big chunk out of that one here's number three coming in on number four five into the wake and we'll run this pass and we'll be guaranteed at least a second place finish. There we go, Nate Smith. A new leader, six at 41 so far for Nate Smith. No, you're not misbelieving your eyes. That looked like a pretty easy pass. That was, in fact, 41. We saw some easy 39s, but he actually ran a pretty easy 41 yesterday, and he's done it again today. What can he get at 43? He hasn't seen a piece of two ball for quite a while, I don't think. Um, the man on the dock there, uh, 
broke the European record here last year to win the event with two at 43. Um, but Nate Smith, he's been through 41 more than any other competitor, but he hasn't seen two ball. Maybe he's going to get it there today. Uh, Freddie uh, Winter made a valiant effort yesterday, sliding it out, but didn't quite make it. All right. I'm excited to see what's going to transpire in just a few moments. Good, good skin there from Nate Smith. And, uh, hey, and Dorian, let me ask you, if the people out there believe that that performance is worthy of their vote, what, where should they go? They should go onto the website and vote for the skier of the day. Yes, skier of the day. Uh, waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. Waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. Make sure you get your vote in now. You've only got a few minutes left until the, uh, the end of uh, the event here at the Travers Grand Prix. And it's a, been a brilliant event so far, and we've still got a lot of skiing uh, yet come to on, come. Come on, Tony. This is Here 43. Let's watch it. Get on your feet, guys. Can he get a piece of two ball? He's around number one, but no, he's just sort of oh, almost, he almost hit the jump. I don't know what's going to happen here. That was uh, that's going to be a bit of an interesting bit of drama yeah, because the ramp I mean, was kind of in the way. He had a lot of slack, and he was trying to make his S turn to get back and get a full one buoy, but was unable to uh, for safety reasons, I guess. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you don't want to come barreling into the ramp on a slalom ski. Um, no, no, that's. That, that's Hmm. You know, that being said, the ramp hasn't really moved all week, so I don't know. It's tough. Looks like it's half a buoy. Round buoy number one. He tries to get... The oh, man. That ski was like inches away from that side curtain. Yeah, he's uh, sitting in the water going, hey, I could have got that full buoy. But if the yeah, ramp like, hadn't been in the if way. If the ramp had been there, hadn't been there, but uh, it's been there all weekend long. It's there all the time here, and just doesn't really get in the way too much here. That doesn't really happen too much. You know, a one ball S turn to get back and, and to be that close. To have that sort of speed that you get at 41 and carry that far down. It's yeah, a scenario that we haven't really seen much. And I'm, re I'm not trying to, you know, negate what he did yesterday and, and, you know, question somebody that is one of the best slalom skiers of all time. But, you know, you, you do wonder if he had gone out yesterday and done 43 yesterday and, even if he has turns there and he does the same mistake, you know, that's just more information that he could have had for today. Yeah, I, I, it's hard to second guess the guy that's sort of been on top of uh, more podiums than, than, than not. Um, yeah, he's probably maybe a little bit uh, gun shy after the, the crazy fall he had going for two at uh, Mastercraft Pro a couple of weekends ago. Laid it back a little bit there, was just trying to secure the one full one buoy, but he's left the door wide open. Freddie Winter, we saw him. A full one yesterday and almost a piece of two. So a lot of pressure on this guy about to leave the dock. Freddie Winter, the man from England, the UK. And right now our leaderboard stacks up like this. It's half at 43 for Nate Smith. It's five at 41 for Will Asher. And clutching onto a spot on the podium in third spot is both John Travers and Brando Caruso. All right, so continuing right along. And uh, so what, it, what in essence does that mean so far as the best score in this competition is concerned? It, it is, uh, that, is, that is half, isn't it? Half at uh, 9.75 no, minutes. No, still Freddie Winter got a, one, a full one yesterday, so that's the best score of the tournament so far. Okay, so that means that no matter what happens, Freddie Winter has yep. the best score of the competition, so he gets the two additional points before he even leaves the dock. That's correct, yep. All right, so... Let's see what Freddie Winter can do. Coming to us out of the London Borough of Wandsworth. Here he is. Unfortunately, that extra two boys, even if he wins this event and gets those two boys, it's not going to be enough to get him ahead of Nate Smith, who has already kind of dominated the Water Ski Pro Tour for 2023. But leading into the Worlds, this man right here on the water is going to want to take this event down, and he's got a, a door, a little bit of jar to do so. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll see how things uh, progress there uh, for Freddie Winter behind that naughty towboat and uh, riding that, uh, that D3 uh, slalom ski. There's the leaderboard as it stands right now. Nate Smith here in the final event of the Water Ski Pro Tour season with half a buoy at uh, 9.75 meters. Will Asher guaranteed at least a third place position and uh, the points uh, that he garners with that third place position at the very least are enough for, to see him uh, leapfrog over uh, Thomas de Gasprey from fourth into third place on the Water Ski Pro Tour. 
Uh, Freddie Winter uh, cannot catch her, uh, Nate Smith on the Water Ski Pro Tour uh, final standings. There's just too many points uh, Nate Smith has, uh, has accumulated. He is on 284. Freddie Winter currently right now on 258. The maximum that Freddie can actually achieve with this performance with a win and the maximum score is 270. So, uh, but he does want to end off on a high and at least give him some confidence going forward on the top of the uh, performances that he produced at Monaco and San Gervasio, which were two wins, and uh, California, Malibu Open, and Mascara Pro, which were second place finishes. He wants to knock out at least one of those second place finishes. Freddie Winter coming back. This is 38 off, 11 2 5, and he's going to want to set a good tempo through this pass. There's been three exciting days of slalom competition. It comes down to this last skier on the water. And Freddie Winter running through 38 off, 11 to 5. Easy as you like. Getting exciting here, guys. Indeed it is. What yeah. do you reckon to that one, Dorian? Well, and, you know, after Will ran that five, I said that it makes things simple but challenging. And what I meant by that was that, you know, when you run five, when, when you get into 41, at that point, you know you just have to try to run the pass. Because whether you're going to get to five or you're going to run the pass, you're going to need a good start. But at the same time, you know, when Nate was going out, if he had made a mistake at any point at 41, that's when you start having to think about, you know, am I going to be able to run this or am I going to get to five and I'm going to have to stop? But at this point, I think for Freddie, I think at this point all he wants to do is win the tournament. So I, don't, I would imagine that no matter what shape he's in at 41, as long as he has a chance, he's going to keep turning it. And Freddie's definitely one of those guys that will put his body on the line. So it could be extremely exciting yeah, here. We, we definitely appreciate that aspect of Freddie's skiing. Um, he's been on the top of a couple podiums so far this year, but maybe only one where he was battling with Nate Smith. He got ahead of him uh, somewhere in Europe, I believe, uh, where they went uh, head to head. But uh, he wants to make it a second time, and especially leading up to our Worlds here in a few weeks. This is Freddie Winter. It's shortened right now down to 39 and a half. Here we go, folks. 39 and a half off 10.75 meters. Gets a good roll into that gate shot there. There's one, there's number two. Driving that ski ahead of his body on each of those uh, turns. Looking in a good, good stead here for four, for five. And number six, making it look so easy, huh? Yeah, things are shaping up extremely well for uh, Freddie Winter. He's ran that pass exactly as he wanted to. Focus on his keys, ran it strong. To be honest, this year he has looked uh, probably the strongest ever, I think, you know, just knows exactly where he is all the way through the course, managing things well. Even if he gets a little bit down course, even at 41, he can still rely on that onside to catch him back up. Can right. he get the job done at 41? Okay, the uh, the position that is uh, fully guaranteed on the strength of this performance is that of Adam Sanomaya, the only person not to have run 10.75 meters. He, in, he is uh, confirmed in eighth spot as a result of that effort there by uh, Freddie Winter. Yeah, and like you were saying, Kyle, you know, he looks super strong. And sometimes it's, you know, you take Freddie versus, you know, Will and Nate. And well, actually, Will's really strong, too. So let's just say Freddie and Nate. And Nate's 39 looked so smooth, so easy. But, you know, a lot of times Freddie's strength, it, it outplays his, his technique. And then you forget that he actually has really good technique as well. Yeah, so He just looks powerful on the water, doesn't he? Yeah. Very, very powerful, especially on that onside. But even his offside has been working so well, and that's bumped up his consistency getting through 41. He's right. coming around the bottom end. Here he Can comes. Can he get it done? Three immediate targets ahead of him. The first one is the score of one and a half of Dane Meckler. Here he comes. There's number one. And number two is past Dane Meckler. Now past the, uh, the three that are tied with three. Now, if he can get past number five, he'll pass Will Asher. And let's see if he can make it through this run. There he oh, goes. That's a lot of slack, takes guys. The he slack takes there. it. Oh, my word. That was a ton of slack out the gates, but he holds on to it strong. He was getting down course. He pulled all the way to number four, but just sat on the back of it. Oh, my and word. Pure that's... grit, strength, determination got him through that one. That celebration there at the end broke the sound barrier. <laughs> yeah, and we saw Nate Smith walking away there. I think he knows that he's in trouble. He think he knows that half at this next pass might not be enough. Yeah, this was a great start, Dorian. One and two, super strong. Maybe a little bit slow. Number three. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, his 2-4 is also really good. And like you said, Ski chatted there a little bit, getting a little disconnected, but has a huge four here. And, you know, just pulling strong into five. And this is where I was saying, you know, he does have that strength in addition to really good technique. And this definitely helped him get around six here. I mean, that's a lot of slack. And I'd probably be on the back of the platform right now if I were him. But he's definitely got me out, outweighed in strength, that's for sure. Never mind on the back of a platform. I'd be on a gurney if that were... <laughs> If that were the case. All yeah, so right. What are we thinking is his strategy here? He just saw Nate try to S turn. Yeah, okay. I think he's going to go for a kind of a half pie turn at number one just to secure the full buoy. He can't do the S turn if that ramps gets close to him. But he got the, he had an experience with this yesterday. He got a full one. Can he do it, it again comes. for us in this final? Freddie Winter, 43 off. He's got one. He S turns. Oh. He takes the hit. Back There's inside. the win. There's our winner. In style, one at 43 off, two skiers through 41. Great effort there from Freddie Winter. <laughs> oh, man, he's screaming all the way down the lake. Freddie Winter wins the final uh, tour stop of the season, and it guarantees himself a second spot on the, uh, the Water Skier Pro Tour final uh, rankings, uh, sponsored by, by Clips uh, and Marine Stereo. But uh, just look at this. S turns, looks at the ramp avoids it, gets to it the wake, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Definitely a harder S turn than we saw from Nate Smith. Nate Smith may be a little bit casual, didn't really realize where the jump was. Nate Smith, uh, Freddie Winter, no mistakes, hard sort of cut back in and out to bleed off that speed, take the rope early and get back to the wakes. And he is going off right now as he comes back behind us. The winner of the last pro event for 2023, the man, Freddie Winter. Yeah, good thing I said that he can't S-turn because he just put that one right back in my face. <laughs> I don't know what the weight differential is between Nate Smith and uh, uh, and Freddie Winter. I'm sure uh, Nate uh, edges him in that re that response. And that was the uh, the highest scoring final of the year. There we go, Freddie Winter, your your victor here ahead of uh, Nate Smith in second place and Will Asher in third. So as he steps up out of the water, that gives us enough time to catch our breath. And uh, he steps into the realm of uh, Zach Warden. So for one final time, let's send it over to Zach Warden and your winner, Freddie Winter. Freddie, here we are, Freddie Winter, your 2023 Travers Pro-Am champ, man, and what a battle it was. Started off with those women all running deep into 39. The men followed suit. Will throwing a five at 41, forcing you guys to run that 41 off pass. Uh, Nate went off there first, came up with a half. Talk me through that 41, what you were feeling, you know, after three ball when it was in the sight uh, to run that thing. Um, uh, Freddie Kruger told me a couple weeks ago, and he, you know, he's, he ought to focus on the inputs, not the outputs. So I've just been focusing on my gait. Ronnie Barton tells me to keep my hip up. So I did that, and then one, two were good. I think three was fine. I don't remember after that, but I remember just thinking, don't fall at five, and don't fall at six. And then here was, don't fall at one. But it's, what a ride, man. That's, that's why we do this. Hey, man, that was some really spectacular seeing. And uh, I think I heard Tony saying one of the uh, top pro performances we've had from a men's final all season long and then have two of you guys through 41 battling it out at 43 for the win um, and, and taking home gold. Uh, congratulations, Freddie. Yeah, man, it's, it's a lot to unpack, actually. I mean, so I had seven seconds behind Nate this year. Yep. Seven. And, and I was on the podium every pro tournament this year. I wanted to finish it well. So that's, that's the best way to finish. I mean, it's the last tournament we can get paid at this year, which is great. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're back here in a few weeks, but different kind of deal. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. What a day. What a day. Happy, happy. Well, Freddie, congratulations. And uh, it's been nice talking with you guys. Congratulations to all the competitors out here. Some amazing skiing. And uh, we'll see you guys at the World Champions in a few weeks. And I know we got some more events going on, some awards. I'll pass it back over to the guys behind the booth. All right, then. Thanks a lot, Zach, and uh, doing sterling work there and uh, some, some great skiing, uh, both of you. Uh, Kyle and uh, Dorian Llewellyn, uh, absolutely amazed by what uh, you've witnessed right there. Yeah, I think Freddie was happy. Was, was he happy? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think he mentioned that he was happy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the, uh, the final slalom leaderboard of the professional season. 
Freddie Winter with a one at 9.75 meters. Nate Smith with half at 9.75. And in third place, uh, Will Asher with five at uh, 10.25 meters. Then in a tied fourth, uh, it is uh, uh, Jonathan Travers and Brando Caruso. Perfect tie all the way from start to finish with those two. So well done. Uh, Corey Vaughan in six. A day Meckler seventh. Uh, uh, and Adam Saddlemeyer in eighth. So that concludes that. Here is the final Pro Tour standings. Nate Smith on 284 takes the season-long win. Uh, Freddie Winter on 272. And uh, Will Asher in third place. Leapfrogging Thomas DeGasperi at the very last breath there on 193. DeGasperi on 190. Dane Mecker in fifth with a 135. And uh, the Eclipse Marine uh, final slalom standings right there. You can see at waterskiprotour.com. So far as the brand leaderboard goes, let's take a look at that uh, one more time. Syndicate comes away with the win with 624. Syndicate uh, featuring Ali Nicholson, Jamie Ball, and uh, Will Asher. The D3 brand with 521 in second. The good brand in, uh, in third. Then Radar Skis, Lapointe, and finally Conley. So... Uh, the end to a great uh, pro season, but we still got a lot of uh, coverage to go yet. We've got uh, the award presentations for the amateurs, the uh, the actual event award winners. We've even got uh, the awards uh, for the uh, for the audience prize, and uh, continue to go vote for the uh, the two you healthy yep. snacks skier of the of the day. Make sure that you keep on voting, folks. Who do you reckon should win this award? The two you healthy snacks skier of the day. You've only got a few minutes. You good folks there that have been on site, you've been a wonderful audience, but please stay on site for, uh, for a few minutes longer as we get ready to award uh, the prizes uh, for, uh, for the amateurs, uh, for the event, for the Pro Tour and uh, basically any, anything else we can think of. But I tell you what, guys, superb season, and uh, I tell you what, a great primer for the World Championships coming up in less than two weeks' time. Yeah, unbelievable season and unbelievable way to finish it right here at Sunset Lakes, Travis Ski School, with some of the best, well, the best skiing action we've seen all year. And, yeah, coming up shortly, the, pres the presentation. Let's stay on site, guys, and celebrate our champions. All right then. So whilst we get ready for the uh, the awards, uh, we're going to uh, take a step uh, to one side, and when we return, we will be uh, presenting the awards right here uh, of the uh, the 2023 Travers Grand Prix that has been brought to you by Travers Water Ski School here at uh, Sunset Lakes. Uh, Syndicate uh, brand by HO Skis, Ski Dock, Masterline uh, Ropes and Accessories, Eagle Wetsuits and Accessories. And uh, we couldn't have done this without the assistance of Mike and Kerry Morgan alongside Michael DeMello. We will be back with the award presentations momentarily right after these. Thanks for calling Wake House. This is Brian. How can I help you? Uh, yeah, Will. Can I let him know who's calling? All right, just a second. Will, I got a fill for you. Perfect. Give me just one second. All right, hit it. Thanks for holding. This is Will. Hey, hey how's it going? Good.
For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality.
special thing in store. My name is Thomas de Gasperi. I'm from Italy. I'm a two-time World Slalom Champion. I've been coming here at La Guapa for four years now. The condition of this villa, it's top level. I would say five stars plus. Everybody is very friendly. The hosts are amazing. The staff is always helpful. There's always food on the table. I couldn't ask for anything more. Conditions, clean, and we're only an hour away from Mexico City. So it's it's very close and convenient for to travel. Every time I come here, I feel like I'm, I'm at home. I've been a fan of Marcus Brown since I was like 13 years old. He's, you know, been my, my childhood hero. And so for him to offer something like this, you know, which is, which is, it's great, not just for me, but it's great for water skis to have something like this where people can really get a bespoke water ski experience. It's going to improve their skiing, their, their body, you know, and Jenny's just, she's amazing too. So just to have the access to, to both of those guys, I think it's huge. And it has been massive just to talk things through and to get a new understanding of, of stuff I haven't tried yet.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are pretty much ready to go along with the prize giving ceremony right here at the 2023 Travers Grand Prix, right here at Sunset Lakes, the home of Travers Water Ski School. All right, if we can get a few more of you over, and uh, in that time, I'm going to tell you about our interactive prize winners in the uh, uh, the audience uh, the uh, the audience prize uh, for the women. Uh, Steve Osh o O'Shea from the United States wins himself a Conley slalom ski, whilst in the men's audience prize, Karel Kremers uh, from uh, Belgium wins the prize for the men's competition. All right then, folks, so we're going to go straight into it. Uh, so far as the pro women's are concerned, and we are going to highlight the top three here. So in third place, representing Canada, let's give it up, please, for Jamie Ball. Michael DeMello will be awarding the, uh, the prizes. There we go. The uh, the third place trophy will be given to uh, to Jamie Ball. Oh, there you go, Michael. Go over there to uh, to give that to Jamie. In second place and runner up, it's Whitney McClintock Reeney. And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you the winner of the 2023 Travers Grand Prix, the one, the only, Regina Jaquis! And ladies and gentlemen, let me give the microphone one last time to Regina. Thank you. Such an amazing event with all of us, uh, four of us getting into 41 off. Um, really stepped up, all the girls, and um, just great event. Thank you to the Travers. Thank you to the Jamalas and the Morgans and everybody that put this event on. Um, I know that how hard it is, so thank you. And we appreciate it, and hopefully we can keep coming back. Ladies and gentlemen, presented to you one last time, the top three in the uh, 2023 20, uh, Travers Grand Prix, Jamie Ball in third, Whitney McClintock Reaney in second, and your winner, Regina Jaquis. All right then, folks. Ooh, hello. He's got good, strong knees, I can tell. All right, then. So we go on to the, uh, the men's awards. In the third place, being presented uh, with the trophy by Mr. Michael DeMello, Will Asher, third place. Ladies and gentlemen, presented to you in second place and runner-up, it's Nate Smith. And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you the winner and 2023 Travers Grand Prix champion, Freddie Winter! So, uh, Freddie Winter, I'll give you the microphone and uh, speak to the good people here. Well, 
I mean, it's the end of the pro season. I'm just, you know, so happy and grateful to be able to do this as a job. And, and um, I mean, I guess special thanks to John Travers, wherever he is. I mean, he's, he's skied really well this weekend. The whole Travers family, they're all incredibly, incredibly busy. But it's really cool for us to have a, a guy who's a fellow pro skier put on tournaments for us, two back to back. Um, yeah, so thank you to him and, and everyone really that's helped put this tournament. It's fantastic. Cheers. And in addition to the win, you win yourself one of these. Skier of the day, Freddie Winter! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your podium finishers, Will Asher, Nate Smith, and Freddie Winter. All right, so now we move on from the pros uh, momentarily to the, uh, the prizes in the amateurs uh, so far as the team events are concerned. So, in a third place is the team headed by uh, Thibaut and Dorian. That team consisting of Thibaut Dayon, Dorian Llewellyn, Julia Spreng, Alex King, and Sancha Outram. Come on down! <laughs> Presenting the awards, Natalia Bertnakava. Yeah. Travers. Whilst they figure out uh, where they go and uh, how they do it, let me highlight to you the, uh, the runner-up position. It's team number two, headed by Ali Nicholson and Nate Smith. That team consisting of Ali Nicholson, Nate Smith, Easton Graves, Jack Decker, and Brian Decker. Once again, the awards are presented by Natalia Berdnikava Travers. I think the Deckers have a flight home. And we'll make sure the awards uh, go to, uh, to Jack and Brian Decker at the earliest possible convenience. Not here at the moment, but we celebrate their, uh, their results in absentia. All right, so the winning team, team number five, that is the team consisting of Jonathan Travers and Will Usher. That team also consisting of Edmund Skip Hormel, Michael DeMello, and Scott Greenwood. Ladies and gentlemen, celebrating your teams in the 2023 Travers Grand Prix. All right. Okay. We continue on to the prize for the go-karting and the ultimate prize winner for that is Alex King, the go-karting champion! Wow. He's the only cart to have no flat tires. <laughs> All right, so as we continue right along with our awards, let me uh, take you to the shooting awards. As a matter of fact, 
We don't have a shooting award yet to give because it is a shoot-off between Alex King, Dane Meckler and uh, Chelsea Mills. And we go over to the shooting uh, area right now for the shoot-off. All the pressure is on you guys and girls. You have everyone looking at you. So, Dane Meckler. Regina, get your dog. Hey, John, is there any ammo? Yeah, there's ammo. I'm going to stand well back for this one. We'll have the awards for the Water Ski Pro Tour uh, once we get done with this uh, shoot off. Missed. Yeah, got it. Uh oh. Well, Dane Meckler, come on over here. Well, I could say this much for you, Dane. You're at least better under pressure on a slalom ski than you are with a, with a gun. Yeah, bummer there. I don't know. I didn't know they were going to go so far away that way. So, all good. Bummer. Let's hear it for Dane Meckler, folks. Here we go. Oh, this is serious. Uh-oh, here we go. Quiet in the gallery. One more shot. Chelsea needs to hit one to avoid a sudden death tiebreak with Dane Meckler. Quiet in the gallery, please. Well, Chelsea, you, ha you had the technique, uh, you had the intensity there, but unfortunately uh, couldn't come through with a hit. Yeah, it's way harder. They're coming from all different directions today, so the other one's so much more consistent over there. Uh, yeah, much diff more difficult. Well, you're tied with Dane Me Meckler on absolutely nothing, so uh, we'll keep you uh, to the side. Oh, that's Alex King. Nope. Ace! And with that last shot, he is not only the karting champion, but he is the shooting champion as well. Let's give it up, please, for Alex King. Remarkable stuff there, sir. What do you tribute to your accuracy? Uh, pure luck. Pure, pure luck. Well, luck or not, you are the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up, please, for Alex King. We missed one thing. Best skier. All right, before we go on to the award for the Water Ski Pro Tour, let me tell you the champion with the best average on the water during the amateur competition. And the person with the best amateur, best average, coming to us out of Church Point, Louisiana, it's Elena Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, your best amateur in this event, Elena Jones. All right, now we come down to the, the final award presentations, not only of this event, but also this season of professional water skiing under the auspices of the Water Ski Pro Tour. First of all, we will begin with the awards for the women's jump. Pro Tour standings. In third place on 105 points, the 2023 Water Ski Pro Tour Women's Jump Leaderboard brought to you by John K. Phillips. Third place, Janina Bonneman Mackla.
Ladies and gentlemen, presented to you in second place on the Water Ski Pro Tour Women's Jump Leaderboard, brought to you by John K. Phillips, with 113 points, Sasha Danioskaya! And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the award in absentia for the 2023 Water Ski Pro Tour Women's Jump Leaderboard brought to you by John K. Phillips Group Limited with a score total of 166 points, Hannah Stroltsova. Hannah Stroltsova not here to receive the award, so I'll make sure that it's driven back to Zachary, Louisiana, and I'll present it to her myself. Ladies and gentlemen, your second and third place finishers on the Water Ski Pro Tour Women's Jump Leaderboard presented to you by John K. Phillips. Here we go, folks, on to the next award. The 2023 Water Ski Pro Tour Men's Jump Leaderboard also presented to you by John K. Phillips. In third place with 126 points, Taylor Garcia. Ladies and gentlemen, coming in uh, second spot in the 2023 Water Ski Pro Tour Men's Jump Leaderboard, brought to you once again by John K. Phillips. Second place on 134 points, Jack Critchley. And ladies and gentlemen, Presenting his award in absentia with a score of 176 points. The 2023 Water Ski Pro Tour Men's Jump Leaderboard once again presented to you by John K. Phillips Group Limited, Freddy Krueger. Now, before we move on, I'm going to give the microphone over to Jack Critchley, who I'm sure will say one or two words about our uh, major supporter for these awards, John K. Phillips. You know him quite well, don't you? Uh, yeah, I know John. He's a great supporter of the sport. He does a lot of stuff for this, uh, this sport, and especially for jump. So as a jumping community, we can't thank him enough, and hopefully we can keep his support next year and keep it rolling with everything that we're doing with Wallace Key Protar. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your award recipients who are present, Taylor Garcia and Jack Critchley. All right, continuing right along. We're going on to the 2023 Water Ski Pro Tour Women's Slalom Leaderboard, brought to you by Clips Marine Audio. In third spot, with a total score of 226 points, coming to us out of Canada, Whitney McClintock Greeney. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, continue to make in the presentations for the 2023. Water Ski Pro Tour Women's Slalom Leaderboard presented to you by Clips Audio. Second spot by two points. On 266 points, the second place goes to Regina Jaquas. And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you 
the winner and champion of the 2023 Water Ski Pro Tour Women's Slalom Leaderboard, presented to you by Clips Audio, Clips Marine Audio, with a score of 268 points, winning it by just two points, your champion from Canada, Jamie Bow. All right, I'm going to give the microphone to you. You dread this moment uh, pretty much all the time. Uh, talk to the good people uh, about your win here on the Water Ski Pro Tour. Thanks, Tony. Uh, I'm super excited to take a win on the Pro Tour. Uh, it's awesome to see the Water Ski Pro Tour kind of stepping it up every year. Um, more events, more involvement, and big thanks to Clips Marine for supporting the end of the year bonus. Ladies and gentlemen, your top three, Whitney McClintock Greeny, Regina Jaquis, and your champion for 2023 on the Waterski Pro Tour Women's Slalom Leaderboard, presented by Clips Marine Audio, it is Jamie Ball. All right then, continuing right along to the men's slalom, the 2023 Water Ski Pro Tour men's slalom leaderboard presented to you by Clipsed Audio, Marine Audio. In third spot, grabbing that third spot with the very last, one of the very last performances of this competition right here at the Travers Grand Prix. Third spot goes to Will Asher on 193 points. Now, continuing on to second spot on the 2023 Water Ski Pro Tour Men's Slalom Leaderboard, brought to you by Clips Audio, Clips Marine Audio. Second spot on 272 points. Freddie Winter! And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you the 2023 Water Ski Pro Tour Men's Slalom Leaderboard, brought to you by Clips Marine Audio, with an outstanding score of 284 points, your winner and champion for 2023, Nate Smith. Okay, Nate Smith, you got a few words to say to these good people here. Sure. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch all weekend the last three days. We really appreciate you guys being here. And for the Pro Tour and Clips Audio for the little bonus here at the end of the season. It's kind of fun to compete around the world and compete against each other and see how we do at each event. And, you know, at the end of the year, kind of compile all that together. So I'm um, excited to be standing up here at the top and uh, one more tournament here in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we presented to you your award recipient. Will Asher, Freddie Winter, and your season-long champion on the Water Ski Pro Tour Men's Slalom Standings, presented by Clips Marine Audio, Nate Smith. All right, we got one more award. One more award, and I'll send you on your way. And it's an award that I get to present now. I get to present this award because it's the award for the brand leaderboard champions and it's presented by the Water Ski Broadcasting Company in this season long battle between the brands. The brand that prevails in this year is the Team Syndicate brand. The Team Syndicate. Managed by Dave Wingerter, 
and consisting of Ali Nicholson, Jamie Ball, and Will Asher. Right, who gets to hold this and who gets to speak? Which one gets the microphone? You want to talk, Ali? Do you want to talk, Jamie? Oh, boy. All right, so this is kind of a new addition to the Pro Tour this year. Really excited, uh, proud of our team. Kind of uh, compiled everything for the year, so I have no idea. Anybody else want to say anything? Yeah. I would, I would like to thank our team, uh, especially the girls here. They put up like uh, scores every single weekend and um, killed it. And I would like to thank uh, HO Syndicate for supporting us and just creating a product that will kind of allow us to just go out every weekend and do our best. Um, and just thanks for the TWBC and everyone and all the work and the Travis family for holding this last part. And um, I don't know. Killed it. Yeah, you're uh, not short on words, are you, Jamie? Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up, please, for the syndicate brand by HO Sports, Ali Nicholson, Jamie Ball, and Will Asher. This brand leader, leaderboard championship presented by the Water Ski Broadcasting Company. And also, don't forget that Dave Wingoder is the manager of this team, so uh, that's, uh, that's their boss. All right then, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the 2023 Travers Grand Prix. A fantastic tournament from start to finish. It uh, culminated the Water Ski Pro Tour for the 2023 season, and everyone who came in uh, came away happy with what they've done. All right, the, uh, the next and last tournament of the season for uh, TWBC is the IWWF World Water Ski Championships. We thank you very much, and on the behalf of the crew, myself, and everyone at uh, the Water Ski Broadcasting Company, it is ciao for now. You know.